tonight. Got a couple of my friends in the uh, studio. Going to break down Hangtown, break down the new national champion in Jet Lawrence, one week after Dylan Ferrandis won. Talk some uh, MXDN, probably. Talk about a lot of stuff, man. 702-586-7857. Give us a call. Let's talk. Thank you to uh, Jet Lawrence. He'll be on the night, the new national champion. Jet Lawrence will be on the night. And uh, also Davey Coombs from Racer X and MX Sports will join us. ORWmotorsport.com. Phil Nicoletti, the final one of the year. Thank Jesus. I don't know what else we could talk to Phil about. We'll try to get to the bottom of everything. 125 Supercross champion Denny Stevenson will call in, and uh, Debo will uh, talk about the series and give us some thoughts on racing and, and everything else that's going on with him. And again, 702-586-7857 uh, if you want to give us a call and talk about whatever, man. We'll do it. Yeah. Uh, thank you to FloatMotorsport.com. Thank you to Fly Racing, Decal Works, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Vortex Racing, X-Brand Goggles, the goggles of champions everywhere. X-Brand Goggles. Vertex Pistons, Michelin Star Cross 5, Maxima USA, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Pro Filter, the folks at Scotia are on board. And we have another boom bottle to give away tonight in a, in a trivia contest between our two co-hosts. Thank you to Scosche for stepping up for that. Going to quiz these two gentlemen on what, how much they know, how much they can follow, what just happened in the Nationals. And the winner will get a Scosche boom bottle. FMF, thanks to FMF, of course, for all the things they do. The drop uh, is doing really well with a... Uh, exclusive t-shirt each week and uh yeah the folks at fmf got things going on thank you to atlas neck brace of course uh jason anderson chase sexton have all won championships in the past with an atlas brace phil nicoletti wearing the vision brace this year until he uh, ate shit and didn't decide to race no more uh tanner ward vision brace as well works connection and thank you to works connection pulp mx 20 is to save uh, at worksconnection.com and if you don't want to get a pro launch device that won both championships this year uh, if you don't want to pay for one, you can try to win one because we're going to give one to, one away tonight from the folks at Works Connection. OGO Power Sports, Art of Sport, Get Data, Guts Racing, WUSA, Ride Engineering, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, and Intense Cycles are all on board with us tonight. And, uh, again, use the uh, sponsor codes under uh, sponsor deals on PulpMXShow.com. And whether it's Karcher, whether it's GrowYourAssOff.com, uh, it is uh, uh, codes everywhere to save. So thanks to the folks at Guts and Atlas, and, and the list goes on and on uh, as far as the guys that can save with um, uh, the codes, man. So we really appreciate it. Thanks very much for all of that, uh, that you people for doing that. Amazon as well. There's an Amazon widget on PulpMX.com, and we can uh, get a little piece of that if you're going to shop on Amazon. Go through that widget. We'd appreciate it, man. Uh, so lots to get into tonight when it comes to uh, the sport of Supercross Motocross. Don't forget, in two weeks, we are going to give away a 2022 YZ125, courtesy of the folks at Yamaha. All proceeds are going to the Racers for Waverly Fund. Yeah, that's right. So we're doing that on PulpMX.com. There's, a, there's a, also a link right in my Instagram, at PulpMX. 25 bucks for a ticket. And uh, all the money goes to the Racers for Wa Waverly, and you could win a 2022 YZ125 two-stroke. How sweet is that? Thanks to Yamaha for that. Uh, also tonight, thank you to Yamaha. We are giving away a random uh, uh, winner of a Pulp MX Fantasy Championship League. If you signed up before the season started, uh, you got some entries. And tonight, we, we, we've given away for the Supercross. We've given one away for the Motocross. And you don't even need to be any good at Fantasy. And tonight, we're going to do the draw for the 450. Thank you to Yamaha. We're going to do the draw, and maybe you win tonight. And if not, uh, better luck next year. But thank you to Yamaha for the 125 and for all the stuff that they do for us. Boo Crew! Of course, Dylan Ferrandez winning the championship. Uh, so we got that to talk about tonight, and we have some co-hosts as well. First up, he is uh, a national championship winning mechanic. He has uh, more national wins than I do as a mechanic, but not that many more, but a few more. And uh, now, of course, he works at Renthal. And uh, it's Paul Parabinos. What's up, man? How are you? Steven. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. Uh, what's happening? Uh, not much. To be brutally, perfectly honest, I'm pretty tired. Had a oh boy a weekend in okay. Florida with some friends. Forgot that uh, we made plans to come up here and do this with you today. So I did not want to get up early and come up here, but I had a uh, two good buddies that I gave my word to, and and my word is like gold. Wow, okay. I was just tired. Uh, also here uh, from 100%, of course, and uh, uh, a pro former pro rider. He's been in studio quite a bit. Charles Cassidy. What's up, Chuck? How are you, man? Not much, Steve. I'm good. Thanks for coming in again. Yeah, no worries. Are you tired? Are you better? Are you uh, I'm okay. okay. I'm a little, little tired from uh, our, our exercising earlier yeah. today. <laughs> <but. laughs> E-bike ride. 
Yes. Uh, Chuck, you've never really ridden an e-bike. Like you've rode yeah. one around a parking lot or whatever, but not yeah. not on a trail. Yeah. I got you a taser. Yeah. What'd you nice. think? It was good. You had fun. I, I mean, I w on that trail with those boulders. I, there's no chance I'd have done that on an acoustic. Congratulations, too, by the way. You are only the 200th person I've taken mountain biking to be like, holy shit, there's a lot of rocks out here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I did a, a tire pressure check uh, <laughs> mid-ride, just checking in, make sure we, we knew how much air was in there. Yeah, but yeah. I think it was fine. It was just the terrain. Yeah, it's, it's a little rocky. It's like enduro cross, <laughs> but the whole time. Yeah. Uphill, downhill, right, right. round turns. Yeah. Well, you know, good. That. that was fun. Yeah. It was cool. I I'm liked glad. it. it I wish fun. we could have gone a little bit longer. My bike wasn't charged. For, uh, I'd no. Whatever you say. I had charged it. And mm. then I worked on my 500, and I unplugged it to move it to get in my toolbox because it blocks my toolbox. And then I guess I just forgot to plug it back in. Mm. I think he was worried of our fitness level compared mm. to his. Well, wow, both, of, both of your fitness him. levels were better than mine, but I did have the top speed of the day, did I not? You did. You go down the hills really fast. Like a banshee. No <laughs> breaks. Thank you. No <laughs> breaks. <Thank> you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, looking forward to talking about Jet Lawrence tonight. Uh, we had a really cool little bench race session in the truck about Jet and, 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 and another rider, and we'll talk about that tonight. Uh, so there's certainly lots to get into uh, tonight on the show for sure. Directing the show over there, he's going to work the ra randomizer for this bike. He's going to choose the camera angles for tonight. He's going to do everything. And he's going to be on his best behavior tonight, mm -hmm. as you we think? know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we know why. <laughs> it's Travis Marks. What's up, Marks? Hello, Steven. What's happening? I am not tired, unlike your co-hosts over there. Yeah. I'm tired. I would I'm never tired. say that. <laughs> I will no, never that's right. You guys got shit say for that saying that. Ever well, again. Marks, one time Marks was just like, yeah, like 30 seconds in the show. I'm tired. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Mark, big, big mistake, big right. mistake. Yeah, big mistake. Yes. How's it going, Marks? Everything good? Uh, yeah, we're yeah. good. I've, uh, you know, it's always a relief when when fantasy is over. Like, as, as it's sad, but like, <laughs> no, me, me running, no. me running the show. Like, there's no more races, but it's uh, it's kind of a relief. Right. We, another year down. So. Right. Champagne on the break, Marks. Yeah, yep. absolutely. What time are you drawing my name? When are we doing this? Uh, uh, so Chuck, <laughs> a little, a little Chuck, later, yeah. You okay. said this is the third time you've been in it, for the bike? At least the second. I think third. Yeah. And it's just really? total coincidence. Right. Like, yeah, never worked, never, yeah. yeah, never uh, uh, planned that way. Yeah. So. If we keep going one of these times, his name will actually come up while yeah. he's here. Yeah. And, and then it's going to look suspect. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, we got addition, a new addition to the show tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Our buddy Tiss Legendary, out of town, um, uh, not, at, not available tonight. Okay. Our other buddy Talon, Taylor. He is uh, ill, not feeling well, okay. and we needed someone to step in and work the phones. A and somebody had to come in and save us all. And also, by the way, class up the studio much, a little bit. Much Quite. prettier looking than tits. Quite Courtney Marks. What's Thank up, you. Courtney? How are you? I'm great. How are you, Steve? Thanks for stepping in and, and uh, yeah, bring it's us some... It's just a different noise. It's it just, smells nicer. It's incredible. It, it, yeah. You just... You really... That whole corner is so much nicer. Thanks, guys. Uh, glad, uh, glad to be here. Uh, yeah, so you got the breakdown from Travis yep. on, on, on how do you work the phones. Yep, I think so, I only hung up on one person so okay, far. Okay, so fa fantastic. Starting uh, off well. Hashtag so basement. By Marks, way. Yeah, hashtag <laughs> Marks' is basement, and now everyone Correct. will know, and everyone will, will, everyone will see. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Thank you. Uh, but thank you for bringing it, taking it. Short notice. Screw you, Talon, and uh, screw you, Tits, <laughs> and uh, uh, we, may, we may just have her every yeah. week. Permanent yeah. replacement. I think you should. Did anyone tell Talon that he's out of a job after tonight? I just... You know. not, yet. Uh, not yet. That's awkward. But yeah, okay. someone, the HR should have been in touch with him. The HR mm -hmm. department, right. I believe, at Pulp w was. Yeah. Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for coming in. And, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to throw too much at you. If we have time later in the show, we really need to get to the bottom of you and Travis. So You got it. Right. Whatever you need, Steve. Right. No, we don't. No, <laughs> it's coding all night. <laughs> yep, coding all night. Uh, so, all right, we're gonna really exciting to have a, a Jet and Davey Coombs, Phil, Phil Nicoletti, Danny Stevenson on tonight as well. Um, okay, so be honest here, Hangtown. Did anybody think Jet was gonna blow this thing at any point? After was it the third crash or the <laughs> second crash? I mean, the first crash, I was like, okay, wasn't sweating anything. Right. Second crash, I was like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> That's that was my thoughts. I. Guess. I after the first moto, I thought, no, he's fine. Six, seventh or better, easy. Yeah. Couple laps in. I don't remember the turning point, but at least a couple, few laps into that second moto, I was still like, mm, yeah. is he going yeah. to blow this? Yeah. Like, is, this yep. is this unraveling right now in front of our eyes? That's where I was at. Yeah. First moto, okay, shit happens. He has to get seventh in the second moto. He's not in seventh for a while. And that's yeah. where I was like, wait. Yeah. It's another one of these little tip overs. Somebody crashes in front of yeah. him. Like, this is going to get difficult. But now it didn't, you know. It was fine. Uh, Schwartz let him by. Uh, he went by. Uh, Why does everyone say Schwartz let him by? He passed him. 
Like shorts he, didn't pull out off the track. He, I felt didn't like pull, did they go wide? Just because yeah. he went wide, like yeah, he everyone just, was going inside there. Or something? Yeah, I, don't I, know. I, I, there was uh, also in the first moto, Mosman and Schwartz, uh, Schwartz came together, mm-hmm. uh, took each other out. That Fork, helped a lot. Forkner's bike blew up. Forkner's bike blew up. There was some fortune there, but look, yeah, Jet Jet won the title, man, and mm-hmm. and congratulations to him and Honda. First title for the factory Honda guys since '96 when Lampson out of that uh, shop. Out of that shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had obviously had uh, uh, Trey uh, and um, uh, Eli, but yeah. Since Lampson. Lampson. Oh, in the little bike class. Yeah, but little they had Ricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First yeah, yeah. title for Honda though, uh, in out of factory Honda, not a support team since Ricky in uh, the perfect whatever, season. Yeah, whatever that was, right? Yeah. So, um, good job to those guys. Jet is here. He's generational. Maybe. Hmm. Hard to say. Maybe. Daniel Blair thinks so. He does. Did we ever see Ricky go? Uh, what What did we do here on Saturday? What was his medal score? Seven three, eight three, eight three. Did Did we see that a lot out of Ricky? No. Uh huh. About what about James? Uh huh. Hmm. Okay, so that's where <laughs> you're just asking. I'm just <laughs> asking right, some right, questions. Right, that's just where you're posing at. some questions. Right, right. He's He's gonna look. He He's uh He's going to win a bunch of races. But Paul, as we were bench racing. Oh well, okay. So I brought up an example because yeah. there's lots of Jet hype, and I I like Jet, and he is he has done this earlier than many people before him, right? But at the end of 2011, I feel like Dean Wilson's career was pretty damn similar. He had won just won the outdoor title, similar race wins. I think Dean won three. Dean's, Dean's second year in the class, right? Second year in the class, right. yep. Right. Second year in the class. Um, <clears throat> He was close to the Supercross title that year, but didn't win. But, yeah, he has yeah. eight moto wins, I think. Scored a bunch of points, but won the title. Yeah, was 22 on out of 24 motos, he was on the podium. Yeah, course. yeah, I think he scored 538 points, maybe. I think quite a bit better than Jet. Eight moto wins. Um, so, like, at this point in his career, he's pretty similar. Yeah. Like, right? Every yeah. 450 team wants him. Yep, yep. Hottest, hottest guy in the market. You know, good kind of yeah. Yep. part personality for marketing and whatnot. It's very similar to Jet. Um, Jet's done it a full year earlier, I think, than Dean, age-wise, Myrtle's which is really impressive. One. But um, but hey, just saying, I'm well, drawing but, but, parallels. But here's the point. So here's the point. So the, you're absolutely right. There's a parallel there. And so guys like Daniel Blair and other people in the sport, Dean Wilson has never won a 450 race, uh, a premier race, okay? Injuries hurt Dean. Yeah. No doubt about it. That's uh, all about I, it right there, yeah. We, we know that. But the, the example is is you don't know. You mm-hmm. don't know. And, and what Jet is doing is, is, is nothing that Stu, Ricky, those type of guys have done before. RV, you know, those types of dudes. And then you have the fact that, you know, Dean went on to get hurt a lot and, and, and missed a lot of opportunity. And he podi- he's podiumed a few times for sure in 450 bike. But, you know, you just never. D- it's hard to say so that you're, too you're, early. You're pushing back a bit on the whole, you know. I don't know if I'm yeah. pushing back on generational. I, could, I would call him generational. But I'm just saying. Yeah. The success in the 250 class doesn't guarantee 450 class yeah, success. I yeah, think that's yeah. my biggest point. Uh, and honestly, <laughs> we were talking about this on our on our wrap up show. Well, go ahead, Charles. I was just going to say, and his his success thus far in the 250 class hasn't been groundbreaking. Holy shit, he's he's dominating, right? Like, I mean, he's no, doing well yeah, yeah. at his age for sure. Yeah, and he very well could turn out to be one of the all time greats. But up until this point, I mean, his his win percentage isn't something out of the off the charts like it isn't it's not Stu. he it's hasn't not, done it yet yeah it's right. not villapoto it's not yeah. Stu. it's not ricky it's not you know, yeah it's i think the biggest thing is that when you watch him ride and you look at him ride like he's exceptional we're all pretty impressed by his riding style mm-hmm. and and the way yeah, he looks on the bike it, and it seems something that he can maintain yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and everything so <laughs> yeah he's good uh, we're just not there yet but for the review show like we were like i don't know if i'm i'm almost thinking it's a flip a coin between jay coop and jet next year i'm with you on that mm-hmm. like i think jay coop He's great, and he he hurt his thumb. We know that now, and he got sick. And you know his second half after the break after Washugo went south, and Jet <laughs> took off. So that that's great. But like, I don't think you know, I don't look at Jet as being like, oh God, he he's got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got this. And I think if you take Washugo's second moto, like aside from the the thumb injury that happened there that affected later results yeah. or the sickness, whatever. But if you take just that result that ended up being a an eighth or something, I think, off the top of my head, and give him Seven. the first. Yep. And give him the first that he had. I mean, there was no chance he was losing that race, right? 
without falling? I mean, he was winning while no, he was second. No, he was second. second. J-Mart was first, but oh, he but had the he, overall. But no chance he was going to get 7th or 8th, right? Like no, no, no. He no. Was, yeah, it was last lap or next to last? Uh, near it the end, yeah. Last, one of the last laps. Anyway, you give him 22 points there versus, I don't know what he got, 16 or 15, whatever it was. Like, that's that's winning the, the championship. Yeah. yeah. Like. And also, like, again, not to crap on <laughs> – are we crapping on Jet's title here? No, it seems like I we are, but we're not. Are we crapping like, on his title? No. And, I don't and think you know, so. J- you would make you could make an argument that J Mart was, and I and I did the points like he was like nine back of in the motos that J Mart raced, he was like nine back of Jet. Hmm. So, you know, you can make a case that J Mart's going to be right there too. So oh, if we're talking next year, yeah. next year, yeah, 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 yeah. next year. I think so, you have to. You have you know? to say, isn't yeah, it? at least for for right. motocross. Right. I don't know, right. supercross, so. J Mart. I don't know. I I, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, it depends on what coast, right? Who's he going up against, right? So yeah, you can what if it on what if it all night or if it one if it all night, what right? But at the end of the day, he was healthy for yeah. all twelve rounds, twenty four Re- motos. He didn't make catastrophic mistakes. He earned the title. He really? deserves it. Like, and Renthal is proud of him, by the he, way, Renthal. snatching that title. So it was one hundred percent. Really, uh, <laughs> uh, really impressive to wrap off those those four moto wins in a row at, at, the at, end. at Paula yeah. and at uh, the right uh, Ironman. Yeah, just you know, great, just domination, and, right? God, yeah, it's such a it's a travesty that that J Mark crashed out of that moto because that was, yeah, that would have been, been, yeah, been good. That would have been really good. good. Both of those, they were ripping that moto. Yeah, yeah they, they really were. were. And I feel uh, like they both sort of had like a point to prove there. Like Jet, J Mark's not really a factor in the title, but he had no chance in hell he wanted him to right, pass him. Right. And and J Mark, as we all know, rides with that chip on his shoulder. Right. And he wanted to beat the donut kid. So uh, so Justin Cooper goes one one. His his first one one. Uh, Which is surprising. To ever do. Yeah, yeah. I know he's been chasing that. The only reason I knew that was because he had mentioned it earlier this year. He's like, I've never gone 1-1. And I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. Like, huh? So he ripped off a 1-1. He did what he had to do. Mm-hmm. Joe Schmoda second. Is Joe Schmoda something? Is Joe Schmoda like... I mean, yeah, he's a solid... He's he's solidly there. He's good. I think if you can start the series better, he can, he can kind of work his way into being in a title conversation, I think. I mean... I just... Uh, if he can start the season better, but I don't he's know. He's better, he but I think he's still I think he's still un, to me a notch behind Jet, Jet, Jet oh, yeah. Justin, Cooper. Jeremy, um in Supercross Colt. Yeah. It, um in theory Forkner, but hell, I don't know. Like those I, are the I don't guys. Thi- I think Forkner I, look, I'm not writing Forkner off, but I think those guys have passed Austin. Really? I don't know you how they get better than Forkner. Oh, I thought you meant no, but it, like, so, so oh, where does see, Forkner not, stack I up? I put in Forkner that? in the Joe category. Like, just, oh, uh, I'm not, just, I'm uh, not there with Forkner. I'm not I there think he either. can show up and okay. win but the anyway, first Supercross. Like, okay. I guess my point is there's a lot of guys that, that are sort of establishing themselves a step ahead of him that he he's done great and, and propelled his career like it should have to get on a pro circuit bike, I think. But he's got to go another level before he's consistently yeah, right. competing for race wins. Uh, Dylan Ferrandez's season, in a nutshell, just uh, amazing speed, amazing fitness, wears the people down. That second moto charge was, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, Dragging uh, Cody precious. Shock in the first turn. Unnecessary. <laughs> like, uh, like, at one point I thought, I think he mentioned it in, in, in one of your interviews, but I thought he was going to pull it in. Like, why wouldn't he? Like, the series is over. You're back there so far. Like, yeah, kind of whatever. Like, wrap it dude. up. Be safe. Impressive. And he just wanted to no way. Go get another hundred hurt, grand. Hurt people's yeah. feelings. Yeah. <coughs> Impre- yeah, I think that's what it was. It was like, uh, screw you guys. I got no pressure. Watch this. He should honestly. Like, right. if you did. give him an inch, they take a mile. Like, well, Ricky <laughs> took every mile. Yeah. There you go. You could yeah. Never, Ricky gave every like you. So many times you're like, hey, Ricky, you could back it down. No, no. 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 Don't let him get a shred of confidence. Right. Right. And I think that's how Dylan thinks. Like, I think he he and I'm sure DV helps him with this, but like. He puts those like Ricky and those guys on a pedestal, and it's like, what would Ricky do in this situation? Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I want to kill uh, these guys. I want to talk about Dylan and Supercross next year. It's not too early to start about that, so I want to get your guys' opinion about that for sure as as we get onto the show. Uh, we got the Race Tech Ran of the Night. Uh, I don't really have a super angry one, but I got a couple. Uh, okay. X Brand Goggle Tearoffs. We'll do that. Motorsport.com tweet at tits. Right? Is that, is that appropriate? Tweet at tits, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. H- HR department. Uh, yeah, is the HR department going to get us on that? <laughs> um, the segment is called that. Yeah, right. it says. We're fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. What's HR? Moving on. <laughs> uh, thanks to the folks at Decal Works. Uh, Chuck, a lot of controversy with you when it comes to stickers. Okay. Because the Berm Lords uh, are, are Texas guys. They and are. You know them. And I at do. one point, someone said you were a Berm Lord. 
And then you were in saying, no, like, I, you appreciate the Berm Lords. Yes. You know the Berm Lords. I do. But you are a decal works guy. I am, and right. I have been for a long time. Right, right. So there was a lot of controversy. It was yep. going through the pits like yep. crazy. I, I wore the appropriate shirt today. Yeah. To make you happy. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. No uh, so uh, Charles Cassidy brought you by decal works. Uh, okay. Ron and the boys down there. Uh, Pulp MX to save 20% off your custom graphics. DecalMX.com. They do the Red Bull KTM factory team. So they'll have Aaron Plessinger and Cooper Webb and Marvin Muska next year. Uh, Rockstar Energy Husky off-road team as well. So Thad Duvall running mm -hmm. the uh, Decal Works group. Uh, they officially licensed with all the OEMs. The expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. They're the best custom motocross graphics out there, everybody, and they lead the industry in a long time. And, Charles, you've used them for a long time. I have since 2000, maybe five, wow. something. Yeah, you've been there. For, Decal yeah. Works has been there for you. Yeah. Uh, so thanks to those guys for coming on board. Also want to thank the folks at Firepower. Great uh, chains, great batteries. The Chiz uses Firepower. Uh, A-Ray, Firepower. Uh, uh, Gopher Dunes Honda winning championships with Firepower. Uh, they're committed to offering superior products for over 50 years experience in the industry. Don't waste money when replacing batteries or chains on your OEM when you can get more power and supreme reliability by choosing Firepower. Feather, firepowerparts.com. Ask your local shop. Go to motorsport.com. Check out the firepower stuff. Uh, it's early for a dark side call, but I guess there's a dark side call. So let's uh, let's get into that. <laughs> What's that? Oh, shit. That's David Bradshaw's bike. I just fucked up. That's Dark Side uh, knocking the wind out of himself. <laughs> uh, what's up, Dark Side? What's what's with the early call? Well, I just with the beginning of the show, the way it started off. Look, your show innovates constantly. It grows constantly. You're always improving. I think it's time for a, a call screener, in picture in picture, for live YouTube tonight. Well, uh, Marks, uh, do we? What are we doing? Has Courtney been on camera? Yeah, yeah, she was well, on camera. Really. Yeah, but I think camera. we need picture in picture for the whole night. Oh, he just, wants to just leave her there. Just stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's basement, yeah. dude. He's Marks' is basement, and it's been finalized. I mean, Kiefer said this. Kiefer's Kiefer, no, we've all known this, but, but now the world knows. Yeah, now yeah. the world knows. Yeah. I, I met her at the Vegas live show a couple years ago. But God damn, I forgot how hot she was. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's getting a that's little. Yeah, that's, that's that's dark side for you. Yeah, dark side. Yeah. Mm. What, uh, Courtney? So, how do you feel about ponies on men? Ooh, I mean, if that's your thing, go for it. But um, but it's not your Trav thing. Trav will not be growing a pony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, he can, he can barely grow a beard. Mm. Wow. Okay. Uh, Ooh. Uh, uh, it was I'm nice with having you. her here, wasn't I'm it, with for you. a minute? Yeah, well, she's <laughs> got to go. Uh, Darkside, you're coming in in a couple of weeks, and we're going to cut the pony live on the air, right? Uh, no, I don't think we agreed to that. Listen, we can work something out, but I was at the uh, – Jet Lawrence championship party, and you can now talk to my new agent, Mertz. He'll he'll be contacting you. Okay, about the okay, fair enough. Yeah, Mertz. Well, yep. there's one thing about Mertz; it's money talk. So that'd just, be simple. We'll yeah. give him five yeah. bucks. We'll cut that sucker yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. If I started yeah, a GoFundMe right now with our listeners, I would have your pony for a thousand bucks in a day. And Mertz would take a thousand bucks to do anything. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Mertz, huh, Mertz would kill a man yeah. for a thousand bucks. He, he told me to not cut it, to tell you to F off. We're not we're not doing it. So we'll see, man. If right. you guys can work it out, maybe we'll talk about it. All right, Dark Side. But, Wrap up show this week? All right. Are you calling back yeah, in? Yeah, I was going to call in later. You want to just do it now? No, call in later. Okay. We got to go. All right. Talk to you guys later. See ya. Uh, Dustin's on one. What's up, Dustin? Hey, Dustin. Sorry, I heard my own name. Yeah. Uh, what's going on, Steve? How you guys doing? What's up, Dustin? You oh, well. So... I used to be a KTM rider, and I work, well, anyways, I work at a dealership, and I noticed this thing about the number plates. All the Japanese bikes got this little hoopty doop around the handlebars, and the Japanese bikes, or the KTMs oh don't have God. that. What's did, that? Did, did, you, did you tweet me this or something? I feel like. What's I did. Do? I Instagram messaged you. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, nobody knows and nobody cares. What? What is this? Why do you care so what's much? What's a hoopty doop? What's, what's oh, your deal? Over the, over the front yeah, number so plate? Yeah, so you know how KTM's th front brake on a KTM goes behind the front number plate? Yeah. It, there's a little guide there? Yeah. Dustin here can't no, believe. not that. Not that. Okay. It's the part that goes around the handlebar. Why do they yeah. still have a strap around the handlebar? The it doesn't make any sense. Oh, I thought what you mean? meant behind. Okay. Sorry. Yes, it does. Uh, That's That prevents the front front brake line from getting stuck behind the but front KTM number plate. But KTM doesn't have that. Yeah, because theirs is built. Their, their right, front right. brake routing is yeah, built into the front the number, number plate. plate and it's then, built into so it, yeah. Dustin wants to know, why don't the Japanese do that? Why? What makes the bit. KTM design better, Dustin? Well, I ride RM Army now, so I actually think the Japanese design is better. So. Oh, why does your bike have a Kickstarter? 
Well, my 04 and my 19 both have Kickstart, and it works flawlessly okay, until so. my MCL blows out. But, you know, that's the fact. Dustin, I think that the the front number plate with the little guide on the front, like a Japanese, and the strap going over the crossbar pad all looking trick, I think that's cool. I think that's cool looking. Yeah. No, it, I, you know, you work at a dealership, you look at bikes, you always just ask questions to yourself. So Why does, why does KTM anything. use wood screws with the plastic on? Why do they go to Home Depot and just use wood screws? Ask, worry about that, Dustin, with KTM. You know, you know, it goes into plastic, so it, it's it's like sharp. It threads good, really good one time, right? So those aren't bad. Those aren't bad. They're really and why lightweight. They, and why do they use thirteen millimeters mm. everywhere? And why do the rear brake well, pedal just hangs in there from the from the backside? Like that's that's ridiculous. Ford's Ford's use weird sizes too. You know, you got to have an oddball every once in a while. All right, Dustin. I got. I, I I got one more thing for you, Steve. It, I do have better, a future be headline better. if you have okay. time. Future headline. Fired. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, Mookie moves the competition out of the way on the Husky, or Jason Anderson fries the competition with Kawasaki. Bro, you can't like those are so vague. Like, what, are, you, are you saying Mookie beats Anderson or Anderson beats Mookie or does Mookie move the competition to podiums? Competition. Or, or like, I, I don't know. I got to go. That's that's ridiculous. All right. Thanks, Dustin. Wow. I want to talk about Mookie that's later impressive. on with you guys as well as Marvin. Sure. Marvin Supercross only deal. Mookie two-year outdoors and Supercross deal with the Rockstar team. When's so, the last time you raced outdoors? Uh, 1983. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, Charles Caslu and uh, Paul Parabinos here. So thanks to the folks at Works Connection, we are giving away a pro launch device tonight because uh, they won both championships with pro uh, launch devices, the Jet and the Dylan. Uh, so we are giving away one of those guys. Uh, Dark, Dark Side is not eligible to win. Um, how do you want to do it, Marks? Uh, email. Email? Sure. Because you don't want anybody to call your wife and pile the, in the, the phone the, calls? The less phone calls... Uh, the less chance that she leaves me. So Okay. All right. Uh, email contest at pulpamexshow.com and put WC or Works Connection or Start Device or, or Screw Dark Side, anything in the subject line, and uh, we'll pick a random winner out of there, and you win a uh, Works Connection Pro launch device for your motorcycle. I have one on my bike. It was taken off for the Paula National. I would have loved to keep it on there, but... Um, and so, yeah, thanks to the Works Connection, guys. We are going to give one away. So thank you very much for that. And, again, 25 bucks for a YZ125. All proceeds go to Waverly. Marks, that thing's up to six grand, I think. Uh, yeah, like? yeah. I, I don't remember the exact number, uh, yeah. but it's it's moving. It's oh, moving real six well. grand already, That's I cool. think we got. So, yeah, absolutely. Thanks to the folks at Yamaha. I mean, dude, these guys, Fantasy, that, Waverly, Privateers. Awesome. I th- whoever's doing their marketing, they do a good job. They're everywhere. They do. Uh, Paul Parabinos tonight brought to you by the folks at Art of Sport. Uh, thanks to the, those guys at Art of Sport. Paul, did you ever get any Art of Sport? I think you did. Yeah, uh, I got some kind of body wash stuff. Do you need more? Sure, I'll take more. Okay, we'll give you some more tonight. Thank you. Thanks to the folks at artofsport.com for that. Uh, they go to artofsport.com forward slash pulpamex to uh, save at artofsport.com. Uh, they got the uh, great deodorant, body wash, uh, all products under 10 bucks. You go through that link. Don't go to Target. Don't go to Walgreens. Don't go to CVS. Go to artisport.com forward slash pulpmx. There you can save. Contactless buying. You know what I mean? Safer. Is that like a, as opposed to a discount code? You just go to that URL and it. There is a there is the, the deal discount there. is there is in there. Yeah. That's cool. And then I get a small. You get a slice. Bit of that. A slice. Right. A small a bit of that. You know. Uh, pay, so yeah. Pay Courtney. Courtney is extravagant. Her fee her Expensive. fees are high tonight. Um, all right, Davy Coombs coming right up here. You have a great question for Davy. Uh, we're gonna. Yeah, I, I didn't I prepare him it. for it, but you got a good question for Davey. Uh, I want to talk to him about GL stuff too. I asked him. I said I'm gonna talk to you about GL. He's like, cool. So we're gonna get into that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, t- get into the series as well. Um. Uh. Eli Tomac, done with Cowie. Brian Kranz, the second winningest rider mechanic combo. Uh, I'm not listed. I think I'm pretty far down there. But mm-hmm. um, yeah. Uh. Uh. Brian Kranz is done. Eli almost went out a winner, but he won the final moto for Cowie. Mm-hmm. What a career for Kawasaki Paul. Yeah, really cool. And I think I mean I think both sides are 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 happy, right? And proud and they had a good relation. I mean, for Cowie's sake, they didn't really have anybody in the pipeline to fill that spot after Villo left, right? I think it was yeah. Millsaps and Han for a bit and um they were fortunate to come across Eli and get his services and and he brought them lots of championships. So I think they're yeah. You know th- what? It uh, went out went, went went good for them, but I think um yeah, I was still I'm still surprised that Eli's leaving for a uh, for Yamaha for yeah. maybe one maybe two years right 
And, you know, his mechanic, Kranz, brought this up to me, and I knew this because Sternstrom at Cowie told me this too. Uh, he missed one race at Kawasaki. His shoulder, uh, his crash, uh, whatever, round two yeah, was at missed Houston. missed the second, yeah. He missed the Supercross, second Supercross that year. He made every other race for Kawasaki that he was eligible for. And that's and you look yeah. at And uh, <clears throat> you look at the history of injuries in the sport, right, and how hard it is to stay healthy, and that's almost – that's not as amazing as all the wins, but, dude. That's that, amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you look at Monster Cups, and you look at the MXGPs he yeah, did, yeah. Uh, uh, Dis Nations. And I think that's one of the biggest things why Eli commands a big salary is that stat right there. It's not so much that you know he's going to be in the fight to win, but you know he's going to show up every weekend. Right. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, yeah, he hasn't missed races. That's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? Uh, so if you think about that, um, that's pretty impressive. And, and what a career for him at Kawasaki. Yeah, one of the greats, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. And I, I'm... Like Paul, I was I was very surprised when I heard that news originally, that he was going to go to Star Yamaha. Right. Like, what? Like I, I never saw. I it think coming. I was the first guy to pick that, okay. put that out there. Where I yeah. was like, I think so. Yeah. And I was like checking it like three times. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? Are you? Are we sure? Yeah. Like that was <laughs> that was out of left field for me. Yeah. Like I didn't see that coming. Right. Um. So yeah, great, uh, great, uh, great career for Eli at Kawasaki. And uh, it's cool. He didn't win the overall, but he went out, and Kawasaki gave him a little uh, plaque and everything. That's and all cool. that, yeah, so. Kawasaki's a good company. And I'm stoked for Kranz, too. Right. Right? He has three small children at home. Yep. He's been flying on a Wednesday and back on a Sunday for years yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and, and I think people don't realize, too, the pressure at that level of that guy, yeah. of the team. Yeah. See, I don't. I think Kranz has gotten used to that. I think he was fine with the pressure. But, man, the, the, just the workload, week in and week out, is, is gnarly. Yeah. Like, I think he was used to the pressure, right? He's been in every situation you can be in. Yeah. And yeah. he they, he'd never really had any mistakes if you think about it. Like I can't no, think of yeah. a failure. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, good uh, on him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I I uh, I agree. So, Eli's done with uh, Cowie and uh certainly I wonder I don't think he's going to ascend on the Yamaha. You know, we'll talk more coming in the coming weeks for I think this is Eli beginning of a downslope and there's nothing wrong with that. He's older and he's been nose to the grindstone forever. But maybe the blue crew unlocks it. You know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Interesting, I guess. I, I think the, I still don't know who his mechanic's going to be. Right? There's going to be some learning it's, uh, to do there. Cooper's guy, I believe. Oh, yeah. Who's, who's going to work for Cooper? I don't know. You? Uh, uh-uh, I okay. Uh, that's a lot of work. Okay. Um, you just did it literally. Yeah. Just, just like two weeks ago. But. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know how how much Eli will improve either, or if, if he won't, if he will. But yeah. um, I think working with Gilly was will be the biggest thing for him that yeah. he'll enjoy over there yep and and maybe a change of scenery change of pace change of stuff like really helps Eli I have no idea right I, none of us do but um he's been in such a stable environment for so long he was with Geico Honda for his whole 250 career right yep. and then he was factory Cowie for how many years now I don't even know a long time right? yeah and maybe that change is gonna gonna kickstart something yeah him. I don't know yep. it, it's hard to say right. no one none of us know but like man it's it's gonna be weird. Yeah, seeing him on a on a black it, bike. It, it really will, right? Yeah. Uh, on a black bike. <laughs> it is black. <laughs> it's black. It's yeah, accurate. Yeah, it's got yeah. a bl- blue seat cover. Right, Everything right. else black. Uh, I want to thank the folks at uh, OGO. Of course, traveling is a pain. Uh, Charles, you use OGO, I'm sure, for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul, you too, as well, I'm sure. Uh, thanks to the folks at OGO, OGO Power Sports. Uh, they got the backpacks with the laptop sleeves and pockets everywhere. They got the 9800, which uh, uh, I don't know. Um, does everybody in the industry own a 9800 at one point? Is there anybody who hasn't had a 9800 at some point? Yeah, I, I would think, think everybody. Sure. For everybody? Sure, yeah. uh, they got the rig bag as well. If you want a discount from the folks at OGO, uh, email us using the contact form at pulpmex.com. I'll pass it on to the folks at OGO. And uh, we just gave a one, a wee, one away uh, last week. We're going to give one away a month as well, uh, the pro bag from 9800. And, uh, but we can give you a discount. Simply email us using the contact form on Pulp, and we'll pass it on. And uh, OGO stuff. Good, 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 uh, good guys, good company, and uh, great bags. They support the sport. OGO is pleased and proud to bring you our first guest of the night. Uh, he is the uh, editor of Racer X magazine, as well as a big part of the Nationals. My boss at Racer X, Davey Coombs. What's up, DC? How are you, man? Well, hello, Steve. Hi, Charles. Hi, Paul. I, um, you caught me in the middle of switching jobs again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. It's over, and we had some COVID affect some of the racers in the pits, but. Everything else worked pretty smoothly. Uh, I know there was some stuff juggling behind the scenes, but it could have been a whole lot worse, huh, Davey? Well, let me tell you, I just sat in a high school gymnasium for two and a half hours with a mask on in the middle of West Virginia, cheering on my beloved South Stallion girls volleyball team. (laughs) And uh, it's a much different world than, say, Pala. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But, um, yeah, I'm so thankful uh, and happy and and proud of 
uh, our team at MX Sports and all the promoters, but really the riders and the race teams and and the fans for just sticking with us and 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 you know listening to our guidance and uh, letting us do everything we could not only last year but this year to um, to get to the finish line. And uh, every time you think it's over, and by that I mean the pandemic and the restrictions you know, something else pops up and, and it just seems like it's a daily thing. One, one county away from where I live in West Virginia, uh, they just went back to remote learning and shut all the schools and all the sports down. And it's like, man, yeah. it, 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 it's going to end, but it ain't going to end real soon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Do you, do you anticipate, uh, next year just being one Paula? Do you see a, a track coming back either, either <laughs> WW or, like obviously it's uh, early, but do you think? Oh, you mean, I thought you meant all twelve at Powell. Oh no, no, no! Uh, that, that, that was Troy Lee's suggestion. I think Troy Lee wanted all of McLean Ellen, but uh, yeah, what uh, yeah, what do you think? No, I, I do. I definitely uh, anticipate. If not, uh, if we don't find that twelfth facility, uh, it'll definitely be a different facility that that hosts both races or hosts a doubleheader. Right. And you know the the simple truth is that Powell is a you know Fox Raceway is a very unique situation being on you know tribal land and uh they no matter what don't have to you know worry about the same things that mm-hmm. others and uh worry about and you know last year we told them at the the second race uh you know we, we really want to cut it at five thousand. they're like oh okay <laughs> they didn't yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they didn't and so this year when we're also again looking at an uncertain schedule we knew that uh you know everyone wanted to start and end in california but hank town could not go in may uh that race would not have happened in fact if it had been in may because of the restrictions on state parks and yep. whatnot and um we put him at the end and man i was scared to death that either no one was going to show up or it was going to be 110 degrees or the place would be on fire <laughs> all, all three of those were possibilities yeah about 48 hours away and then lo and behold it the rain comes the the fans turn out in droves and you know we ended on a high note and um it was funny i realized standing there in the infield that the two guys who won the first two motos of the year were the champions uh jet lawrence and ferrandis yeah yeah so we've never had two foreign champions right i don't believe i think that's the first I, I don't think so. I, I I think I saw that on someone's post on Vital, or maybe it was um, LeBig. But, um, yeah, I started scratching my head when you mentioned it, and I'm like, I, I don't think that's ever happened. And, uh, you know, the closest you get is John michel Bale himself yeah, yeah. in 1991, winning three, which has never happened before or since. Uh, but there was one other really neat little tidbit about Jet and Dylan and their teams. This is the first year that two brand new teams, basically, Honda's back to the in house 250 program and Star Racing's 450 program, they each won in their first year. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Right. I'm, I mean, I know that's not like, you know, gas, gas and can am winning, but uh, it, it, it was it was pretty, pretty interesting, I thought. And, um, you know, and I, I think that those guys earned it from start to finish. Uh, there were there were a lot more. There was a lot more drama, obviously, in the in the two hundred and fifty class because it went down to the very end. But um, yeah, I yeah. thought the two best guys won in the end. I think so too, right, Charles? I mean, I feel like the, those. I mean, Justin Cooper was my pick because Jet didn't seem to get out of his way, but Jet ended up winning more motos. More overalls, you know, I, yeah. I, and Dylan, of course, was the class of that. Yeah, field. and no matter which way you sort of slice up and dissect the the results, like, I mean, they they were the best riders on paper. So, um, yeah, there, yeah, there's there's nothing like you said mid mid outdoors. Yeah, it, you know, it looked a little bit different in the 250 class, but um, ultimately, when the dust settled, the the stats lean one way and the points. Uh, yeah, Davey, so in 89, I read your story about this guy that shows up with Starbuster on his back of his pants and wins the first national that he ever enters, JMB. And in 91, he goes on to become, you know, the first French guy to win a championship. And now Dylan is the second Frenchman, you know, 29 years later or 30 years later to win the premier class. And you were around John michel back then. Is there any similarities between them? Do you... Did, I, don't, I don't think so in my uh, mind, but do you see I, any? I, 
I think they both have those courageous mullets. You know, that's a, <laughs> it's a very French look. Uh, um, you know, I do see similarities, but I, I see more of, um, you know, of Dylan and a lot of the other French kids that have come along in the last 30 years being a, a sort of replica of JMB. JMB blazed this trail all by himself. Mm-hmm. He, he had guidance from Roger. But before that, you know, in his generation, the only real international rider was Jeff Leask. Right. And he spoke English. Yeah. <laughs> and JMB was sort of an island unto himself. And, um, and, and the French were, and by the French, I mean the Federation, the industry over there, were very much against it. And uh, they, they thought that, you know, that the next Jackie Vimone should not be trying to be the next Roger DeCosta or the next Ricky Johnson or, yeah. you know, whoever JMB looked up to. And um, so he got a lot of pushback to the point where it really motivated him. And then, you know, for 30 years, you know, whether it's Mikhail Pichon, uh, Roncada, Villeman, uh, Porcel, uh, Marvin, and it just goes and goes mm-hmm. that, that they come over, but they never get to where John Michel was. And Dylan's still not there, but man, he's the one that I, I think is, is going to be formidable for the next couple of years because whatever they found after Supercross and before the start of Motocross uh, is, is, is going to be tough for people to catch up to. Because I think that he's got uh, a lot of momentum, he's got a lot of drive, and in that regard, he is like JMB. Um, it's hard to tell what makes the guy tick, mm-hmm. but when he says, I, I, "I'm happy when I win," winning makes me happy, uh, and he is. I mean, he's he's. You know, I, I think that that he got a bad rap last year. You know, that early Anaheim stuff with yeah. Christian, Christian Craig and, yeah. and Jet, but he didn't do anything wrong. It, it was just because the French have historically made an easy target but you have to admit you got you guys go to all the races he turned the crowd in a yeah. very positive yep. way no, he, he did he he earned it and um and in that regard i think that he's getting something that john michelle never really got and that is acceptance right um you know we we fans and, and we moto journalists love jmb but you know the rank and file fan and in, in the grandstands at you know, East Rutherford, New Jersey, thought he was a commie bastard. <laughs> they did, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that's what Larry Myers is right, telling them. Right. But I, um, I see. Um, so that, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say. So, yeah. so I, I see more differences than similarities. Knowing that that that, that Dylan kind of came on a path that was blazed by JMB, but out of all those guys, I think that 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 he might have the demeanor closest. Uh, to to JMB with just that sort of laissez faire, you really you know he, he's always got gunfighter eyes. You know um, the other guys, you know sometimes whether it was Porcel or Villy, you know David Villeman, they would they would wear it on their sleeves and they would you know kind of wander into mm-hmm. you know public conversation and 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 interviews and whatnot. And Dylan is like a he's like a robot, uh, a very a very cool robot, mm-hmm. but you know he's yeah. a machine. Yeah, for me. Uh, Marv, Purcell, Roncada, uh, uh, JMB, DV, they all had a French riding style. They all rode that way. They were smooth, precise, exciting to watch. But Tortelli and Dylan are the two French guys where I'm like, they don't ride like the French. They're aggressive. They're attacking. They're angry, right? Uh, it's a, it's right. definitely a different mentality for most French riders. Right. And, and uh, you know, and I forgot about Sebastian. And, and I would put Sebastian – on a level uh, of talent outdoors, especially with with what Dylan showed, but Seb just couldn't get through Supercross in one piece, yeah. and he never really got to be the guy that was battling, you know, Everts and you know ninety seven, ninety eight, and um, I, I think that that's just you know that's the cruel mistress that is racing. You know, you're bound to get hurt, and in Sebastian's case, it kept him forever winning a championship here, but. Uh, I, I would say that he's up on that level of the best French guys ever that have come to America. Yep. 702-586-7857. You got a question for Davey Coombs. Give us a call. Brought to you by the folks at OGO Power Sports. Uh, Davey, I also want to talk to you about uh, so uh, the Grant Langston uh, controversy, I guess let's call it. Uh, the series lost their longtime color guy, GL. He bowed out. Uh, Instagram went crazy. Social media <laughs> went nuts. 
Uh, and you actually, I was surprised. Uh, you stopped in to see GL uh, last week. Uh, how was that situation for you, who, who truthfully didn't have anything to do with it, uh, uh, MX Sports or you yourself, but how was that for you, man? Well, it was, it was unfortunate, but, man, you know, GL and I go back to literally the 2000 uh, Motocross of Nations in St. John d'Angeli. I actually went and did a story on him uh, about, you know, getting ready to come to America. And I was like, you know, him and his uncle and his dad, Gerald, I'm like, you know, anything you guys need, anything. And uh, so we've been friends throughout. Uh, and, and, you know, it was my sister that introduced him to announcing because uh, you have to remember in 2008, whenever he couldn't race because of his eye cancer, um, he never really got to wear the number one plate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he'd, he'd won the year before. And, uh, and that was, you know, kind of sad. So Kerry's like, why don't you come to Steel City? We'll put you in the announcer's booth. You can ride a lap of honor, wear that number one plate. And so we just always had a very good uh, relationship. He, he wrote for the magazine for a while. And so I barely talked to Grant at the races or, or Weege uh, or you, Steve. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. wearing that other hat. And, um, so it all kind of caught me off guard what was happening because I didn't even know from Weege that there had been an outbreak in the TV compound and mm -hmm. everyone had to go get tested. And, and, and they were telling people, all right, if you're positive, great, but still we want you to stay home for five days. If you're not vaccinated, everyone come back next week. And we're talking about like six people here, mm -hmm. including Pineapple, one of the first guys in who does all the, the – a lot of pre-production and um somewhere in tra translation it, it 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 rubbed grant wrong but you know i'm not gonna you know let anyone tell you otherwise grant was ready to quit long before COVID. Mm -hmm. he, he he uh he's a, a a single dad two young kids uh has missed a lot and and he got really frustrated especially at Southwick, where both of us missed a flight. And it cost me about 12 hours in the airport. And I think it cost GL a whole day. Mm -hmm. and, and he was bumming about that and said, you know, I'm, I'm going to see it to the end, but that's it. And then this curveball came. And, and I'm sure that it you know, caught Grant off guard because I think he was riding in Utah uh, on one of the, the Ken Fott um, mm -hmm. adventure rides with uh, the Gen Emigas co-producing. And I think that's what happened here. He found out because when they, the TV co company, started thinking, uh-oh, what are our options if GL and Ashley can't come? Uh, one of the names was Emig because he's, you know, worked for NBC. He's been great in the booth for many years. You know, he, he wasn't on Supercross anymore, but he was a name. Dungey was a, a name, and Carmichael was a name. And I think that someone called Jeff Emig who was with his daughter in New Orleans, and that in turn ended up being punched through to Utah and lost in translation. It became, what do you mean I'm being replaced? No, they were, they were trying to figure out what they were going to do. And uh, so it just so happens the next day, which is Thursday, I'm in, uh, at a meeting with Lucas Oil with, with Morgan Lucas, who's taking over for his father, Forrest, mm -hmm. Uh, in the office, and everyone's got masks on, and, and me and my sister walk in, and we're like, we're vaccinated. I mean, we, we, you guys are... And then Scott, Scotty McLemore tells us about, you know, the situation they're in, and I'm like, holy shit. He goes, in fact, I've got uh, Bondo and GL, mm -hmm. you know, texting me now. And uh, so we have our meeting, and then as we're walking out, you know, Scott's like, I'm, I'm going to need to call Grant and let him know that, you know, they, that they want him to stay home this weekend. And within uh, – that was 11.45 Indiana time, uh, which is East Coast. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got to lunch and got ordered, uh, GL had sent a text, and then moments later his, his videos went up. And I know everyone has an opinion about COVID and vaccinations and masks and whatever, uh, and I have them myself. Uh, but at the end of the day, if a private company, which is what Lucas Oil Studios is, says 
we're going to follow the CDC guidelines and the OSHA suggestions that says if you've had an outbreak, everyone needs to be parked for five days if they're not vaccinated and self-quarantine. Uh, I would have no problem doing that. Uh, I, I, that's We had to do it in my office uh, back in the spring. Um, it happens. That's you know yeah. you don't want to knock a whole company out or open a whole company up to an OSHA violation in a in a lawsuit or two or two hundred. And um, but it all sort of I think ramped up at once on GL, and, and he was really frustrated. And it was with deep regret uh, that that they accepted his yeah. resignation and that he quit. Because we were planning to have a big party for him at Hangtown. And uh, we will have a big party for him. Hopefully, you know, around Anaheim. Uh, because, you know, he is a, a dear friend of mine, uh, of, of Bondo's, of Scotty McLemore's, of Jason Wygant's. And, you know, unfortunately, me and Weege and Fro got drugged down into this. I don't know, um, you know, when people that should know better are texting Jeff Emig telling him not to take the job. Don't do this. You'll be a scab. I know it's brutal. Uh, brutal. That that that's that that makes zero sense. And and those same people now are sort of, you know, I didn't really say that. You know, but <laughs> yeah. Fro shared the text with all of us. Um, yeah, poor Fro. Anyway, so I wanted to put an end to any confusion that anyone might have had, uh, especially between grant and myself and then anyone you know i i could care less you know i i've got a friend uh you know a guy that jason wygant and i just like you campaigned to get dogger in the hall of fame steve that was that's been the last year for me and wygant trying to get gl in uh i'm not going to ruin a friendship over a misunderstanding with another company and a bunch of haters on the internet who um you know apparently uh I, there's a there must be a hell of an online epidemiology university because uh, <laughs> some of these people can't spell scientists, but they sure know when one's right or wrong. I know it's um, a, it's a crazy time in the country, and and GL GL did a great job. He's going to be missed. He did a great job. He, uh, he, you know? he absolutely yeah. he 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 was you know for eight years or seven years he was fantastic. I personally hope that we see and hear him again Mm -hmm. on tv but it's it's honestly not my call but when it is he'd be the first guy that that i'd you know be like all right let's get a let's get a revolving team of people here because we're all older and we've got these great guys that have families and other jobs like ricky jeff ryan dungy gl Mm -hmm. uh then you got announcers that you know the color commentator or not color commentators but play-by-play guys that are fantastic i put weege at the top of that list why not have a revolving thing where where people don't lose their minds because they're on the road for you know every weekend of summer, all seventeen Supercross races? Um, that's why I quit. I, I had started a family. I couldn't, and the magazine, so I couldn't be going to the races every weekend. Ironically, I am now, but not Supercross, just yeah. just outdoors. Uh, but no, anyway, yeah. so to, to 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 put a fine point on it, when I when I when I texted gl and you know and first i wanted to see if you know, he wanted to come to the race if he needed tickets um and and he said no that he, he had given his uh managers the weekend off and and because of you know they they worked all the time while he was gone so he's like i'm gonna take one for the team and i said well i do need some boots because i'm going on this riding trip and i don't like to ask anyone for anything free mm-hmm. and uh Sure, part of that was I just wanted an excuse to come see him. And uh, so I drove up to his amazing shop, really nice bike shop, uh, Langston Motorsports in, uh, I guess it's uh, Paris. Renifee, Temecula. Paris, Paris, Paris yeah. yeah. Paris, okay, yeah. It's all the same to me. I'm, I'm it, from yep. West Virginia where it's all <laughs> It's West all the Virginia. same to us, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we, we hung out and bench raced and laughed and uh, – and, and, you know, obviously, it, it was a relief, I think, to both of us to know that, that you know, it, it wasn't what anyone thought. Uh, but, but, you know, Grant kind of became this accidental martyr uh, for the cause of whatever these people are against. And, and I can understand that, but they have to understand that no one asked him 
to take a vaccine. No one was ever ordered to get a vaccine, not in the pro paddock, not in the MX sports truck, not in the TV truck, not I, 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 no one. Yeah. I'm sure if you join, if you join the, the U S army, yeah, you're going to have to get the vaccination. But, um, it was, it was really, that's the unfortunate part to me is that, um, it turned into like, you know, the haves and the have nots or, or, or vaccine, anti-vaccine. And man, it was never about that. It was about a company following its OSHA and CDC guidelines saying we've had a breakout. We don't want to go out of business. We don't want everyone to get sick. If everyone has to go get a positive t- or get a test, and if you're negative, great. If you're vaccinated and you feel like coming to work, do. If you're not, take five days off, self-quarantine. We'll see you next weekend. Yeah. And it, it should have ended there. I, I uh, agree. Yeah, it, it, got, it got nutty. Nutty. Uh, so. Yeah. And it, it still is. Yeah, it still it is, is to some yep. degree. And, and, and uh, you know, I had, uh, I had let's say, a prominent parent of a future superstar uh, come up to me when I got to, to uh, Fox Raceway and said, um, hey, um, you know, we got to do something about all this bullshit, you know, like people demanding vaccines and stuff. And I'm like, who? <laughs> he goes, Supercrosses. I'm like, no, they're not. I was like, yeah. That I, I I mean I I saw the petition going around, but yeah. that's actually kind of an exercise in futility. Feld is a private company that will do what they want to do, but in the end, you know who's going to say vaccine or no vaccine? The buildings. Yeah, yeah, probably. But yeah, Feld and can't that, Feld can't make the contracted riders take a vaccine. No, they can't. The, and nor, yeah. nor can nor can they. Right tell a stadium like the new las vegas stadium in your town steve yeah. which is not allowing anyone in without a vaccination they're not going to be able to strong arm that two billion dollar stadium into you know letting yeah. people in i mean this is not over and it's changing and people are going to get uh, angry and confused more um but what's funny is uh you know team usa is not in Italy right now for three pretty obvious reasons. Uh, and, and that is concerned that the three athletes would test positive and not be able to race once they got over there. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't worth the risk. They all unanimously decided they all wanted to go, but man, Italy's cracking down and we might, you know, po- you know, test positive and, and they decided not to go. And it's like, well, where's the outrage over that? Yeah, you know, no, we, no, no. we we went we went nuts over this one thing that was not really what people thought it was, and now you know we 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 can't send an American team because we 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 don't have three guys that that would be comfortable going over there, and by comfortable I mean feel like they're not going to suddenly get tested and in fact test positive. Yeah, um, and a lot of mechanics and a lot of crew members, and you know these are weird times. And like I like I said earlier, they're they're not over yet. But um, hopefully, the 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 Darwinism in all of this will sort of you know get to enough people that it's like you know wow if we were almost at the finish line, we almost <laughs> we, we were did almost we there. thought we were there we did <laughs> we we thought we thought we were there and and like I said you know they're shutting down schools back here in West Virginia and sporting things and you know we we we're worried about gncc completing the season and yeah. you know because because i do have you know those other that we do have other events that do coming up but yeah. um but you know at the end of the day i'm so glad i went to see grant uh Good, yeah. we've been sending photos back and forth he's a great guy uh and and i i know that um we haven't seen or heard the last of gl uh, no, you're absolutely right. Hopefully not, Paul. So we were bench racing today on our mountain bike ride a little bit, Davey, and then and then and then I said you need to ask Davey this question because oh. the, um, so the numbers are out or they're not officially out, but you know Dan Truman and other people have done the numbers, and uh, um, so we we think we we're close to it. But Paul, go ahead. Yeah, we were just talking about the numbers, and then 13 came up, and uh, I think. Craig can pick 13, or maybe Colt can pick 13 if they want. We know Colt won't do it, right? He's already had a bad experience with it. And then I was wondering, has anybody 
Who's who? Who's done the best with thirteen? Or who has anyone won a race with thirteen? And we can't think of well, anybody. Well, you're, you're you're not going to believe this, but you guys are overlooking uh, someone who did win not too long ago with number thirteen. Uh, didn't Blake Wharton? Yes, Blake won a Supercross oh, at 13. Oh, on a Rockstar Suzuki. Yeah. On a Rockstar Suzuki. It was Blake Wharton. And yeah. before that, man, yeah, good pull. you know, you'd have to go all the way back to you know, Sebastian Totelli won, I think, with number 13. Um, I don't think he won uh, 13. Ricky, yeah, he won, uh, Ricky won with number 13 at uh, Gainesville Opener in 1990. When he and Stanton went across the finish line together. You said Johnson never uh, won with I didn't 13. think he was 13 that year. Yeah, you're he right, though. 13, he was 13. And then yeah. he won again at the end of that season, a 500 national at Unadilla. That's right. That's right. And then, so, uh, yeah. RJ won twice with 13. Hmm. RJ you, also and, ended his career with 13? Yeah, but his career ended because of his wrist. Yeah, but was um, he 13 that day? Yeah, the 13 again. He was 13 again he in was, 91. He was 13 yeah. in at, 90 and 91. Yep. Yeah. And then he, he, he did, what, six supercrosses and pulled right. the plug. Right. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, definitely – yeah, I don't see it going this year. I don't no, see, I don't either. No, I don't no. see it going, you know. I think the guy who did the best with 13 was Dan Marino. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a good pull. That's good. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah exactly. The best 13, right? Uh, but I, I do know that that was kind of a lot of the some of the conversation in in the the rig this weekend was you know Mike Pelletier is, you know kind of manages that aspect as the director of racing for the AMA and he was waiting to hear back from two guys with uh, permanent numbers that haven't raced in a while uh, and ironically numbers four and twenty two and. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where he landed on either. I, I have a feeling four may go into the mix, but 22 may not. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think you're right. 22 is right. keeping it. Yeah, he's just keeping in it. Case. Yeah, but I talked to both Dylan and Jet, uh-huh. and they both. It sounds like Dylan wants to keep 14, and according to, I didn't talk to Jet about the number. I talked about other stuff. But Lucas said, me and Johnny O'Mara were standing there and the, behind the tent, uh, waiting for the waiting for one of those many, many, many burnouts to actually, you know, catch the stage on fire. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was like, so, Hey, you know, number eight, it looked like upside down donuts, you know, two yeah, donuts yeah. stacked on each other. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, no, I think he's going to keep 18 cause he's going to be 18. And I was like, yeah, how's that going to look in uh, 2020? Three. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I, I think I'd take a single digit. I don't know these guys who don't take single digits. It's crazy well, to me. Johnny, Johnny said. Johnny said, uh, "Hey, I was number four and I was number five. I, I won a one twenty five title with number four, and I won a Supercross title with number five. So yeah, um, he was he was he was adamant that 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 uh, he should consider it. So anyway, we'll we'll see how it goes. I, I love that part of the year too." I wish that there weren't so many semi-permanent numbers, uh, so it would be a little more reflective of how guys did. Um, I love Chiz. I love Chiz Chizen, but uh, you know that number eleven is going to stay with him till probably uh, Jet Lawrence's yeah. kids are out there. Right, right. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I, I don't like. And I, I this. Geez, guys, have heard me. The fact that two fifty Supercross counts for the same amount of points to me is just ridiculous. Like you got half the competition; it's a regional series, and I, you look at the permanent numbers. They're two fifty guys get permanent numbers. And, yeah, and, and you know, I, 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 like I, 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 I agree. It's it's not perfect, um, and I I know that you know Supercross wants to get some recognition for what the guys do do, but a fifth in the two fifty class is like right barely barely qualifying in the 450 class. No, yeah, absolutely. Davey Coombs on the show, brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Davey, before we let you go, uh, I'm excited that the FIM is out of Supercross. I'm excited that the uh, uh, the drug testing is going to be a more reasonable policy. Uh, it's It's been a long time coming, and it seems like MX Sports and Feld are going to maybe have a little bit more cohesion on schedules, on drug testing, on different things, right? I, that, that's the word I get. I think that's fair. You know, the, the AMA and AMA Pro Racing are the sanctioning bodies that are working together. Um, you know, you could do a whole week of shows on, you know, the history of the FIM and Supercross and why they were there and why they yeah, stayed there and right. why the breakup was hard and, and all that. But, you know, and we're, we're to the point now where I truly believe 
just like we saw outdoors this summer, that Supercross, as soon as the pandemic is over, are in for a giant rebound. Uh, you know, you got to remember, they didn't get to have full stadiums this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. You know, the, the, the restrictions didn't really turn until late spring. And, uh, and now I hope they don't come back. But my, my point is that Supercross is perfectly positioned to have a banner year. And, and the fact that the confusion of two sanctioning bodies – uh, and 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 the, the 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 sword hanging over everyone's head that someone's going to you know get a four year suspension for not having an Adderall prescription or whatever you know is mm-hmm. is gone and we have more common sense things. I mean, guys are still going to get tested and guys are going to get caught, but they're not going to pay with their careers. Right? Uh, they, they'll pay with a season, uh, maybe two, depending on what it is. But um, you know. That's the that's the 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 future coming. Mm-hmm. But I will say this: we haven't had a failed drug test in a while, and we did test this year, uh, and we tested last year. Yeah, yeah. It's... And 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 so I think the guys got the message. Uh, even even though it sucked what happened to Christian and Cade and Brock and of course James Stewart, uh, that that they're really paying attention a lot more. Um, and I, I, I think that given uh, the cooperation and the fact that there will be this sort of unified approach to it will make it better across the board and, and also um, um, hopefully it will have the positive effects we all want it to have on the sport. I hope so too, man. And I like that break between Nationals and Supercross. Keep it at two or three weeks. Keep that break going. I like that. Uh, I was a fan of that. I always thought rushing into outdoors right after Supercross – didn't work for industry. Didn't work for riders. You know, teams, all that stuff. Because I've been there. Right? Yeah, but I, like I, I, I get, I get that. But you have to remember something. Hangtown is in a state park. State yep. parks are free to the public on national holidays. Oh, Memorial Day okay. is a national holiday, so Hangtown couldn't go Memorial Day. It had to go the week before or the week after, oh. and that has always sort of set the schedule. Now that we know that Hangtown works really well, uh, you know, in mm-hmm. late September or, or mid-September, that might be a possibility. But I think that we should see where, what Hangtown can do and, and go from there. Because um, I like to say motocross starts at Hangtown. Uh, and, but, man, they had a hell of a crowd on Saturday. They did. Uh, before, we let, before we let Davey go, Charles, mm-hmm. he's on the phone right now, and he'll just do what you say. So where would you like to see a national? What track are, would you, Charles Castle, like to drop a national into? Whatever you say, he, he'll bound to it. He's on the phone. He'll do it. It's 100%, <laughs> it's 100% guaranteed. No, nah, there's, there's, there's two non-starters, but go ahead. Okay, all right. Oh, right. Can, can we qualify? Can we do the non-starters? <laughs> can we get knock those off yeah. the list? What do you well, think, Helen, We don't need to go Glen Helen. Yeah, I'll we're, tell you that. we're okay with that. Yeah, okay. Um, I'd like to see somewhere in my home state of Texas. Okay. Um, Cycle Ranch. Cycle Ranch. Just okay. outside of San Antonio, Texas. Okay. All right. Uh, Paul. I, 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 I know where Cycle Ranch is. I've, I've heard from them a lot. Um, but, uh, man, it's hot in that part of Texas in July and August. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I can attest it's to that. It's a tad You're hot. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I don't mean to, to, you know, deflect or anything, but you have to remember that when it gets down to it, Supercross kind of follows a weather pattern. They go to the available stadiums and, and, and those, you know, that will have decent weather. So it's primarily a Southwest series for the first half. That's why all those races are in California, Phoenix. Um, and then it works its way to the Northeast in the spring and domed stadiums. Well, with motocross, if we're starting at the end of May, think of how hot it is in Arizona, Texas. Man, we know how hot it gets in Florida. And, and it, it, it just, it's tough. We have tried, not we, but promoters have tried many motocross events in Texas. The Lake Whitney, Rio Bravo, the old San Antonio track, mm-hmm. of course, um, Wortham, Texas. Yep. It, it just, it, Texas is tough because, you know, if you, if you're, it's a, you know, if you're going to have a flat track, 
put it in downtown Dallas. <laughs> you know, put, it next to the, put it next to the Dallas airport uh, because, you know, the, the, everything's so spread out as well. It's just, it's tough to have an outdoor daytime, day-long event in Texas at that time of year. And the same goes for Florida and the same goes for California. And that's why the California events are first and last. Um, and we go back east, and, and we go up into the northeast where it's going to be a little cooler. We got super lucky this year, 12 dry yeah. nationals. Yeah. Um, nothing real extraordinarily hot. Um, you know, Palo was, you know, was, was tough. Uh, had it been uh, Thursday weather at Hangtown instead of Saturday weather, that would have been a slog. It had been brutal. And uh, we, just, we just got really lucky. Um, but I will keep an open mind about Texas. Uh, I wish someone would pop up and say, hey, there's this track in Illinois or Wisconsin or Missouri. Uh, in fact, at Loretta Lynn's, anytime I saw someone with Missouri plates, I was like, are there any tracks there that, oh. you know, that's such a good area? And North Carolina is the same way. I, I talked to uh, a certain uh, – uh, Australian expat that now uh, apparently has a foot in both the bicycle and the mini cycle world about a place in North Carolina. Believe me, we're looking. I, I, I am not against new facilities. Uh, I just don't want someone to, to really invest a lot in a facility and then decide after a year like it's not for them. Right. Um, is the, and that, that, that has happened. Is a long term plan to stay away from Loretta Lens with Lucas Oil Pro Motocross? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Loretta Lynn's, you know, they, Loretta Lynn's Ranch bailed us out big time yep. last year by volunteering to have those two races. It was never, <clears throat> excuse me, never our intention to reconfigure that track to fit a pro national. It's got the same problem that, that, that Texas has. It's really hot at that time of year, and it's also not really close to anything. Loretta Lynn's amateur event is a destination race a week-long vacation so it's packed to the gills but the second loretta lynn's pro national was was really uh light um and there was a lot of things going on yeah. including a hurricane yeah it was a little <laughs> uh, but no we do not want to go to loretta lynn's um it, it it would be that is one of the two places that i just don't think will ever work for uh, pro motocross paul where's davy gonna put a national oh man well like, like davy just commented on there's so many different Variables, what about, right? What about but Manitoba, can we get one in Manitoba? That's what I'd like to see, right above North Dakota. Well, it, uh, only if you can be at the border to make sure all the U.S.-based rigs <laughs> okay, fit right, yeah. the Canadian uh, yeah. restrictions. Okay. So, and also make sure that Martin Davalos and Dean Wilson and all those guys, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, even if they're retired, I yeah. don't care. I want you at the border yeah, checking, yeah, yeah. checking credentials. There checking. back. I'll never, I'll never Both forget. Ways. I was on Genro and Prater forever to have a Supercross in Canada. And we finally got one in Vancouver. It was so bad. Our gender was like, "This is your fault." And I'm like, "I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry." Because there was like four thousand people in Vancouver, and I was like, "My bad. I thought they'd come out." Sorry. <laughs> so I don't. Well, want to you know, the, I I love going to um, any year. I get to go to Walton yeah. uh, to that race. It's a cool track. I love going to Toronto for the Supercross. Uh, I never made it to Vancouver, uh, but um, Toronto was cool. It, it, yeah. It's really it's really hard to. To, to have uh, the AMA National Championship in Canada. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, all right. Anything else for Davey Coombs? Charles Castle, Paul Barbino. Nope. Oh. All right. Um, Great job getting the outdoors in. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, that was good. Hey, yeah, thank you. And, and you know, it, again, I, I, uh, I'm really proud of our, our crew and our promoters, but I'm really grateful to um, the riders, the teams, the sponsors, and the fans uh, to just – kind of listen to what we were doing at the Safe to Race Task Force, listen to the, the leadership that my sister and Roy Jansen and Tim Cotter uh, were providing and, and also, you know, uh, doing the little things, you know, that, that might have seemed stupid, you know. I, I can remember when, when we, we tried to start last year at Loretta Lynn's and no one wanted to wear a mask. And it's like, uh, okay, <laughs> can you – can we're not going to ask you to race in them. Can you just can you just wear them when you're walking around? And, yeah. You know, and 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 we almost we almost didn't make it um, because you know all of a sudden the local officials and health officials are like, what's going on out there? 
No one's wearing a mask. You know, sometimes we've got to help ourselves in these situations. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I don't mean to, to, to joke about it, but going to Canada, I, I think we're getting close to Canada pulling what France pulled yeah. and what Italy's pulling and saying, if you're not vaccinated, stay home. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to, you know, and, and I, I, I do want to say this, and Steve, I talked to you about this once. I really like the way Jason Thomas thinks about these things. Uh, I'm not a mask uh, proponent or activist or a vaccination proponent or activist. Uh, I just did what Jason Thomas did. I realized if I was going to live my life and do the things that I wanted to do, which include traveling, going to Europe, going to eat out at restaurants because I can't cook, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to do things like wear a mask and consider a vaccination or otherwise – I might be left behind in those things. And I think that it's going to start to affect sports. And, and by that, I, I don't mean motocross. I mean everything. And you're going to see it in the NFL. I mean, Cam Newton ain't playing uh, for five reasons, and that's the five days he missed in training camp because, uh, you know, yeah. he might have had COVID. Uh, and they cut him because they're like, we, we can't – destroy you know the league over yeah know, the, the money the tv know, contracts things are marching on the best they can whatever yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, whatever epidemiology it is. classes cam newton took at auburn university uh i don't think he I, he might not have been there to finish him and and you know i don't it's these things like it's like everyone is so defensive and so aggro about it but it's like man the, the numbers aren't changing they're skewing for certain reasons and and for for 200 years we looked at those trends and thought oh let's stop doing that let's stop smoking cigarettes it's killing people let's stop doing that let's get polio vaccinations let's get rub rubella and all mm -hmm. this and it was never the pushback like we're having now i don't know how this is going to end but it's going to be heated time and again when 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 really good uh, well-minded athletes and their fans find themselves unable to participate or their events canceled uh, because we can't get our act together. And, and, you know, yeah. I, it's, it's not my, you know, thing. It's just, I just wish people would, would, would look at history, quit playing amateur scientist and, and, and really think about what's good for the community. And, 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 and by community, I mean schools, businesses, elderly people, children. Uh, we're, we're, we're all bent out of shape about the wrong things. And, and, you know, and if it's not right for you, then, man, stay home. Just right. if you don't want to do it, stay home. But don't drag everyone down uh, into this, this, this campaign of um, divisiveness. Yeah, it, that's all. It, it, it's and, well said. And I, I'd say I, I that's agree. it. I'd say that to anybody's face, and I have recently. Uh, and I, I don't want to, you know, be the other side of it. But I'm just the side of saying, guys, we're, we're we're we got a lot at risk here in our economy, in our communities, with our health, with our well-being, and this ain't going away until we make it go away. Well said. Uh, thanks for calling, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for everything. Good job on the Nationals. Glad we got this thing done. So. Uh, All right. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, Paul. And thank you, Steve. All right. Thanks. Enjoy. And you guys enjoy the offseason. Yeah. I know I'm going to. <laughs> I will, too. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, Davey. That's Davey Coombs brought to you by OGO Power Sports, of course. Uh, Charles Cassidy brought to you by Decal Works. Uh, Paul Perbinos brought to you by the folks at Art of Sport. Uh, let's move right into our next guest here. Uh, this man is uh, he was a gem. He was in studio all last week. Uh, brought to you by the folks at Motorsport, of course. Uh, uh, over free shipping, I think over $79. 100% uh, sold at uh, motorsport.com. It is. Uh, rental? Sold 100 percent Of course. Motorsport? Okay. Yeah. Right. Motorsport.com, of course, bringing you our next guest. He is uh, the retired uh, rider, Phil Nicoletti. Oh, Phil, sorry, you're not retired? Sorry, I was. <laughs> what's up, fellas? We're, what's uh, what's up? happening, man? So what kind of response did you get from, uh, you know, your in-studio appearance? Uh, no, it was pretty quiet. I oh, guess wow. I didn't do a good job. Hopefully, Paul and Charles do uh, do a better job than Troll Daddy and I. Yeah, I guess. But, I, uh, yeah, you know. No, it was it was worth it. I was got I got to come out. Uh, 
the e-bikes made it worthwhile, and like I said, thanks for burning up some miles. Had me stay a little later. And Chuck was complaining about the rocks today on the e-bike ride, Phil. So ah, uh, yes, so, so was I. Don't worry about it. Like a spoiler, damn enduro cross track. <laughs> uh, I know. I'm out there. I'm worried about you know unclipping and dabbing my knee, and I'm just like, see, there's nothing flatter or a little more safe for me out here. He goes, nope, everything's technical out here. I, I went no, flats, like, no, geez. no clips. Yeah, no clips. Really? Really? Paul, you're no. clipped, right? No. Are you flats? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's too rocky for all that. All right. It's fine. You guys are pussies. Jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, Phil, so, um, you know, uh, Charles is right here. He's a big wig, 100%. I mean, we could try to hash out a goggle deal for you, Phil, for 2022 if you want. We tried. Charles shut me down. Wow. No, really, I, Chuck? I did not. <laughs> we sponsored the Club MX team. We thought it was a team deal. Phil's included. I don't know. He's on the team. No. Doesn't show I, up I ride goggles. 450s. I don't know what happened. 450s. Oh, he had a different right. goggle. Yeah, yeah. that's funny because I offered I offered to help Phil, and he said, "Ah, sorry, it's like a team deal. I'm on the team." Mm. Oh, so certain things are team. Yeah, you oh, okay. walked right into that one, Phil. Okay. And you know what I just said oh. is truth. I, I, I'm pretty sure the 450 guys on every other team in the 250 they all run the same same bars, but they all have different goggles and helmets. Oh, Phil's saying like a rock star husky, like Dino and, yeah. and, and Mookie do their deals, and then. You know, the bikes mm. one thing. Okay, the gears another. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I okay. didn't. I, I didn't know Club MX was factory Yamaha. Me either. I didn't know. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> can we do this, Chuck? Can you get you know an athlete like Phil? Do you have I budget? We, I for mean, he's just like going to take the offer and go make Knowles run it. Yeah. Run it up. Like just running up the price Shoot. in our competition. I mean, honestly, Not looking Chuck, for that. he loves Knowles. They go. He they're, loves. They're, they're you don't want to run up the competition on your. Or run up the price you know, in your competition. I mean, Phil, if we know Phil's not really yeah. into it, and he's just going to take the offer over to the competition, like just oh come on. Alone. So no then that's what you do. You pay Phil, like, hey, I'll give you thirty bucks. Take this over to Knowles, run this up on him, get him to pay me. I'll give you Phil likes bucks. money. <laughs> Phil likes money. Listen, this is how fucking cheap Knowles is. He hit me up yesterday. Hey, you coming to Broom this weekend? And I'm like, Broom? Uh, is that a thing still? Yeah. Broom Tioga? Yeah, Broom Tioga. Scott's having like an invitational ride day, and I'm like, sick. Uh, well, I'm in Charlotte. How am I going to make it to Binghamton, New York? Am I coming out of pocket on that or, or or what? How am I doing that for Scott? Because Scott really doesn't pay me a whole lot, if anything, sometimes. And I'm like, how, how am I coming up there for, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll smoke all my Scott budget up in a, in a plane flight, you know? And, so, and, and did he and volunteer he, to fly you? No. No. Oh. Here we are. Oh, heck no. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, go to a wedding on Saturday and then not go to Brimtoga on Sunday. So Okay. So, Chuck, what, 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 we're going to well, yeah. we'll talk. Some Sounds like you're getting a lot of doors well, closed on. on you, Phil. Hang we on. need to drum up some more gonna, some more value out of Phil here. Hang on. Back, back, the, back okay. to Chuck up here. I yeah. think you, did, you discovered last week the plan is to ride 250 Supercross. Yeah, 250 Supercross. So I will see outdoor. you in 100% <laughs> goggles and Supercross. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Oh. Well, <laughs> nah. wow, this is going to go good. Yeah, right. Mm. You know, something about that club team, because I know the FXR guys gave the club team a bunch of money, mm. and then Josh Hill shows up in Fox Gear at the opener, and they're like, uh, uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> These teams let these athletes run the show. Right. That's just right. not how it works. Well, when you got cash, oh. when, so Phil's a Supercross champion. He's so a when North you're America sorry, Supercross champion. When you're a Supercross this champion. Is, this is getting awkward. I'm going to go now. <laughs> 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 uh, Phil Nicoletti brought to you by the folks at motorsport.com. Phil, did you think that Jet was maybe going to throw this thing away? Man, I think everybody thought that there for a split second. Right? Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that first crash is, is kind of lucky, you know. You don't know. Uh, bang yeah. up a radiator or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little, little squirrely, and then the lapper, and yeah, I didn't. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, I was kind of sweating bullets for him. So, but yeah, at least it made it a little bit more exciting. At least you know it wasn't just a boring day. Mm -hmm. And what um, do you, Phil? What's your idea on this uh, Jets' chosen start position, his gate in Moto Two? Yeah, I don't know. Kitchen what? Jet, Jay Coop, and then Hunter. What? I don't. <laughs> I don't if know. you're you're. I mean, if you're Jet or you're well, Kehoe, anybody, Cooper's got the first pick. Yeah, so advising, Cooper goes in the gate. And he had that choice to, yeah. to yeah, go Jet somewhere. Was, Jet was eight. Right? Yeah, and he chose to go right outside of one of the best starters in the class, the best starter in the class, not one of. He is the best starter yeah. in the class on the best bike in the class, the guy that he has to beat for the title. What in the hell was he thinking? Yeah, I don't really know. And <laughs> they, 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 they pinched him pretty tight. It's funny because I seen that and I text, I text Seth. I was just like, yo, whoa. What's what's going on here? And he's just like, yeehaw. 
And I'm like, all right, all right. let her eat. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, and, I don't and, know. I, and on the outside. On the outside. outside not, not even inside. Not even inside yeah, of the guy. Exactly. You're on the outside of the guy. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah. Outside's safer than the inside. Uh, well, no, at least on the inside, you kind of, you kind of. Turns Hold going left, left like Cooper get the whole shot. Yeah, but Coop can just, just go keep straight. Going straight. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if I'm Coop, I'm making a yeah, right ten no, feet if, out of the gate. If Paul is Justin Cooper in that, there's zero chance Jet Lawrence and, rounds that first turn in the top and, forty-two and for even, sure. And even Kitchen was classy about it too. Kitchen didn't do nothing. He just started. It's crazy. Yeah, oh my god. I, yeah, I, th- I thought I thought there was going to be fireworks there, but um, so, yeah, J-, J Coop did his classic. You know, got the jump and it was it was game over. Definitely. You know, Jet didn't come out great, though. You know, no, he still no, got pinballed no. around. So I don't know. It's pretty risky, in my opinion. I, if I was him, I, I wouldn't have went there. And no, if I'm anybody right. else, I, I would try not to line up next to a star bike if all, you know, <laughs> right. if possible. Especially so. like you know, like McElrath took Sexton's gate last year. Star protested Geico last year. Star guys are not scared to do some shenanigans, and, and so you have this team that maybe you know, is a little bit sketchy, and, and so now you're like, okay, why is Kitchen on the other side of me? And Well, no, Kitchen would have went first. Kitchen would have went right, well, first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kitchen was, kitchen kitchen was, was fifth. Fifth. So there was two star bikes, and he and, chose and to roll up between the two yes, of them. Yes, yes, kitchen was Kitchen was sixth. Outside of Justin seven, Cooper, seven, yeah. inside of another star bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jet's balls must have been hanging down to his knees, so and he must have, must have been feeling pretty confident. I, 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 I truly think a kid like Jet, the thought never crossed his mind. Oh, he's probably just like, man, well, that well, rut's we'll good. I'm this go is there. a good we'll rut. Ask him the night. That yeah. was it. It didn't yeah. think past that. Oh, that's a good rut. Yeah, he he's coming on the night. We're gonna ask him. But I'm pretty sure Osho was right behind him. I would hope Osho would be like, hey, I I wouldn't go there. Yeah. Um, somebody, somebody, anybody, mechanic, <laughs> crew chief, somebody on the headset, nobody, nobody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, Hunter, I mean, Paul, his brother. What you, what? Yeah, I mean. I, I don't know. What would you have done? If that I would have sawed that off Jet's front end I can to tell where you. he wouldn't, doesn't get up. I can tell you what Paul would have done because <laughs> Loretta's 2015. Paul came into the last moto probably second or third in points. Tied. And, and he went right inside of the guy that was ahead of him in points. And I had the next pick or two picks after that. I rolled up right inside of Paul because I knew when they came out of the gate, Paul was hanging the fucking left. <laughs> and I had the whole start to myself. Just cruising down the start. And Paul's taking out 14 people to the left of me. <laughs> Paul's over in the hot yeah. dog stand. Paul's over there. And everybody on the outside is going that way. And I'm just yep. cruising along the inside. Right, no right, problem. Right. Nothing illegal about that. Right, no. Right. No. They should have started better. I respect it. Should have started better. I respect better. it. Uh, Phil Nicoletti on the Pulp Show, brought to you by the folks at motorsport.com, of course. And, uh, man, Phil, I hope motorsport guys stay with you next year. You know, uh, we yeah, that would that would that would be cool. Uh, I mean, you delivered it, uh, you delivered it, nothing. Back. They already paid this year, so they're good for next year, right? They oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Roll over? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Phil yeah, yeah that. that's what you do, Phil. You you just call up and you say, "Hey, I'd love to renew this thing. Let's just change some dates." And boom, yeah. have have it yeah. done before they can think about it. No, yeah. but, but we're saying they've already paid, so you, you just say, you "Yeah, just say. say same deal. Change the dates. Yeah, we're good." Mot- motorsports like, yeah, "Yeah, we paid already." Yeah. yeah, we're good. We're, we're, no, Motorsport's going to say we paid already. Are we good for next year? We got nothing, and we paid already. What so. do you mean they got nothing? He they got twelve interviews on the Pulp Show. <laughs> what do you mean they got? <laughs> they nothing? pay Steve for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all confusing. Uh, uh, so we'll see but what happens. I, but, but Paul does have a good point. Yeah, just change the date on the contract for twenty twenty two and it's dialed. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, okay, I don't so want to take up too much of your time, you guys Scott. Are coming from two I know you're really busy. Right. I'm over here across the country. It's going to be hard to meet up in person. Just change some dates. Send it over. I'll sign it. I'll send it right back. <laughs> I'll to sign you. it right away. We'll on with it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh paul are you gonna do anything for the club team this year or what what's the deal uh i don't believe so i haven't been contacted about the club team i'll do something oh. for phil nicoletti mm. he's on a 250 he can't do his own bike deals and charles can we cut charles off we can cut his mic off yeah absolutely cut his mic off uh, yeah. Yeah. Done well for, listen for phil uh X brand will be here for you. Don't worry, we'll we'll step up. It's fantastic. It's just <laughs> I do I do like one of your new teammates, Phil. He's a big football fan, fantasy football fan, fantasy pulp fantasy fan. So no, he's not doing that. He's not. No, he's doing his own thing with MTF. Oh, news to me. Never mind. Okay, all right. Jordan Smith, you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, he's. Not. Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say none of my guys know. Well, Marshbanks does, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the other the other ones don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Jordan, uh, yeah, I think that's over with. But there might be somebody else new that might be, I don't know, uh, pretty interesting. So might come out here in a little bit. Might be a guy north of the border from what I hear, too. Uh, no. Oh, 
Hmm. Okay. Nope. Moving on from that. No, nope, I don't. I don't. I don't. That that changed. Oh, oh. from what I said. Yeah, that changed. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Phil, you called yeah. it on this Piccolo kid, huh? He did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, only because I I rode with him and you know I I seen his talent and stuff, so it's uh it's pretty cool. Um, you know he was a ticking time bomb, but at least he uh yeah kept it together. So he signed a factory KTM deal for next year, so that's pretty awesome. Oh, is he cool. on the team? Is he nice. on the team? I didn't know that happened. Okay. Yeah. It should, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope so. I, I would think so too. Um, hey, Dylan Ferrandez' ride, uh, that was just, uh, in your words, Phil, that's mental, what he did. Uh, stuck yeah. in the first turn, Cody Shock's getting dragged, and then he just stops, gets his leg out, and takes off. Nothing to gain. Just Nothing to gain. Just I mean, he, a, lot of, a lot to gain. A lot of money to gain. Does yeah. You guys yeah. act like he hates money. Like, why don't you uh, go out and try? Go get more money, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, but I... Yeah, I seen that there was somebody had a camera there, but he was like so pissed on how he, you know, just the result or whatever for the last moto, and then they come over and I think Coker told him like, "Yeah, man, you won one three for the overall," and he's just like, "What?" Yeah, he you didn't know. know. Like yeah. he, was, yeah, he was stoked um, afterward, but that'd be a pretty cool way to win it and go out. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Yeah, he was um, he was damn good, man. He was, and that that track looked so awesome, like chocolate cake, Phil. Yeah, it was, no, it was, you would have loved it, it out there, Chief. Oh, uh, yeah, Phil would have been a big fan. Yep. What was up with all the rollers and the Supercross style stuff? Just random stuff in. thrown in, yeah. right? Like after the yeah. that uh, step-up deal that Alessi tried to front flip that one time? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just those random jumps yeah. into that right hand. Yeah, yeah. You're it just was like awkward, awkward yeah. wheel taps and triples just didn't fit mm-hmm. to me anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was actually kind of nice because uh, the lap times were super long, so I'm sure for the guys it kind of made it like uh, motors feel somewhat a little shorter because I think they only did 15 laps, which um, is nice for a national. Yeah. Uh, we got yeah, a, you, we got a phone call for you here, Phil, on the line. Uh, this is Phil Nicoletti's final motorsport.com ORW call-in of the year. Thank God, uh, Phil, uh, your final, <laughs> final call. Uh, Scott, I'm going to uh, miss it. Uh, Scott, what's going on? What's your question for Phil? Hey, guys. How you guys doing? Good, man. Hope everybody's doing well, man. I just got a, a couple questions for Phil. Um, I live in Jersey, and obviously I race Walden and Diamondback and English Town, whatever. Um, you sound who do like you think was an actual? Yeah, who do you think was an actual more gifted rider, Ryan Mills or J Law? And the second part of it is, whatever happened to Ryan Mills, and why hasn't English Town gotten a national? I'll hang up and listen to all you guys. All right, thank you. Ooh, appreciate thanks. it. How deep does he want to dive into I mean, this? I think J-Law was a better rider I agree. than Ryan Mills. J-Law more was talented. talented. He said talented. Yeah. Yes. Mills was pretty yeah. fucking gnarly. Dude, dude oh, J-Law, was, yeah. no, J-Law could ride, man. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, and I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to have to go with J-Law just because he had a, you know more success and more of an impact. But I really don't think Mills ever got a chance to really, I don't know, showcase what he's capable of. You know, before he went down the, oh, I don't know, bad yeah. path. You know, yeah. Um, is he okay? Is Mills out? Of, is Mills good? Uh, do we know? Yeah, I heard he's you know from down in, in Florida, Florida, kind yeah. of. Yeah, working. I don't know, maybe an HOV park or something. Like renting um, ATVs or something to people. Okay. Yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. Right. So, which is good. He's got a kid. He's doing okay. And you know, I, I like to hear sort of that sort of thing. So, Mills they always treated me good when I was a kid. He was always a couple years older. Dude, so he I was. Uh, up to him. He had some hype. Ryan Mills did coming up. Well, Dude, he because was so, he's, CR one twenty five. He was a so class, good. At like fifteen school boy and A class of Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he was so young. Yep. Like he was good, yep. man. He, he got paid by two yeah. teams in one year. Yeah, that's remarkable. That was cool. Yeah, oh, that's incredible. Remarkable. Yeah. KTM yeah, just like, I'm, hey, dude, we're, we we don't really want to take you next riding next year, but we'll still pay you. Yeah. But just go find a ride. <laughs> yeah. Just go find a ride. Yeah. I yeah. I, don't, I need to get. I need to land into something like that. Damn. Paul Mills. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, listen. Oh, when you no. when you're on 250 Supercross next year, you know, and you're running 100 percent, and you're running. You need a dog, two year you know? deal, okay, Phil? And then you go out and crush Ooh. it, and you then you just be a complete dick to the club guys, and then then you're then you're there. You find <laughs> yeah. yourself a new ride. Yeah, and they want you yeah, out, that's out of there. True. That's true. That's true. But yeah, going back to Millsy, they think. Uh, well, they all say Kennard was the first. Geico guy, but it was actually Millsy yeah. that did it. That Ziggy kind of took under his wing. So, mm-hmm. right. um, and then why doesn't and then, English Town have a national? Uh, I don't know. English Town, I heard. The kind, fans? Yeah, I know. I don't, never been. E Town is E Town is a badass track, but uh, the original Raceway Park, where I'm sure all you guys have been to or ridden, is gone. It's now the old practice track. They levered all that, so I think it's kind of went downhill. Did they sell um, it to development? Is that why they leveled uh, 
Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I know they. I'm pretty sure they tore up the drag strip and everything. Okay. So, um, yeah, I like there K-Rock was, is now. On I thought there was talk track. of having a national across the street. That's what. That's what I thought. Um, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago, I yeah, kind of maybe yeah, thought there yeah. was something like that, but uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. I've actually it would have been, been super. It, I, yeah, it, it would have been easy to do. If we have a national at English Town ever, will they honor Wygant at intermission for flagging? No, no, no. No one, no, no one knows about uh, we being a flagger. Okay. Okay. happen. All right. Uh, ORW yeah. OffroadWarehouse.com. You'll see the butt patch on Cody Shock and Mumford. You saw it, I should say, this past summer on March Banks a little bit on Phil, and you never saw it. Uh, OffroadWarehouse.com. <laughs> code is PulpMX to save. Uh, stop in to check out the latest in truck, Jeep, Overland, UTV, and racing products. Offroad Warehouse uh, stores are staffed by a knowledgeable, experienced team. Plus, they install everything right there from suspension kits, tires, and wheels to steps, bed accessories, and more. Thanks to the guys at all Off Road Warehouse. Use the code PulpMX to save. Uh, there's an, an, the Vegas location is uh, five minutes from my house, Phil. And um, also, mm-hmm. they, have, they have locations in Georgia now, and uh, Arizona, and Temecula, and San Diego. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably missing a few. A corona or something? Corona, yeah, yeah. Corona, too. So, OffRoadWarehouse.com. Big sponsors of Phil this year, along with the guys at Motorsport.com. Uh, Phil, we have another question for you from Zach. Zach, what's up, man? What's your question for Phil? What's up, Phil? Uh, hey, I've, I've always wondered about uh, ever since, like, the wattage and the power and, and all that stuff has gotten so big and so calculated. It seems to me, I hate when I hear guys say, well, we weren't at this mark, we weren't at that mark, otherwise I think we could have won, yada, yada, yada. And you watch a guy like Kenny, I can't help but feel like sometimes – is he racing himself and he's not racing the guys around him? And it's like he gets to a point where he's like, well, I've done what I can do. I'm at this point, and they're just going faster than me. It just seems like he doesn't ever pick it up and race the guys when they get there. And maybe I'm just watching it through TV and I'm not there. No, um, Zach, but I know, yeah, like, you got a point. Atlanta yeah. this year, Atlanta this year, um, every time Dylan caught him, it's just like, well, What's That's it, what's, it, man. My meter's up. What color's no name again? See you later. Zach. 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 You ever get caught from behind in a race? Oh, yeah, dude. It's and miserable. you fight back? You be, fight back I'd every time? I'd, you got the no, energy to beat no. the guy that caught you? No, but I don't make millions of dollars to do it either, Paul. To figure it out the next week. I'm right? just saying, <laughs> every every rider has like his strengths and weaknesses, right? And Kenny's is to right. get the whole shot and sprint. I, it's hard sometimes when that's a what, guy that's, catches that's you. I'm, that's what I'm saying. And like, what was... Uh, Somebody called, or no, it was, Phil, are you the one that said you went down and rode and Kenny didn't even have an outdoor setup and he rode with you guys? Yeah, it blew my fucking doors off, man. <laughs> okay, so. Thanks, thanks for so bringing why, it up why? again. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. Wouldn't, wouldn't it make more sense? When I, was, when I was a kid, they'd put me out front, and it would take about four laps. And by God, here would come Barsha at MTF. And you're terrified when that son bitch gets there, you know. Get off the track, here he comes. Why not put Kenny at the back and let's run to the front and try that instead of just going out front. Do you mean spring. like at a race, Zach? I think he means practice. Oh, practice. Got it. Okay. No, in practice. Yeah, like, okay. That's how they would do it. They right, would put right. Barsha. Uh, they, know, they, they, no, they do that I'm sometimes. Sure they, they, do. They, they start. They, it all depends it, on how you're feeling and stuff. I, yeah. I don't know, and obviously, obviously, I don't make money to do this. Those guys do. It just seems like with that guy, man, and I love Kenny. I want him to do good. He's awesome. It just seems like when the fight's there, he would just he'd just rather step to the side. And and, and Zach, uh, you, you you're just, right. You're right, Zach. You are encapsulating Kenny's issues. You know, in your call, wondering what's going on. But Phil, that that is what Kenny is, and Kenny has been, and. That's not going to change, I don't think. No, no. And, and the, yeah, and it, I mean, you've seen it. Like I said, Unadilla, when it's on, there is no touching him. He is, yeah. he is gone. You know, but when a hang town, when he does his thing, blows by everybody, but 15 minutes comes rolling around, and you can see he doesn't look comfortable, looks somewhat tight. I don't know. And then Fran is, I don't know if you ever heard of Yamaha 450 behind you, but let me tell you what, it feels like they're on top of you. You can only defend for so long, you know? And at that point, he's just pointing and shooting. He's not taking the lines that he normally would probably want to take. And it, I, I would assume it blows him up, you know? To, to, your, mean, that's, po- that's, to your point, Zach, I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you that at the, what was it, the last Atlanta or whatever it, that yep. pivotal Atlanta race was. Yeah, that right, yep. that right hander. Mm-hmm. Just that one. Up. Even if, even if Kenny can't do anything, and he's, you know, yeah. Uh, to me, I, again, I try to, 
I guess putting myself in his position, I would have tried to do something to retaliate, Just even if it's a little greasy. Like, yeah. put up a fight. Yeah. Because yeah, like that was a pivotal, remote. pivotal points weekend. Yeah, and I think the Honda guys were a little bit like, "Hey, what? Like, yeah. you just like, you know, uh, he just went wide in that corner and yeah. let him go." Yeah, yeah, yeah was, we used yeah. to when I when I was like eighteen or nineteen, I would use every dollar I would have to go to like the local night track and race, and I would kill somebody for one hundred and fifty bucks, so I had money for wow. the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, for that kind of money in a championship, you can't. It's just hard to see how he doesn't chop his front tire off one freaking time yeah, one time he doesn't ride like that that's it man he d- yeah you know, I what? know but um, he doesn't win either so right. i don't know did, anyway. uh, thanks zach thank you man. Hey. thanks thank you guys thanks Steve, didn't you have a caller that like left a voicemail or something that said they could fix Kenny? They could fix Kenny. Yeah, they just needed to get in touch with him. Yep, they just seemed, needed yep, his phone. Well, what did they say? Uh, I, they wouldn't tell us because it's no. worth a lot of money. It, the, yeah, the, he needed like a an NDA sign or something. The fix was a lot of money, and he could fix and he he could fix Kenny, but he could also fix Bogle and somebody else, <laughs> and just really? give him a chance. And I just he needs a number. Can he call in and fix me too? <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I think you're gone, Phil. I think it's too late. Uh, Off Road Warehouse, Motorsport.com, of course, bringing you filthy Phil Nicoletti of the Club MX 250 Supercross next year for yeah. Phil. That is just going to be. Seeing clearly. <laughs> Seeing clearly. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I want to ride the Yamaha 250. Um, Jamie does good. Uh, Twisted does good engines, and right. yeah, we'll 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 see how it goes. I think it'll be a, a little bit better than the 2017 campaign on uh, RMZ 250, but uh, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think it'll be okay. Uh, so Phil, let's let's get into business here. So if you sign this deal for 250 Supercross, let's talk insurance. Let's talk in policy. Let's let's do this. What are policies? What, what are policies? Uh, an insurance policy on your results. I don't know what they are. Yeah, you like, do. You mm-hmm. took one out on yourself in Canada, and you shit, you made a shit ton. So you know what they are. <laughs> yeah. No, I, like, what are I they going to pull up for super, Supercross? That's what I'm saying. Don't you feel like... You know like, what they're going to do? They're going to look at these Canadian Supercross champ. And, and they'll just and jack be like, it up. Yeah, okay, man, well, man, it's going to be I'm on that. But maybe, Phil, I could be convinced to go in with you on a policy on your on your results if I if I hear good things from the off season. Well, uh, I don't, I don't know. You don't want to go on a policy with Steve. He puts it on the show. You got people yeah, commenting exactly. and all kinds of too pressure. Much, too much pressure. Yeah, exactly. you don't want that. I don't, <laughs> I don't need people DMing me, calling me a piece of shit, saying I'm blowing money and this and that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't, Let's I don't get a whole that. pool of investors in. Let's just do a like, whole don't group you feel of like us. Feels like ten the, of us. Feels deductible would be yeah. like six grand. <laughs> Uh, how high can and it what's be? What's he gonna get? Like, it better not be six grand. Holy couple shit! Top oh, all of a sudden you seem to know quite a bit about policies, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, well, oh, it's, it's deductible. Just, it can only mean one thing, you know. Uh, you know, you I know? mean, what could Phil's? You know, I, we could potentially just crush it with Phil. You know, if we believe, if we all believe in him, I believe in Phil. Let's do it. Let's us three take a policy out on him. Yeah, does sure. Phil have to be involved at all? Phil doesn't have to be involved. Okay. No. no. Yeah, he does. You want him some skin in the game, huh? No, he just has to be involved. <laughs> yeah, but I know. Well, I know what Hunter Payton can do. They can give me the money for the policy, okay. and then we can go from there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you're going <laughs> to return it, right? You're going to make more on that money. Yeah. You're gonna, no, you're going to borrow it. <laughs> no, okay. not a chance. Oh, uh, these negotiations are not going well. <laughs> Don't worry, Phil. X Brand will be there for you. Choice of champions everywhere. EKSBrand.com. Josh Strang winning GNCCs with X Brand. Mm, like Phil uh, Ferrandis. <laughs> No, uh, not uh, uh, Joe uh, Lawrence. Uh, w- uh, privateer Power with uh, x brand goggles. Cooper Webb. Yeah. Cold, I actually Cold did. I, what's, what's that, Phil? Uh, Charles, I actually did see Kuzo sing today. You guys went five for five. That's pretty badass. Yeah, I was just, just rattling off all five to see if any of them were x brand champions. I'd but. like to yeah. do that with Renthal. Do you think I need to sign you up, Phil, to get that done? Or? I don't know for sure, yeah. but I think I heard that it's an x brand frame with 100% strap on all those guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it may be like LeMay's building them or something. I, I heard that a little bit. Ben LeMay's building them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm in the process of digging that up. Okay. But I haven't right, yeah. I haven't got to the bottom of that. I don't want to spread any rumors okay. at all. Don't want to do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Un, very very unlike you. Yeah, don't want to spread any rumors. Very unlike me. Okay. Oh, no, where's the, the this is the fill. If you want something to get out, tell Math this drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. What hundred uh, percent? What did you think of that uh, beautiful female voice taking uh, the phone calls over there, Mark? Oh, I, I actually thought I, I was really confused for a second. About time you got an upgrade in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. A little different from talent or tits, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's kind of refreshing hearing hearing a woman's voice in the lines then. Right, right. Yeah, well, you know what? We're classing it up over here. She yep. she might be full time. We'll see. See how she does. <laughs> well, yeah. 
pay her unlike your other employees there. What's that? Hopefully you actually pay her unlike your other employees that you have there. Uh, don't worry. They're well compensated, all of them, each and every one of them a ton. Uh, <laughs> all right, Phil. They were. So you are going to ride. When do you get on a bike? Uh, and I... I don't. I, I'm not really sure yet. So I got surgery. I don't know. August fifth. They Plenty say three months. So okay. Uh, Plenty of time, Phil. Yeah. Don't rush into yeah. it. Yeah, because you'll no. be you'll be east anyways. Even if you ride two fifties, you'll be east. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be east by the time things really get rolling and kind of actually get back onto Supercross track. It'll be, right. I would assume, mid November before that even happens. So, yep. um, but yeah, I got a lot of things to work on and. Uh, yeah, kind of come back with a vengeance after this year. So let's um, change the number up, Phil. Yeah, you think what yeah, number? I don't know. Not something so damn high. Yeah, okay, that's that's okay. like you know. That was I mean? his amateur number, though. Never. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. But you never want to be at the bottom of the program, at the bottom of this, uh, the bottom of that. I, like, I said it over and over. One, one, one. Reserved for past champions, and Phil's a Supercross champion. If think you need about, help, if you need help with a number, Phil, I I got a guy to get you in contact with that think, can pull some strings think about bale coming over mm. greg alberton coming over all these champions coming to america Phil Nicoletti. they they wore number 100 or 111 he's a canadian supercross and, champion and coming champion. down yes. coming down <laughs> yes to the states i'm uh, i'm down to change it up but it's got to be a cool you know i don't know you like uh, sevens you like fives yeah i like sevens i like fives i like ones you know i um i i don't know i actually i'm not i didn't like 54 either but it kind of just stuck with me and i I don't know, it kind of grew on me a little bit, but um, I don't know, do a poll and we'll see what, see what we come up with. All right. So, well, our listeners will say 69, so uh, that, that'll yeah, be Yeah, of course they would. Right. Uh, yeah. All right, Phil. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, motorsport.com, ORW, it's your last phone call, Phil, on the show for this year. Like, yeah, uh, it's depressing. And, you know, depressing. You, I mean, you'll you, miss you me can, next week. You can call him next week. You we know. can. We can call him after you anytime, anytime, <laughs> yeah. anytime we want. Uh, uh, just. Make sure it's before nine thirty. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Uh, thanks, Philip, yeah. for coming on. Appreciate. Then I'm it. going to sleep. And yeah, uh, uh, Charles. Yes. Be in contact. We'll be in contact with the team <laughs> that, that <laughs> mandates the Dude, goggles of the two fifty team. There. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable, Charles, that you want somebody to live up to the terms of the contract. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> the whole right here, I got Paul beat me up about Dean Wilson's deal. I got yeah, we gotta Phil get that finished me. on the way I home got, <laughs> Yeah. Can we stop uh, there, bike? Just add me. Yeah, just tack me on. To- Listen, FXR's got a goggle, and it's built by a great company. Okay. So there's also that option for Phil. He's not leaving Scott. I know that's the that's the thing. The funny part about him this. and Knowles are like bros. Like yep. he'll take nothing from Knowles, and Knowles takes advantage of him, and then totally. he just goes and races. It's, it's a shame you put up for that. Knowles friend of yours. take advantage of me. He, he does. does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's a shame you put up with it. It's terrible. You, you, you got to put your foot down, Phil. You got to tell him what's up. That's simple, Phil. Say hey, I'll see you in Broome this weekend. I'll buy my own flight, but I need a contract with a number when you get yeah. there. Yeah. Boom. Hit up Janolfi. Yeah, don't yeah. don't even go around Knowles and go to Janolfi. He's New York and you know New Jersey. I came. I, I'm so mad. I texted Janolfi. I was at your place. He sent you set of cycling bits. Yeah, well, he did. His wife did. Yeah. But, I mean, what the heck? You know, I've been trying to get this Scott cycling uh, gear for a while. Can't get nothing. No, nope. but you get That's you shame. get a pair of bibs. Yep. Well, Shit me. Yeah. Well. Too far down on the program. Yeah. Seven. I don't know. Yeah, Seven fifteen. Ridiculous. Too far down. <laughs> it's too far down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Philip. Thanks to Motorsport. Thanks to ORW for making this happen, of course, all year long. Enjoyed your analysis. Yep. I really wish it would have went better. It would have been much better to be like, hey, Phil, you got six. Hey, Phil, you got eighth. How was it? And uh, that would have been much better. Been there, done that, but we'll be back next year. All right. Thanks, buddy. See you, Phil. All right. Thanks, guys. See all right. you. That's Phil Nicolette, everybody. Let's go to commercial break here on the show. This is our first uh, commercial break of the night. We'll have another one, of course. Charles Kassler, Paul Parabinos. We'll come back. We got uh, JT coming up. We got Jet Lawrence. We got Denny Stevenson. We got a trivia contest for a boom bottle between you two oh, jerkies. Shit, that's the study. most. That, I'm excited for I that. I got to study. Yep. And uh, we got much more coming up right after this break. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back after this. Those who love motocross know motorsport.com has the knowledge and expertise to make your next ride your best ride. Motorsport.com has a broad selection of in-stock parts and gear at competitive prices. We specialize in bringing you OEM and aftermarket parts, riding gear and accessories for dirt bikes, motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. All thanks to the most dedicated and experienced team of gearheads in the industry who use the very parts we sell on motorsport.com. 
Motorsport.com always offers fast shipping and free delivery on orders more than $79 to ensure you never miss a ride. Whether you race on the track, ride the trails, or commute on the street, shop Motorsport.com today for the best customer service and experience when buying the parts and gear you need to stay on two and four wheels. Make your next ride your best ride, only at Motorsport.com. Steve. Kiefer. Do you want to hear about one of the best rides I've ever had? Dude, it's not time for After Dark yet. <sighs> Chill down, dude. I just want to talk about Race Tech stuff. Oh, that's it. Okay. Gosh, go man. Basically, I've had the chance to do some stuff with Race Tech recently with the CRF 250R and, of course, the KX250. And as you know, I've talked about on the show, I wasn't a real hardcore fan of Race Tech stuff back in the day. But since Rob and Andrew and those guys have assembled at Race Tech, the stuff has been great. So, uh, for you guys out there listening, if you guys are looking to get your engine work done or even some suspension work, or as Steven says on the show sometimes, get your seals and <laughs> your oil rebuilt in your, fork, in your fork and shock. Get it rebuilt. It helps. 15 to 20 hours. Head over to Racetech.com. Check out. They even got a cool little simulator. You can look at uh, what size spring rate you might need for your bike. So a lot of cool features over there on the website. But uh, And as you know, Yamaha Blue Crew guy over here, you guys have some of that on your bike? It's fantastic. Zombie Blos uses it. Jerry Robin uses it. Starling, all of those guys over there. Malcolm Stewart won a Supercross with Race Tech stuff a few years ago. Pulp19 is the code to save. Mention Pulp MX when you, when you call. You can save on the service. You can save, so, save on motor work. You can save on springs if you just want to do that and get it put in yourself or do it yourself. Race Tech is the one-stop shopping for motor and suspension work. You can also mention the code Home Life 2020. That's better. That's a better code, I think. We'll do either one. Just <laughs> listen, people. Give your bike some love. Get your suspension modified service. Get your motor modified service with the folks at Race Tech. Good people. Want a chain and sprocket kit but aren't sure what you need? Then call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and get hooked up with the right sprocket and chain kit for your bike. With more than 30,000 possible gearing combinations, Vortex EK has more gearing than your garage has room for. It's a ridiculous amount of gearing for nearly any bike. Join the ranks of Star Racing Yamaha and Supercross champion Dylan Ferrandis and run a Vortex Sprocket. Available in red, blue, black, orange, silver, and Kawasaki green. Yes, green. Call a doctor because things just got sick. Warning may cause extraordinary power, excessive performance, and speed so fast your eyes will be. Call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and mention promo code PULPMX2021 and get the best deal on your next order. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hey, Pulp Nation. Andy from Guts Racing. We are the leaders in seat technology. We feel like for any need that you have with your seat, we've got you covered. For 2021, we're going to be adding more colors to our, our product line, and we're going to be adding more merchandise to our product line. Also new for 2021, we've expanded our distribution through motorsportoutlet.com. So please support the people that support Pulp, support Guts Racing, and also support motorsport.com. Hope to see you guys at the track soon. Once again, this is Andy Gregg from Guts Racing. Thanks again to Pulp Nation for all the support. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. 
Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win is Michelin motorcycle tires. And Michelin is introducing many exciting new tires for 2020. For V-Twin riders, the Michelin Commander 3 Cruiser and the Michelin Commander 3 Touring Tires offer improved wet grip and enhanced tread life. For sport bike and track day riders, the Michelin Power 5 Tire and the Michelin Power GP Tires feature the same architecture and profile for effortless sport bike setup from street to track. If you'd like to have the same tire that won the 2019 Red Bull Ayersburg Rodeo, the Michelin Enduro Extreme Tire is the tire for you and the Michelin Star Cross 5 tire range is now available for young motocross and off-road riders in sizes for 50cc bikes and up. To learn more about these and all other Michelin two-wheel products, check out www.motorcycle.michelinman.com, visit your local dealer or online retailer, and follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Hey guys, it's Mathis. Look, if you're still not wearing a neck brace in 2020, it's time to go get one or at least think seriously about it. It's been over 15 years since the neck braces first came out. They're not the clunky, oversized devices they used to be. Atlas came in and changed the way all neck braces were designed by introducing flexible technology to the world and proving that neck braces can be something you can actually ride in while performing at the highest level. Look at Jason Anderson winning Supercross Championships or look at Martin Davalos or anybody else. Don't take my word for it just because I have two Manitoba Championships to my name. Wait, I have four. Just look at how many other brace designs look like the Atlas one. Atlas pioneered all the modern neck brace features and have been refining them ever since then. While the competition has been trying to catch up, grab the brace that's been leading the pack. Check out atlasbrace.com. Get yours today. There is a pulp discount if you check out sponsorddeals.com on pulpamexshow.com. So be like Chase Sexton, Martin Davalos, and many other guys and wear the Atlas brace. Atlasbrace.com. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. Our guys at Works Connection have always been there for the Pulp MX show, and they're there for you as well. Uh, they're just as passionate and as dedicated to the sport as you are. For over 30 years, Works Connection has been designing and producing innovative products like the Pro Launch Start Device, the 123 Easy Build Elite Perch, Elite Axle Blocks, and much, much more. You'll find Works Connection products on AMA Pro Riders bikes under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, Smart Top Honda, as well as top teams and private tiers alike. The best part of this deal is Pulp MX20 code saves you money at worksconnection.com. Stop by your local outlet and check out the new lineup of Works Connection products for 2021. I've got the perch on my bike. I've got the engine plugs. I absolutely love it. Great product. I've got the uh, start device as well, which helped me in one moto at the World Vet Championships and one moto. Not so much. Worksconnection.com. Pulp MX20 is the code to save. Please check them out. All new. 2021 products now available. Thanks for listening. Over 65 years ago, Vertex Pistons was born out of a small technical workshop in northern Italy's famous Motor Valley. Expanding and maturing among the racing legends of Ferrari, Lamborghini, MV Augusta, and Ducati. 
Today, Vertex Pistons are the pistons of choice for motorcycle riders and teams throughout the world. Because of their renowned reputation for exceptional quality, Vertex Pistons is a factory piston supplier to KTM, Husqvarna, Beta, Gas Gas, and TM. From the Motocross, Supercross, MXGP, GNCC, National and World Enduro Series, you can find Vertex Pistons winning championships. Vertex Pistons strives to provide you with world-class factory technology at a very competitive price. No matter which brand of bike you ride, when it's time to rebuild your top end, Vertex Pistons will have your engine performing better than new. To see our full range of two-stroke and four-stroke pistons in replica, high compression, or GP style configurations, visit us at vertexpistons.com or stop into your local dealer and ask for a Vertex Piston Kit today. Welcome back, everybody. Paul Mitchell presented by Motorsport.com. Decal Works, Fly Racing all on board with us. We had Phil Nicoletti on. We had David Coombs on. Jet Lawrence, the new 250 Motocross champion. will come on. Denny Stevenson, Jason Thomas all coming up here. And our X-Brand Goggle tear-offs. And uh, lots still to come on the show. Thank you for listening. 702-586-7857. Remember, Works Connection, quick pro launch device. Contest at pulpamexshow.com. Simply email us, and uh, we'll get that in. Hey, if you're looking for a job in the industry, you can do uh, worse than look at MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. It's the number one source for power sports companies looking for employees and candidates for the employment opportunities. It's the first and only job board built specifically for you people. And we've uh, read a lot of things going on uh, over the year, of course, for the Motorcycle Industry Jobs. This week is a full-time job. It's in Georgia at Yamaha Blue Crew. It's a sales planner job. It's a full-time job in Marietta, Georgia. By the Yamaha guys, they have an excellent opportunity for a motorcycle sales planner to join the motorsports team in Marietta, Georgia. The sales planner works with a national sales planning manager to co-develop and implement the strategies and programs to achieve sales targets. So, yeah, if you want to work in the industry, get started with Yamaha out in Georgia and uh, sales planner job from MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, uh, guys, of course. Uh, ride Engineering as well, Ride-Engineering.com. Pulp, uh, M- Pulp Fan 20 is the code to save at Ride Engineering. Ride Engineering has been making the braided steel lines for dirt bikes since 01, combining them with machine billet mounting brackets engineered to fit the narrower braided line. They recommend the billet mounts for CR, CRFs, KX, uh, all the all the uh, uh, brands. Front and rear lines are available for all the models as well, including KTM's Custom Husky and Gas Gas. Furthermore, the crimped on fittings are adjustable and can be rotated to ensure a perfect fit each time. Available in black or silver, fronts are 69 bucks, rears are 57 bucks, mounts are 31 bucks. Mounts are available in red, blue, black, or green. Use code PULPFAN20 to save. A thank you to the folks at ride-engineering.com for coming on board. Uh, and Paul Parabinos and Charles Castle on the show. Danny Stevenson coming right up here as well. Uh, very, very uh, exciting contest coming up as well. I'm going to grill Charles Castle and Paul Parabinos on uh, this f- just finished national championship. And uh, we'll see what they get for uh, the stats. And the winner will get a, a Scotch boom bottle. So um, you guys ready for that? Yep. All right. A mm. uh, couple phone calls before we come to our next guest. It's uh, Tyler on two. Tyler, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for taking my call, Steve. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, all right. Um, yeah, if you guys can't understand me, just bear with me here. I had a crazy neck injury and uh, it had some nerve damage to my tongue. But um, I wanted to talk about, since we're done with the moto season, Supercross is next. I want to talk about the progression of the bikes, right? Like we know that the 450s are kind of outgrowing the supercross tracks and so like i was i want to know what you guys think in the next five years ten years we're going with the bikes and i have a crazy proposal i know you're probably going to shoot it down for for obvious reasons but i was reminded of the early 2000s when we had you know ricky james the big guys riding the 252 strokes indoors yeah and the 450s outdoors yep um and so i'm wondering like do you do Give them two years, give the manufacturers uh, two years, three years. All the manufacturers have to bring back both the 125 two stroke and the 252 stroke. And you say, hey, super cautious, two strokes. And then we let the guys rip the four strokes and out. Well, I mean, I like that idea. I don't hate that idea. Four strokes have made Supercross uh, more boring. There's no doubt about it. You don't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You don't got to be perfect to ride. You don't got to be great to clear all the jumps. 
454 strokes are way too big for these stadiums. But you just can't do that, man. Like, there's a lot of emission stuff that these manufacturers don't want to stay away from um, for two strokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just saw something that California bans lawnmowers or something. Somebody tweeted. We ban me. everything. Yeah, okay. You stuff ban- like that all the time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, I would like it, but yeah, you also the manufacturers, you know, like they want to sell motorcycles, and and maybe people don't want to buy all the two strokes, and so maybe they're making. Two strokes for just – as much as the people on the two strokes are being like, oh, bring them back, bring them back, the sales numbers aren't, like, crushing it. Um, hmm. You know, YZ250s and KX, or KTM 125s and that kind of stuff. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think you can tell the manufacturers what to do. I, is, my point is if you're a Supercross promoter or the motocross people, these OEMs are your partners. They are mm-hmm. investing millions of dollars to go racing for you and for themselves. And I just don't think – Charles, I'll start with you – I don't think you can say, "Hey, man, we're changing the rules. Make a two, start making two strokes again." Yeah, because they, I mean, they've been full aboard this four-stroke development plan for for a yeah. long time, and of course, they switched from two-stroke to four-stroke once already. I think. Well, they mm-hmm. went from four-stroke to two-stroke in the late seventies. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're kind yeah. of built. You're shooting my case down a little bit here. My yeah. point was like they they <laughs> went from one to the other, um, and then to to one eighty that and go right back the other way. I think that's a lot to ask of them, and and to get them all to agree. That that's the direction to go, and everybody jump on board with that. Like uh, you're asking a lot of different people with a lot of different objectives I to to agree and go a direction that like they're like, why? What's yeah, the point? What's the point? And think about this too. So we're sounds we, expensive. We are the F1 mm-hmm. yeah. of our sport, off road motorcycling, right? <laughs> think about the last five, six years of two strokes. What 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 advanced? They were done. They were yeah, done. There was nothing else was to done. advance on. Uh, they would move the. One year would be a case read, and then they would make a, the read in the in the cylinder, so, and yeah. then yeah, they, I, I, there was nothing going on. Four strokes now, mm-hmm. I mean, these things have been pretty innovative over the years, right? Yeah. So uh, they're lighter than they've ever been. They got EFI, they got two th- two injectors, they got data a lot of stuff going on, yeah. data stuff going on. So I don't know, uh, Tyler. I don't. I I again, you want to blame any? Blame the fucking AMA. They said <laughs> 550 cc's. Uh, that's the rule for four strokes, and the manufacturers are like, "Oh, really? Oh, cool." Which we're kind of lucky, I guess. Like, what would have happened if Yamaha's instead of the four hundred made a five made a five fifty yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah, like yeah, it maxed yeah. out right, and went right. all the way to the top. Like, yeah, well, they did shortly change the rule after that. Yeah. KTM after KTM and stuff did. KTM it, but, had the five twenty five. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they had a five forty yeah. too. King Shane King's bike was a five forty. Oh, um, but um, yeah, like like, but if they just made the rule like three hundred. Mm-hmm. And then Yamaha says, ah, we know but what they, we... They were we, pulling a number out of their ass at the they time, They were, right? totally. Yeah. Which I think has a lot to do also with the regulation of uh, electric dirt bikes, too. I think they they sort of learned from that, and I think that's that's going to be a, um, a factor that has to be overcome because they don't want to just throw a... I don't know what you throw out, a watts or a... Yeah, what whatever, the number is. whatever it so is, like, yeah. I think they're all very hesitant to throw out a number for the rule book to make yeah. something like you know the Alta legal... Um, because then you're sort of married to that number, right? Like you have to yep. change yep. it then. So yep. if people start developing towards that number, it's hard to change it. So um, I, I, I think actually, it's tough. I think we'd be racing e-bikes, electric bikes in the stadiums before we race two strokes. Oh, million yeah. percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. million yeah. percent. That's, yeah. that's yeah. where they're developing, right? Yeah. They're not going to yeah. go back and uh, redevelop something that they closed the book yeah. on. You know, but but, but uh, you are right, uh, Tyler. The four strokes, they're, they, they make supercars too easy. They're not – supercars yeah. is nowhere near as exciting as it used to be. I, I don't want to be old. Things, huh? I don't want to be no, old man no, no. shaking my uh, fist at the cloud, but I really believe that, you know. Yeah, because I mean, I just pulled the trigger on a twenty-two CRS four fifty, and I love it. But yeah, yeah. it's way more insane than my 08 08 Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, I just feel like KTM and Husky and those guys. I feel like the innovation in two strokes is kind of coming back. I don't know EFI onboard yeah. oil, right? Like you don't have to mix the gas, but anyway. Yeah. The, uh, 500 two strokes were a little bit before my time. So what caused that to kind of to to fade out, right? Yeah, they just they I think they weren't selling. They, were, they were, yeah they they weren't selling. They were too much bike for people. People were like, I'm not riding a 500. Like, Which, uh, yeah, I think the point Tyler's yeah. trying to kind of bait you to is like, are the 450s that? Are we are we right. are yeah. we early in the 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 450 process that we haven't got to the point of the 500 people come to the realization like holy shit this is too much I, I wonder yeah maybe I, I don't know maybe but, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be a two but stroke that fills that void I, think I don't it feel would... the KTM 350 is caught on either no right no. it doesn't no. sell it those are really fun bikes yeah, to yeah ride, but, but doesn't it doesn't crush it like nobody's like oh you know three because they're all, ultimately they're just speaking with their wallet the people are and the manufacturers sure. are giving them what they want yeah, with yeah. their wallet so if KTM was selling 
yeah. way more 350s, they'd, they'd all make a 350. Sure. Yeah, you know? I'm sure, yeah. yeah, obviously the other OEMs know what they're selling. Yeah. They, they figure that out. Yeah, so. They would make a two-stroke. Yeah. They would make a 350 if they're uh, crushing it. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for the call, man. Good stuff. Thank yeah, you. thanks, Ted. Thank you. Uh, Nick has a question about Tomac and Ferrandis. Nick, what's up, man? Hey, guys. What's happening? What's happening? I, next year for Supercross, Eli Tomac, Dylan Ferrandis. Who scores more points out of the two? Dylan Ferrandis. Wow. Tomac and Ferrandis. That was quick. Oh, I don't think you can say that <clears throat> that quick. I just did. <laughs> um... Charles? That's tough, man. Uh, I go for Andis, too, because every so much stuff is changing in Eli's program, and Ferrandis is on this upward trajectory right now that's going up, and Eli, I think there's a lot of unknowns. If if we were, even after Ferrandis' incredible outdoor season, if Eli was staying on a Cowie going into the 22 season, I feel like I would probably pick Eli. Okay. But since Eli's changing and all the you know sort of unknowns there, I, I think I'm going to go Dylan. It's, I mean, obviously it's harder than what I, yeah, yeah. I blurted it out, right? But I think Eli's experience is, is huge. But um, yeah, I mean, I agree with all with with what Charles said, and I just, I think what, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like I'm just considering the summer in my decision, but I'm, I believe that Dylan was was at a severe disadvantage in Supercross this year. He got hurt really close to the season opener. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he got hurt again during the season. Um, I think his Supercross season had a lot of injuries and and yeah, uh, you're right. <clears throat> things I mean. to overcome. If he can, if uh, my answer is based on them staying healthy from now until then, mm-hmm. is why I think well, that. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna have this conversation with you guys at the show at some point. I just do you see like okay, so Zach Osborne, unexpected 450 motocross champion, mm-hmm. comes into Supercross. He wasn't 100, percent but. Did he take a leap? Not really. From the from the confidence, from the title, from from being a guy, as much as we love Zacho, he didn't take the leap. I mean, I think he was so, prepared to, but it didn't. He got hurt, right? Didn't he get hurt before the season or something? Didn't I think, he have yeah, something he wasn't. Going on? I don't think he was a hundred percent coming in. But so does Dylan. You know, if, if you go off that, will you stop touching your microphone? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I, I just no. he's. Been, yeah. Um, I can see it boiling over. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. So you know, Ferrandis, does he like Charles? Like you said, it, starts are so important. You don't have yeah. thirty minutes to work through the pack. You don't have a wide ass track. His fitness was great, but in Supercross, it's not as right. important. I, I That's don't know. That's a big factor. I right. think his starts. Um, it's a good point. He the uh, starts uh, are a real good point. In outdoors, like I think DV has been pretty vocal about. Like if you're fast enough, you get to the front. Yep. Figure it out. Starts don't matter people. so much. Don't matter. Yeah. Be in shape. Control the things you can control. Go faster. Ride the same pace the whole race. Pass people. Supercross, you don't have that luxury, man. If you start, and not even bad, right? If you start seventh or eighth, like those are legit badass dudes you're going to have to try to pass on a very tight track with minimal lines, everybody doing the same thing. We talked about 450s taking away the, you know, strategic, you know, technical advantages. You screw up the rut, you're in second gear on a 450, you go, and you triple. Yeah. Like, and everybody's doing that. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's much harder for him to overcome a seventh place start in yeah. a twenty minute supercross main. But having said that, like I said earlier, I don't think Eli gets any better. It's just motocross. He's older and he he's been losing a little bit from his peak. And and um, and so how is Eli gonna take a jump? D- Eli yeah. might be worse. Look what you've done, Nick. Look yeah. what you've done to all I of played us. devil's advocate a bit earlier with Eli, like saying, yeah. What if the change of scenery, you know, really helps him? But uh, you know, my true gut feeling is the bike is good. But it is a lot different than what he's riding now. I think yeah. he's got a steep learning curve to, to get comfortable. Right. That's a drastically different motorcycle. The bike's, yeah, well, so. I guess the bike's not as proven in Supercross, right? We no, don't know that yet. not at all. AP hey, looked good at times. Has sure. it won a race in the last uh, however many years? Uh, yeah, James would be the last one. Stu? Barsha. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Barsha. Yeah, yeah. Barsha. Anna, huh? Barsha. Yeah. But, I mean, Barsha, I think, had lots of times were vocal about his displeasure with that bike. Yeah. It's, it's a real good yeah. question, mate. Nick. Yeah. Nick, uh, real good question. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Now you're going to get us arguing the rest of the night. Can you ask JT as well, please, Steve? I can ask JT, yeah. Nobody cares what JT <laughs> says. Yeah, nobody cares. But, oh, we, we will. <laughs> Thank you. I do like what you said about starts. That's, that's hard you. to yeah, overcome. Because the outdoors, uh, I don't uh, know if the stats are anything, but his outdoor starts, I think, were better at times. But, right. man, he he just 
he um, won on his, his fitness and his skills. Yeah. Justin, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for calling in. Now, you are Jace Kessler's <laughs> mechanic, regular mechanic. No, no, I would not call myself his regular mechanic. That his dad's his regular okay. mechanic, and he's okay. he's. I'm I'm a bike washer, pusher to the line, motivator, okay. fellow vet <laughs> racer. Paul. Yeah, 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 fellow vet racer. Paul, how's it good, going, man? Good, man. Good, good job at Loretta's this year, dude. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. So, were you at Indiana? I was. That was me. That was waving to you while we were down on the. Okay, line. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay, so. Like, they're trying to track down. I told Jace to call Davey Coombs. I don't know if he did or not. They're trying to track down what happened. None of the officials are saying what happened, what Jace said happened at Indiana. Right. And I'm right. just, like, so confused here. <laughs> and, you know, I called Jace today because I, I caught a lot of flack from, from, from some of my friends that listen. They're like, hey, we just calling you out and, you know, saying all these things. And, and the bottom line, I think, it comes down to is, you know, like Jason and I said, what's done is done. And do we ruffle feathers? Do we go against the AMA and say, hey, you guys were wrong. You were wrong. What are they going to do? Are they going to change anything? No. Probably not. But everything that Jay said is, is to the T. Like, he was like, oh, my God, dude, I only have two left gloves. Right, what? right. And, but, and I said, well, what do you want me to do? And I said, I can go back and get a pair and, or, you know, get the other one. And he said, yeah, do it. So I pushed the bike down to the end of the gate. There was an official stand there. And I said, listen, I need to go get something from the truck. Is that okay? Okay, and he goes, "Yeah." He pulled a, pa a banner down for me, and okay. I left. Yeah, and, you and left, I, right? Yep, what what did that official look like, Justin? He was a tall. See, and this is where I was telling Jason, "I'm like, God, I wish I would have really kind of mentally checked, you know, and really thought who he's, he was." A taller guy, and he was standing there. Can we get right a, on the? Maybe he wasn't Travis, an official. Can we get the, uh, the, the, the normal get official lineup. AMA <laughs> lineup on the no, screen? No, but, but like maybe he wasn't an official. <laughs> maybe he was literally just a tra a guy with a yellow shirt from MX Sports, or like a person that works for the actual track, right? Not not AMA well, or right. Sports, but right? but like the a, MX Sports guys have yellow shirts with blue bottoms, right? And they're just they're, they're the guys that set up banners and the guys that you know groom. You know they they do all this yeah. stuff. Right. Maybe it was one of those guys. I, man, I, like I said, everything kind of was right. going so fast and I, I was trying to keep my cool, but I'm like, Oh my God, the parade lap's going to go. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think we weren't, we weren't super far off on time. Like I think I had time, but you know, basically by the time I got back the now the one AMA official who he's super cool with us. And obviously since Jason was doing better, you know, people are starting to talk to us right. more and Hey guys, good ride and stuff. He's always super nice to us. And he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I had to run back to the truck and get his gloves. Yeah. He goes, you can't do that. And I said, well, I asked that guy right there, and I pointed to the guy that was standing there, and yeah. he goes, he looked at me, and he says, you asked the wrong guy. You yeah, so, so it probably, probably wasn't an official. An official. Yeah, yeah, you asked an MX Sports guy, I bet. The guy that's in charge it, of cutting the top of the stakes off. Yeah. So, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or prepping the track, watering the track something or something. Like that. something. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we waited, and then and Canfield came down, and he – he had me the rule book, and he, he had it highlighted and everything. He's like, you, you can't do this. He left him that. And I pointed, and I said, well, that guy said yeah. I could. And right, were, right, right. he walked away. It was real quick. And, you know, the whole time my head spinning because I felt so bad for yeah. Jake, man. In his eyes, he was just like, are you, you serious? You really screwed this? my Pulp Mex fantasy <laughs> team so bad. And, I, and we screwed some Pulp Mex fantasy teams. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I think I, I wanted to call in and yeah, talk to you guys. No. I, obviously, I wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for what you did for Met Paula, too. That was so cool. And it was, yeah. It I was know great. he appreciates it so much. And Paul, I, I got real sick and I was laying on my couch like Thursday, late Thursday night, and I texted Nick and I said, Nick, is there any way? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it. And Nick was like, dude, don't worry. I got it handled. And he texted me back and said, Paul was going to help out. And that literally, like, my whole my heart was like, okay, cool. I can relax. And, yeah, Jace was. I think he was even nervous with me not coming out and and that stuff. So, uh, uh, like I said, be, beyond it all, thank you guys so much because that was super cool yeah, of, it, of what you guys did. Yeah, for Nick him. said, "Do you want to do it?" I'm like, "No, no, I don't want to <laughs> do it. That's a lot of work, dude. It is so much. It's work. It's so much work. Paul, Paul did a great so job hard. for sure. And yeah, he, he was, did. He did. I mean, and uh, you know, my bike uh, only got uh, a wheel broke and a rear brake is fucked up, and I got to change a bunch of stuff. But yeah, no problem. Yeah, everything's cool. With me, so, I know. said the cool thing was, I said, you know, uh, out of all the nationals that I did with him, I did every national with him this year. He, we never had any major any bike problems like m major malfunctions or anything we had glove gate and that was about it so, yeah, yeah yeah no uh thanks I for the like, call thank man God yeah. To help yeah thank Th you guys again i really appreciate it and uh no love problem. the show thank you. you guys keep it up thanks man appreciate yeah. it thank See you guys. 
So, okay, we'll get to the bottom of that a little bit. It sounds like you didn't really ask an official, right? Yeah, uh, and he don't know, uh, right? Yeah, he he's asking yeah, somebody no. that there that looks official. Yeah, yeah, he's got a shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know him a little bit. He's a stand-up yeah, dude. Right. Like, he's... Um, all right, hey, next, let's get to our next guest here on the Pulp Show. Brought to you by the folks at Vortex Racing. Dylan Ferrandis just won a championship with Vortex Racing Sprockets. Chad Reed, James Stewart's won championships with Vortex Racing Sprockets. Uh, the V3 uh, bar is 29% stronger than the competition. You can ride with confidence, Paul, knowing that Vortex has put years of R&D in development and testing with super strong bars without sacrificing weight or speed, Paul. Kyle at VortexRacing.com. If you want to deal from the folks at Vortex, they got sprockets, they got bars. They'll dial you in and uh, just mention Pulp Mech Show at Kyle at VortexRacing.com. And uh, they got aluminum sprockets, they got steel sprockets. They can also get, uh, figure that out for you too, colors, of course. Uh, bringing you our next guest on the show. Uh, this man is a uh, past a 125 Supercross champion and uh, has his own f fantasy game as well. Welcoming on Denny Stevenson. What's up, Debo? How are you, man? What's happened, brother? It's nice. To, uh, thanks for having me on. And, and now I know about Glovegate. I did not know that that was a rule. You couldn't take your bike off the line. And uh, now I know. So, uh, yeah. Good I'm sure there. in your day you could just take off. But, yeah, not now. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not, not possible. And don't ask the wrong guy. Yeah, I just uh, that was that's what a crazy story that was. So, uh, yeah, that was interesting. I, had not, I did not know the details. Yeah, uh, he, wild. he uh, got 13th in the first moto. He yeah. grabbed the two wrong gloves. His mechanic there, the guy that called, took off for the truck. Kid got back, he got back, and the mechanics and the officials are like, "You can't race, you're done." And it's like, "What?" And, and but at the same time, like Davey said, uh, Coombs was saying at the time, he's like, "Look, the kid got 13th. He grabbed the wrong glove. He he left the starting line for the right reasons. It's far away." Okay. Davey was like, "It's a far. He, he, we need to let that kid race." That's what Davey was yeah. saying because yeah. he just grabbed the wrong glove. He's not doing anything sketchy. Yeah, but I mean, rules, yeah. obviously, you know, I I would vouch for Jace here, but I'm also gonna say like, you fracture a rule once, then where where's it stop? But don't you feel like uh, you could have said if you were an official, like you got the wrong gloves? Okay, uh, here, take the pit cart or no. or let the me go to your truck. I don't. The know. problem is he asked what what he thought was an official that yeah, wasn't yeah. actually no, an no, official. No, no, that's so that's, that's, that's where the story. But I'm saying, let's start. say there was an official there. Yeah. Like, don't you feel like Jace should be able to go back and get the right glove? I think so. Is it? I don't know. Okay. I think the rule is the <laughs> equipment leaving, right? Yeah, the bike. It's yeah, not the rider. Yeah, or the, the mechanic. No, no, the no, bike no. has to the stay. Equipment. The yeah. bike has to the stay. Bike has yeah. stay the bike hadn't yeah. left. This is all a non-topic anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But, but what the only do they need for transportation? The pits yeah. are eight miles away at Indiana. Because yeah. the team. And I know, amateurs. and I know how in the FIM at the GPS, you can, you have to like, or even the donations, right? You have to be have your bike in the park for me at a certain time as well. Or if it's not there, you can't race. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. Seven zero two five eight six. Pulp, you got a question for Denny Stevenson? Uh, give us a call, and uh, we can try to uh, make it happen. He's on the hey, line. Steve, yep. I hear there's a congratulations in order, man. You're a big baller now, in new house. Just want to congratulate you and uh, the missus, Pookie. Thank you. I Thank know, you. I, I know you've worked hard and, uh, and deserve it and earned it. And uh, yeah, that's it's very just, cool. I look forward to uh, being flown out and laying poolside here one of these seasons. <laughs> <laughs> can, is what are the chances you could get chicken again? Because that was epic. <laughs> that was epic. I mean, I know. That's Get chicken that's to throw funny. a pool party. Oh no! no. Oh yeah! <laughs> yes, no. good timing. Yeah, who did that? I mean, little. How little <laughs> do we know that? I guess you know that he almost didn't didn't come. I mean, dude, you know, he, he, his chick shows up without her phone, without her bag. They had gotten an argument at the airport. It's awesome. I mean, he was maybe just minutes away from not just from the whole thing just being a a, a a shit show and not even showing up. But the fact that he did and what a great show it turned out and getting married and you know, I mean, uh, I feel. <laughs> I feel like it was like li do this goddamn show. It was like lightning striking, Danny, to get you guys here. Like it really was, was. It was pretty incredible. I mean, you could not have asked for better timing, and 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 the way it worked out. Yeah, absolutely. You you leave you leave chance uh, up to uh, fate for Chicken and I, and it worked out perfectly. <laughs> what did you say to Chicken? You're just like, hey, but remember, the show's in Vegas. We're going to Vegas. That's how you get him, right? What do you tell him, Danny? I, I don't. Even, I mean, I was just like, man, please be there. You know, we, he, you know, Steve is really excited for this. I'm pumped to see. You. I haven't seen you in a while, and he's like, man, I'll be there. Don't, it's not even a problem. And mm -hmm. then when I heard the details of the stuff that went down to get, get on the flight, and he, and he, everything went down. He texted me an hour there. before the flight and said, "What time is my flight?" I'm <laughs> not stupid, dude. Like an hour and twenty minutes before his flight, I'm like, "Chicken, it's like right now. Like, get to the airport." I love it. God yeah. dang it, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I, I've never known anyone to be more unprepared in life. You had to have six, six, uh, successful racing career, and you know he runs the fa helps run the family yeah. uh, business and shit. Yet he has no time, no no sense of time or reality. <laughs> wow. that's None. Awesome. I saw him at uh, I saw him at Paula, and I said, "Hey, chicken!" And he just looked at me like he'd never 
seen me before and i'm like yes <laughs> like yes like uh, uh you know this is such a chicken moment so you was, lived up to the hype thank you jeff <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely uh denny stevenson on the show denny how did you have the motocross uh, fantasy uh game going on uh how'd that go for you guys it's it's good you know i mean we're the slow burn um you know obviously you have uh, built a great empire um, and something I also realized I'm, I'm predominantly doing it on my, on my own. I brought back my other partners. Uh-huh. One was one pretty much just developed a site again. You know, we're doing salary base and stuff, but I handle all the updates, prizes and everything. And, uh, it's a lot of work, man. I'll tell you, you, you must have a small army keeping yours running. This is the first year I played pulp, got my ass throttled pretty well. That's a very difficult game as well. Um, but I've watched every lap of every race, watch practice. You know, you, you yep. feel like you got to be so in tune with it. Mm-hmm. You think you got the perfect team. And then shock oh, and Norton get on the first turn this weekend. And you're like, I, I think I saw one of your tweets say, if you if you want a rider to do bad, let me just make sure I'm, I'll hire you. And that's pretty much <laughs> much was my season. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it, it was very frustrating for me. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, it was brutal. So that that's yep. that's fantasy for you, absolutely. It's Marks. Yeah. It's Marks's fault. It's all mm-hmm. your your fault. Yeah, so check it out, MotoExtreme360.com. Um, we do some random games. You know, I make some games up, doing uh, you know retro games and stuff like that. And uh, but like like you guys, we just wrapped up uh, the outdoors and Supercross, and uh, I was looking forward to maybe doing a donations game, but who knows what that's going to go with that? So yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Denny. I want to get your take on a couple of things. So look, the Jet Jet's a national champion. He's coming on here shortly on the show and everything else. And you've certainly, although you haven't in the final round of a nationals, Jeff Emig, of course, did it a few times at a final round and everything else. And at at one point, Denny, all of us were like. Is Jet okay here? Is this going to happen for Jet? Because <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. You know, I, I was watching him uh, watch practice with my dad, and you know they were showing Jet during practice, and he looked off every single lap. They never showed him take a good lap. I know the track was really slippery in that second uh, second session for those guys, but he just looked really uncomfortable. The bike was real twitchy on him. He did not look comfortable, and uh, we were commenting on that, and we're like, "Well, what's the race? You know, the gate drops, he'll slip into race mode, and then boom, he crashes." And then boom, he crashes again. It's like, wow, is this really? Is he really going to fall apart here? Is he going to pull, uh, you know, one of these 250 guys who just throws it away at the last round? And how exciting and how nerve wracking. He had to be just losing his mind in between motos. Yeah, it definitely didn't look the same. Jet Lawrence that had swept the previous four right, four motos. That's for sure, right? But yeah, it's the championship finale. The, the, these things happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the one with Kennard when he won the last round with Porcel going down, and. Uh, it's just unbelievable, you yeah. know. The, that's the way it worked out, and it's a shame for you know Justin Cooper's got to look back upon it and just go. There was just a couple races here and there where I could have made up six points, you know, or had not crashed at Watchu or something like that. Yeah, you know, that just shows why every lap, every point counts, every race. You know, some people were commenting that you know maybe Hunter should have pulled over that first moto and, and gave him that extra point as well, but. Yeah, the I, way it worked out, it was fun to watch. It was surprising that Fry just sort of let him go. He I, dove in last hard lap? on him. Yeah. He dove in pretty hard on me. It was, it, it was like, well, I'm coming, and Fry was I was fading, you know. Right, right. When you, but, yeah, you think you think right. he would have rode a little wider probably, yeah. yeah especially considering he needs a star ride next year, which he probably won't get. It, it would have helped his uh, would have helped his matters, uh, you know, would have yeah. worked out a little bit better. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Danny Stevenson on the show, Pulp Mech Show, brought to you by the folks at Vortex Racing. So we were just talking about Dylan Ferrandez. Obviously, he had an amazing season, Danny. Do you think he steps it up for Supercross 2022? Well, I, I, you know, I forgot that he came in the last season or this current season hurt. You know, he what, hurt his broke his hand or something coming into the, you know, the twenty one Supercross season. So coming into this twenty two season, if he's healthy, you know, that confidence will be blowing over. But again, as we've seen multiple times, it's a it's a completely different set of technique. You know, it took super a long time to get his technique going for the outdoors, and to kind of cross over into Supercross. Dylan's got to stay on two wheels. He's got a, you know, I don't know if that, the heart of pushing to the very limit, a very limit uh, to the end of the race as he did the outdoors. I don't know if that kind of crossed over to Supercross or not, but, you know, I think of the top five guys, he's got to be one of the favorites, you know, with Kenny, uh, Cooper, and Eli again. So it should be interesting. Um, yeah, Coop, Coops is mystifying to me. Obviously, he got better by the end, but this is a national champion. This isn't Jason Anderson, who'd never had much success outdoors. You know, he's a good mm-hmm. rider, but never had great success. This is a guy that won to be national champion. And if you win a national championship, you're a bad dude. Uh-huh. And, and jumped on 450 right away and was successful. Like, he went to Japan, won that GP. Yeah. He nearly won the nations that year. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then I he, just, like, yeah. 
Like, I think he just, like I commented with Weeds or something on Twitter, I think he had just t- changed his technique so much on the KTM. You know, he was so able to keep those tight lines and stuff that, you know, those guys were just flowing right around him and outdoors. And even, I think, one of the rounds, Langston had mentioned when somebody went right around him, it's like, at this point in time, you need to start realizing they're taking better lines than you. Stop taking the lines you're taking and realize that, hey, man, I should maybe follow one of these guys a couple laps and start flowing a lot more. And I think, you know, with whatever he did with the frame, you know, moving that uh, brace or whatever. Yep. And it helped that a lot of the guys were out. You know, it's to admit that five more guys were out when he was running ninth. So I think the combination of everything kind of, you know, put him on the podium by the end of the season. But that's definitely not the same guy we've seen outdoors in the past, like you said. Right. I, and I don't know, like, as far as, uh, uh, you know, he, don't forget, two years ago he goes 1-1 one, one at Millville on a KTS. Yes. Like, just dominates the day. Yep. So you're like, oh, yeah, there I'd it is. That. And then you're like, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then, like, never again. <clears throat> Until he'd got the podium at Ironman. That was his only career podium in a four-wheelie motocross right. class. So, well, did he win that day you know, without the race? As Clint had posted, you know, three laps down in stats that, you know, Cooper had, I think, the best starting position, had led the had the most hole shots. Yet mm-hmm. by the end of the first lap, he was seventh or fifth. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He they would blow by him like he was standing still. And you think that you could at least be aggressive, aggressive enough, and be fast enough those first couple laps to drop the hammer and at least run up front for the first couple laps. But, I mean, he was just getting ate up immediately. So yeah. I found that that was just very odd as well. I mean, it's like, where did, what, where did your immediate speed go? And, and especially for a kid that's that scrappy, right? Like, yeah, he's yeah, so... Yeah. so you know what, you know I'd be pissing him off. Oh, you know, yeah. Off yeah, I mean, he'd go home, just probably eat some more lead and, uh, and, and <laughs> punch, punch the wall and be like, man, what the fuck's I, going on with myself? And, and, I, and I, do, I do appreciate the fact that tenacity, he step, kept at it every race. You know, kept, he didn't just kept getting spank. those starts, right? Like, yeah. he yeah. wasn't shying away from it. He was No, he wanted to run the pace, and, you know, he, he felt like he wanted to be up there, and it just took forever. But I'm glad he stuck it out and didn't take some injury and just say, I'm going to go home, you know. I'm, I'm sick. I'm not going to race these last four races or something, yeah. you know. Yeah, I haven't really – broken down Supercross 2022 so much in my brain and wrapped it around and everything. And that loss could happen in the offseason, but I believe Coop will be my favorite to defend I'm, I'm going into Supercross good, 2022. I'm He's on you. two of the last three. I don't like, like the Alden Baker departure, but uh, I'm still on board with him winning. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, yeah. I think Burner's just fine. Yeah. Burner's speaking got of Alden Baker, like what, I mean, speaking of 2022, I mean, we got Plessinger leaving, Star, very relaxed, you know. You go into Alden on the KTM, very strict. You have... Uh, you know, Anderson leaving Husky where he could do pretty much anything he wanted. Going to Kawasaki, a little bit more structured. You know, I, I could see, uh, you know, Plessinger and Alden getting a fist fight soon. They won't let him, he won't, he won't yeah. let him have a beer and steak after a race, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I don't, that that one's not a great mix, uh, mix match. Malcolm's going to be there too. That is going to be too. interesting, right? RJ, Marv. Right. Yeah. So different characters going to Alden's camp this season yeah. or next maybe, season. Maybe it'll be good for Alden's camp to have somebody that lighthearted like AP to sort of mix it up. And maybe. Be, I mean, that's very anti Alden from, you know, the yeah. little bit that I know. But right. maybe that'll help those guys having somebody sort of unique and different that isn't a robot. And you know? may, maybe uh, Coop's leaving and, and, you know, the guys being a little bit discontent with what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Maybe Alden changes a little bit too. Like, I've never understood where he's just like, you cannot ride another track. Yeah, like you just can't. You can't go ride with your friends. You just can't do it. You got to stay here. Like, wh- wh- what's can't it? go make money in. You off-season. can't go make money in the off season. You know, you got to eat this. You got to. I, I don't. Alden's got more championships. You know that are on the mantle that sure. prove that he knows what he's doing. But on the other hand, a lot of times I'm like, man, I don't get it. But only Roxon and AC oh. have really won. You know, championships away from him. Like after leaving, right? And yeah. So yeah, I think I think AP is the kind of guy that isn't. He's not looking for conflict. Let's be real. No, hey, no, he, no. So no. I feel like he just says, okay, and then he goes home and eats whatever he wants. Right, right. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think those guys now followed the plan. I yeah. think there were guys that are there this year that never followed the – Sure. The, cause I well, think like, like Ricky went on the way home, he'd stop and get fries and eat them real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 really, right? So <laughs> AP slams a beer and eats a burger and like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but Malcolm going there, that's a – that caught me by surprise for sure. Because Malcolm had ridden nothing but his track for quite a while. Yeah. Like really – kind of isolated himself and right. kind of done things a little bit James ish, yeah. right? But which isn't the I'm gonna I'm gonna spar off with my top competitors every day. But That's quietly nothing. the star guys will tell you, like they won't really yell it, but the Milky was out of shape last year. They're like he wasn't in shape. He would take breaks in the main event because he was tired. <laughs> no for real. Right. Yeah. They were like, Yeah, we don't know why we think he's just tired. He says he's not, but then why do you slow down for two laps? Like literally slow down and then get going. He's and you can't hide it in that this day and age. You can no, hide that yeah. You, you can hide Back it in your day, Danny. Yeah, in your day you <laughs> could hide it. 
I just take a nap in one of the back sections and come out of back and just yeah, I'll be like, well, your lap times are off so bad. Uh, that. I think the transponder's loose on the bike, you know. But we yeah, we didn't have that shit back then, so you could get away with murder. But yeah, yeah, I mean, every every lap, every sector, every section, you know, I mean, it's so calculated and yeah. and uh, broken down. Yeah, you're not getting away with uh, you know slacking off a couple laps when all of a sudden you drop the second, second and a half. And, and yeah, and at Alden's place, that's every day. Yeah, every single day. Well, that's what makes them great, right? It's the competition every single day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if it's the food and it's the train. No, it's, it's the bicycle the, stuff. It's I'm gonna catch Marvin Muskan and Zach Osborne every single day. I'm pushing that know? limit every day, yeah, I mean, a little I bit. I would have killed for that. I mean, I came home to Nebraska and raced with my local buddies, and I sent about like a half a lap, and I'd try and chase them down within a certain amount of laps. But that was yeah, that's how I trained. You know, I mean, to be able to ride with the best riders at all time, like adults, you know, like I think Jason Thomas says all the time, you know, you're forging steel on steel and. That's got to help so much. But then I've heard that, you know, the opposite is I've heard Ricky and Chad comment on it that they couldn't do, ever do that. Like they didn't want to share their secrets and no, know what everybody, no. was, everybody know what they were doing. And so that's the flip side. But those guys are so driven and already that you know someone like myself, I think being around that was, it would be would have been so much more helpful. I think same with Malcolm, you know, being around that type of attitude and that mentality and that type of competition daily, well, you definitely got to your game up. Yogi rides with Ricky every day for three years while Ricky crushes one twenty fives. Ricky moves up to 250s and tells Yogi, hey, man, that's it. Sorry. We can't ride together anymore. Yogi's like, what? Right. Yeah. You're my competitor. Beat it. Wasn't yeah. Dungey and Stu a little bit like that, too, at some point, too? Yeah. I there think was... that got a little weird. Yeah. Dunge was riding at Stu's, right? Yeah. Anything else, Paul, that you can think of? Any, like, um, No. Well, remember, Stan went and lived in a doghouse at Johnson's, you know? Not that Stan wasn't really working hard, but, you know, Ricky showed him all the secrets. And then, as soon as Ricky got hurt, Jeff was the man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's the secret sauce over at Baker's Face. And, and so Coop, Coop will be a very interesting uh, uh, guy to watch and I, see how that goes. I think he'll be fine. You do? I really do. I yeah. think Cooper is such a hard head, hard yeah. head yeah. work his ass off type guy. That um, I think we'll, the problem is Supercross, that you know, really working hard stuff, doesn't, it doesn't show as much there right, as it does outdoors, which is weird because Cooper had more success indoors than out. But um, I think for Supercross, he's going to be just fine. He's yeah. going to have good people well, in I his corner. I he's going to work hard. I think the fact that I think the fact that Coop brought back George. I mean, that pretty much says it all. What? Who? Did you, in his video after he won the Supercross, he was promoting some of his product, like in a in a chair, like in the lobby of his hotel in Vegas or, or not Vegas, but Salt Lake. And he had jean shorts on, and I didn't even know those still were around. Jorts. <laughs> oh, jorts. <yeah. laughs> that was a person. I thought you said George. Yeah, I'm like what? Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, uh, your buddies, uh, Den Denny, uh, Eli Tomac, what do you think? Uh, what, where were you at with Eli? Well, I was going to ask you the same thing. I just read his interview from the weekend where they were asking him about, can you say why you're leaving? He's like very, very vague, but also kind of saying, like, well, no, we're going out on a high note. I'd rather not pin it, point it down to one thing and say what really what it was, but let's just, let's just let it go. Like, what is that? Like, what, what is, is that really there wasn't a problem? Or are you saying that there is a problem? He doesn't want to bring it up? Or I, it was very vague. I thought it was a very odd way to answer a question. Yeah, Eli's not really, like, PR savvy that way either, right? But I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I just think he wanted a better bike. I think he wasn't happy with his bike, and he wasn't happy with the team. And I think they were like, you know what? That's fine. We're not really stoked. I think it was Loretta Lynn's, too, or whatever it yeah, was, yeah. the double DNF. Yep. Yeah. And I, I mean, My I, hunch. I've given him a lot of shit, obviously, with calling him a Lito Mac. Oh, you, know. you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> and, and, but uh, I've really enjoyed watching him this year. He seems like he's been in a really good mood. You know, he's, uh, you see a kind of a lighter side of him. I think maybe once he decided he was switching teams, he's like, well, I'm just going to put the best in I can, and I'm hoping to move on to greener pastures. And um, it was, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, when he, when he flipped a switch at Mount Morris, that one moto, mm -hmm. I mean, that's some of the most enjoyable things watching you'll ever have, and that's what I've always loved about him, and that's why I've always given him so much shit. It's like, how can you be, you know, Ricky Carmichael speed one lap, and then, you know, my speed the next lap, or next moto, you know? Yeah, yeah. Danny, who do you think who do you think scores more points in Supercross, Ferrandis or Tomac next year? Um, good question. I, I'm going to yeah. go with Eli. I think Eli will. I think Eli's going to want. I think Eli's going to want to go out big. I, it'll be interesting to have that dynamic in the trucks. You know, um, you know they seem to get along pretty well being in Cali and Yamaha and at the podium and stuff like that. But having those guys in the same truck, 
Nah. They're both fun. They're fire Dude. and fire, don't you think? Or they get no. just, you think they, they probably won't even see Eli's each other. in his motor home <laughs> and shows up five minutes before practice, and then sh- they, they sit beside each other for poster signing, and then they never see each other. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I haven't been to a lot of races recently, so they right. – they, Eli still kind of alienates himself off his off. I like think he, all these top guys do. Roxon doesn't come around either. The guys are. I was asking somebody. They're like, "Yeah, dude, we don't see him. He just." And I think with COVID rules and and how it sounds, right. things will be. I, I don't think people will be hanging out that much right, either. Right. I think everyone's going to keep their distance. I remember one time I asked Metcalf about being Dungeon's teammate. He's like, "I don't ever see the guy." Yeah. You know, I just think yeah. that's how it goes. I just at that at that level, they got their motorhomes, they got their crews. The teams go to the motorhomes to de- debrief. They don't, you know, they don't debrief right, right there. Like, yeah, it's. <laughs> A little different from the box fan days, Debo. Yeah, no, and, and I didn't realize it was, that they're all separated back to their buses like they were with, you know, with Ricky and Chad and all those guys back do, in the day and James. And do you uh, do you want to have the MXDN argument now, Debo, or you want to have it later? Um, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> the, but the, that's funny that uh, I was wondering when that would come up, but. As far as what you want to argue, you want to argue about it. it the, the, the event doesn't matter that much, man. You got to calm down. You got to get all fired up, man. I love it. You got to uh, calm down. Like it, it, no, it can't. Well, I mean, I mean, I understood. I wasn't really fired up this year. I mean, I just wanted them to go and hope it would work out. Work out well. Right. Um, I, I'm not mad that they're not going. It makes complete sense, you know, when they. Okay, so you are it. okay with that? All right. Okay. Yeah. Do you, oh yeah, I'm not mad about okay. them not going. No, right. I make, I, I'm on full board. The, you know, the cost and everything, if, if one of the riders all of a sudden came down positive and, and it just ruined the whole event, I mean, no, I, I'm in complete agreement okay. about not going, and right. I have no problem with that. No, I, I I don't agree with all the, you know, the COVID stuff that's going on, but uh, it's it's in place, and it's, it's the rules that, that you, they got to play with. So right, I understand right. not, not pissing away a bunch of money to go. I, I think we would have done well. Um, you know, we got three guys that wanted to go, but let's save the money and resources and try again next year. It's one more spot for Canada, Debo. Yeah, what a great story that uh, who, who's your interview that did all those uh, the Canadian rider who went to all the Canadian all those rounds for all the motocross nations. Oh, Tyler Medaglia, yeah, he's done like eight eight times or yeah. something. Yeah, that's cool. I never realized that he'd been to that many. That was uh, that was a great recap of the, that he did. That was awesome. Um, Good for him. But uh, you know what? So so you're are you mad though at Kawasaki and Eli for not going the last few years? Um, well, I think Eli. Well, yeah. Well. I just found it ironic this one this year that you know again Monster and Yamaha was going to go Monster Kawasaki was going to go it's a monster event it just seemed really odd but you know with everything Yamaha is trying to do to move to Florida yeah I think under normal circumstances they would go they would go uh, I think Eli had interviewed and said that's still one of his goals I see him going on the Yamaha at the end of the just end of 2022 yeah. I think yeah. he would go I know, you know I know for sure he didn't like like he did not like getting all the shit for his underwhelming rides. He, I know for yeah. sure he felt like, hey, guys, I tried, and I've put my balls out here on the MXDN you know, m- number of times, and all I do is get shit when things go south. Sure, yeah. But that is sports in 2021, right? <laughs> yeah. That's it. I mean, anything. You're gonna, you, you hang yourself out there, you're, gonna, you're, you're probably going to get your head chopped off in the, in the process. Yeah. And that sucks. Yep. And, and, then, and another thing I tend to forget you know, that you've mentioned, that you're not going necessarily as a team. You go with three individual riders. It's not like it used to be. You're not camping. No. You're not getting together. Um, you know, you had, and I understand your, your, your negativity about it. You had a terrible experience. It sounds like going over there and, and doing everything separately. And, um, you know, that does, that doesn't make sense or why I would put a bad taste, but as a fan, you're just seeing the outside and the glory in the USA going and winning. I'm still that guy. So Denny, we, I, you know. we went testing at Lomo two days before the race. We get there a little bit later. Ricky's out there. When Ricky packs up, our team manager left and we were still motoring. <laughs> and our manager left. Yeah, yeah that's just I, I, when you explained all that. I mean, it, it definitely made, made me understand why you have a feeling that you do towards it because no, that, he, that just seems odd. And, and a lot of people are like, well, why can't we get, why doesn't Roger just step down and let someone step in? Do you think that would help in all the positive I do. towards the other writers? I think a big part of why Cowie doesn't go is because they are still, still very angry about Marvin pulling over and Anderson helping Dunge and Marvin pulling over and all the Austrians getting together. And Cowie was very upset about that, and Roger was the, the the head of that, and they were like, "Screw you!" And then, never mind that they never saw Roger at these Des Nations events, right? They had Eli there or whoever, and they would barely see Roger. So they're like, "Yeah, we're not really feeling this vibe." You know? Right? It's not, it's, you're not. We're not getting the team vibe at all. It's just us showing up, you know, and then uh, getting blamed for the lack of results because because it wasn't ran properly. And it does take a, a, a coordinator to run it. I, I can imagine that. You know, in the old days. 
Roger's a big part of that. But yeah, I, I mean, in the old days for sure. But yeah, I think times have changed now. You know, I had a. R- who, who do you think would step in? Who do you think would be a good person to step in and re- to take over that role? Dan Mitch. Osborne, Mitch, Dan Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Dan, 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 uh, Dan, I can see Dan doing that. You know, it sounds like the time when uh, um, the Canadian writer uh, Galdi, when Galdi stepped yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one and done for 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 Galdi. But Dan would have too many side bets to make the the, the gate drop. But we wouldn't have any dirty tires on the gate. We yeah. would not miss any inside gates. Right. I promise you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I I and get that, it. I I also think like, look, man. As I've said many times, Team USA are. If you don't have Team USA there, you are always going to have the question of USA not being there, and you, you lack some star power, and these guys are paying out of their pocket to go. Like, yeah. hey, Giuseppe, David Luongo, reach into some of those hundreds of thousands of euros you're making at that event, and you cannot tell me differently. You cannot right. tell me that they don't fucking make so much money off that race. How about you just reach in, and for the teams that are coming from across the ocean – and sell tickets for you, like Team USA, how about you just make it so that Eli Tomac, who personally told me he spent ten grand on the event, now ten grand is nothing for Eli Tomac, we all know that, but still, right. he's spending $10,000 to go to make no money and then get shit on if he loses. Yep. How, about, how about you stream, how about you helping out a little bit? Yeah. That's, it's, that's it's my thing. Like, it's, like the, it's like the IOC with the Olympics. You know, they, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, run yeah. yeah, same thing. You, know, but, like, you but, guys all show up because that's what you're supposed to do, and then we're just going to profit off you. But at least the IOC can hide behind the shield of these are amateur uh, athletes. These are amateur athletes. You know, that's, the, that's their thing, right? Um, but the, the, the US, those are professionals. They make money. They make mm-hmm. millions of dollars racing in America, and they're coming to you for free, so you can make millions of dollars? Hold on. Hold on. Right. Like, yeah, no, so, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I, but I, I, I still say shut the fuck up and go race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, in the, and in the same vein for, like, making changes to that, I had a, I had a thought. This was early on before we heard Star wasn't going to go because yeah. of moving and, and, and before injuries or what have you. I, I was kind of thinking, like, why don't you send the entire Star team? Like, everybody was riding good at once. Have some camaraderie, some spare parts, all on the same bike, spare riders, right, for COVID stuff. Send the star team. So and AP, AP, Craig. Justin Cooper, and Craig, sure. Send those guys. They were all riding pretty good at once. Like, it's something different, right? Everyone, they're all used to working together. They can share bike settings. They can do all kinds and of things. Bobby like, Reagan would go. Like, you, yeah, he would go. And, and Steve, start a, start a GoFundMe to, to help yeah. offset some of the costs on Pulp MX to get Team USA there. Or I don't, I don't know. But it was right. just something It was something different. I don't think we'll ever have the opportunity to do it because typically you well, never like have. It's like things to do with Honda when they send all the yeah. Honda. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Before we let you go, Danny, we got a few other questions. We got a phone call for you, actually, Debo, uh, from Michael on three. Michael, what's going on? What's your uh, what's your question for Danny Stevenson? Hey, Danny, I just wanted to call and say hi uh, from Nebraska. Uh, and back in the old days of Herman and Fort Calhoun and uh, Beatrice, and oh I remember being on the track with you on, uh, on the Suzuki, and just wanted to say how proud I was that you made Team Suzuki and race the 125 uh, at least, you know, at least once. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, what's going on in Nebraska with motocross right now? Is, uh, are you still involved with the scene? I, I'm, I'm not at all, really. And uh, it's a shame that the sport, you know, all those tracks you mentioned, um, you know, I've had people even ask about, you know, getting their kids in the race around here. And it's, it's a shame. It, it, we used to have a dozen tracks that were an hour, an hour away from Omaha, where I live. And um, now you've got to go two, three hours. You know, Cody Gilmore got into a Best of Midwest series that was going to had a couple races in Nebraska, a couple in Iowa, a couple Kansas, and he just realized how difficult even that was. Just being a promoter, you know, you, people today are so, you know, anything they're all spoiled. Nobody's happy with anything. They want to bitch about everything. To be a track promoter is probably like uh, like Eli Tomac getting his ass kicked to donations. It's a it's a no win situation. And is it really? That's so sad yeah. because, you know, I have such, you know, uh, vivid memories of being on the track. Like Herman was, you know, had the Trans AMA and had the Nationals. And we got to see you know, guys like Jeff Ward coming in. And it was it was so exciting. Michael, uh, back then. B- greatest Nebraska yes. rider ever, Brian Deegan or Danny Stevenson? <laughs> Danny. Best, best, best Nebraska rider, Greg Tice. Oh, yes. Greg, Greg Tice. Tice. That's a good pull. Yeah. Never heard that name. I yeah. yep. can't believe you compared Danny to Deegan. I was really hoping I would say Deegan so that Daniel would get all mad. <laughs> yeah. this, guy's got a, this guy's got a title. 
Get I, Deacon's well, got Deacon's, Deacon's got, got the title most successful. That's the Deacon's honest. got That's spikes on his shoulder pads. Ah, uh, no one yeah. cares about that. Okay, but uh, yeah, Greg Tice was uh, he does. was the bad man. He he wrote for LOP. He, I think he he ran top five in some of the nationals and was going on to big things and got into a big car wreck here with some buddies. They got one of them got killed. Oh, and it just oh my God. changed, changed really? the path of his career, you know. But uh, he's the one that told well, me. Well, Deacon, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, Greg was the one that told me to go slow to go fast, you know, that uh, don't be, yeah. and that's what, something I watch with, uh, with Jet Lawrence these days. You know, he's so wise and, with his lines, and, and um, yeah, Greg was, was one of the baddest here, and that's kind of what led the way for me, it really. Uh, thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks for the call, man. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, love the show, and thank you. Uh, be listening every week. Awesome. Thank you. That's, uh, that's great. Talk to Denny Stevenson on the phone, Nebraska's finest. He's pumped. There uh, you go. <laughs> Debo, what, what crash hurt more? The Oklahoma City <laughs> endo, or yeah. or that that infamous English town photo. You know, it, it, let me just explain the dirt situation. These oh, tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, English, the English town one was a rolling set of san, uh, sandy sawdust whoops. Um, the crash at, uh, at Oklahoma City was basically on I thirty five. You know, so I'm going to go Oklahoma by far. For one, it was a little higher, and uh, the bike squashed me a little bit more. And but the ground, yeah, that ground was so unforgiving at Oklahoma City Supercross. I, to this day, that's got to be one of the gnarliest Supercrosses in history. It was made. It was 110 degrees. It was dry. It was blue yeah. groove concrete. And uh, I, I cased that double just a little bit, and I think I hit a false neutral or something. I, and the bottom just dropped out. I'm like, oh god, here we go. Oh. And then I land on the face of that double, and then the bike just squashed me, and I had my arm underneath me, and it broke my wrist. And yeah, I was never really the same after that. But no, yeah, it, it sucked, right? It was a, it was a shootout, right? The race. It was, it was yeah. well, it's an East West round. Yep. It wasn't necessarily a shootout. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That's East what I West round. Uh, I vividly remember being my heat race was nine seconds faster than the froze, and I'm like, just you know, just get out front and do it. But I wanted to get out front quick, sooner than I probably should have. I should have just played more patient. And you know, you have, all of us have little regrets, that, you know, through our career. But that one is probably the biggest one. I just wasn't more patient and just like. I had that that race won that day. I just was, it made a move too soon and did something stupid and paid for it. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it definitely uh, it sucked for sure. You know who else threw one away at Oklahoma was Coop. Coop, yeah, had it. Coop I was had standing it right there. Yeah. I was still on the track. You know, I hadn't really walked off anywhere yet. I was still I was, the doctors had ambulance to kind of wrap me up, so I was still in the infield. And I was standing right there when Coop jumped into those whoops and just went over the bars <laughs> and then gets up with the silencer sticking straight up, the fender sticking straight up. And then still races. I think it's a top ten, but yeah, yeah, that track was gnarly. And, and Coop was, God, you know, you know how bad he wanted to win that, you know, right. his home and home like that. That was that was gnarly. Right, absolutely. All right, Danny. Anything else for Danny Stevenson? Paul, Charles, I got anything? nothing, man. Good luck with your game, Danny. Yep. Um I appreciate you guys everything. Uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, I wanted to get you, I want to get you on because last last time we tried this thing, you had a car accident, and couldn't make it. I was like, oh, glad you're all right. Yeah. So gnarly, yeah. We, my buddy, uh, we just pulled out. This guy ran through a stop sign or red light. I remember, and he just nailed us. And I just bounced my head off the wind, sh- off the side window. And uh, yeah, I, I think I've hit my head enough over my life from just you know Oklahoma City and English Town, obviously. So <laughs> uh, don't need to add anything in a car. So I appreciate your patience and getting, finally getting me on, and uh, you know get to wrap up everything. A great season. I'm a fan like uh, like everyone else, and just uh, just watching every week. I'd love to try to get you in studio, Debo, but I know you know you're not always the easiest guy to pin down. But if we could somehow get you out here, that'd be fantastic. Well, now you got a pool. I mean, I didn't have a pool before. So <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I got go. a pool. Yeah. Uh, my house is only it's basically the same square footage basically. as the last one. Basically, so, it is now, basically. Where, how do you have your studio lights set up? A very similar studio, or is it like in a special area? Or what? Yeah, it's in a loft now instead of being like in a basement. Oh, very cool. Special loft up by the butler's quarters. Oh, my God. Stop it. <laughs> Same square footage, basically, basically, Debo, as the old one. So just uh, yeah. just picture that. All right? Mm-hmm. Well, very cool, gentlemen. Thank you for having me, and uh, have a great night. Thanks, Danny. See Thanks, ya. man. See you. Bye. Goodbye. That's Danny Stevenson, everybody. Brought to you by Vortex Racing. As I hit the microphone myself, mm-hmm. giving Paul shit, mm-hmm. and I just smacked the microphone. I didn't hear it, though. Oh, okay. so, yeah, my dick was super small. I heard that. That's the rumor that, at the track. Do you think that was Courtney? In yeah, the it must have been Courtney. That was one hundred percent Courtney. That was yeah. Courtney. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Mm. She's been itching to hit that one. She's had her <laughs> finger on it all Spread night. facts. <laughs> that's, that's bullshit. Uh, hey Charles, have mm-hmm. you been in a motorcycle or a car accident? Did sure. some idiot or some somebody uh, somebody or some idiot take you out? Mm-hmm. You need to call Arthur Attorney Draper. Call Attorney Arthur Draper. Okay, got it. Thank you. He's a slow moto guy turned attorney. In fact, ambulances chase him now. 
Arthur takes the time to know the clients and will take the time to talk to you personally. Consultations are free. We've had some listeners uh, use Arthur for stuff, and it's worked out really good. Help is only a phone call away. Arthur's got your back. ArthurDraper.com. Danny could have called Arthur, mm. you know, at Oklahoma City. Yeah. Maybe, you know, talk about that <clears throat> track design. Or that bit. car accident they got into. Yeah, That absolutely. idiot ran that stop sign. Right. Uh, Fly Racing, of course, big part of our show, along with the folks at Motorsport and Decal Works. And, uh, Paul, you, uh, this gentleman on the phone, you just spent a long weekend with. I and did. he's back on the line. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? Not much. Steve, do you think that anyone believes this uh, same square footage thing that you just repeat, like, 500 but, times a day? But it basically is. It's, it's like 200 or 300 more square footage. Like, Isn't that basically the like same? It's like 400, and that's 10% difference. It's basically the same price. 10% is a lot. But, I mean, okay, numbers Marks. Don't, numbers don't lie. Marks, I don't believe it's 400. I don't believe that. <laughs> But um, hmm. even if it was, is ten percent not? I got a, I got it's a. It's not ten, really the same. They're not even the same, really. I got ten percent more French fries today than my or. Like, what's the big deal? The ten percent square footage <clears throat> does not represent a ten percent price increase. Yeah, Steve, just say like, hey, put, put yeah, your mic up like, a little bit, please. Thank oh, you. Just yeah, say, you. yeah, uh, I, I we wanted a nicer house. It That's is a nicer house. Here. I've never said okay. it's not a nicer house. I've never okay. said that. And, it's a nicer. But house. you deflect big time. No. Don't let him do. By the way, by the way, JT, Courtney answering the phones. How was that? Yeah, I I, do. I know Courtney. Yeah, Courtney Marks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I assumed that, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to make too much of an assumption. Um, Yeah, my side piece, Courtney. It's my side piece, (laughs) piece Courtney. Yeah, no, she. (laughs) Well, I mean, who knows? I mean, yeah. Hang on, I think I got some more drops. New interns and things happen. She's uh, she's really classing me. Anonymity. She's really classing the place up, JT. Okay. Well, it's a low bar that we have set for the Pulp Empire. So, uh, Raiders are currently tied, I believe. Yeah, they I just tied it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commitment to excellence. Uh, JT, big debate. I just want to hear the motocross stuff. Big debate here tonight. 2022 Supercross. And th- honestly, I, I'd rather touch more on Hangtown because this is a Hangtown show, but because mm-hmm. we have next three months mm-hmm. to talk about Supercross. But we'll start tonight. Uh, uh, Nick from Australia brought this up. Who has more points, JT, in 2022 Supercross, Eli Tomac or Dylan Ferrandez? Uh, to d- I will the say day. Eli Tomac. Okay. All right. I said Tomac too. I said Ferrandez. Paul, you said I said Ferrandez really yeah. quick. I'm I'm still not <laughs> giving I'm not giving Eli enough credit for him attending every single race. Yeah. That's that's huge when it, obviously when we're talking about scoring more yeah. most points, but. I just do. I do think as long as Ferrandez goes, he shows up healthy. He's gonna. He's going right. to be pretty damn good. Right. But we didn't see the jump from Zacho that we thought. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, I mean, it's different. Like that. Zacho. Zacho. I don't want to. I don't want um, to. Uh, talk down Zacho's title in any way. In any way, his WW ride was phenomenal. Right. But it was a eight race series, nine, nine race yep. series, and um, yeah, there's some guys that were I, I don't know i just think okay dylan's title was very impressive right i agree uh, dylan's was great yeah the hangtown his hangtown was just epitome of his season never give up be super in shape and be super fast yep that's it mm-hmm. but uh, what was the difference like it wasn't like dylan had all this time to regroup and change all this stuff like it was i mean he was the same guy that he was at salt lake that he was apollo like maybe that same trend where supercross just doesn't come as easily it's just not the same dynamic. And I got to think he, he spent a lot of time preparing for Paula 1, right? Like, he, he rode off his Supercross season pretty early. Right. Like, I'm sure he was very ready for Paula. Right. And my, Which my, Osborne did too, right? Osborne pulled out a Supercross to – Right, to yeah. be ready for outdoors. So yeah. that's tough. Yeah, who's going to be ready for Supercross? And my Ferrandez pick, I, I put a lot of weight of it on Eli switching, switching bikes and having to sort of start over a little bit and – Ferranda staying where he is and building on what he's already got going. So, I, I mean, the Eli thing, that c- let's flip a coin, right? Does it go? That's a good question. And does it go, he gets a refresh, something new, I'm back with, you know, Ricky Gilmore, it's what I've been looking for. Or is it, man, I've been building and building and getting better on this Cowie for years and years, and now I'm trying to get used to this really different motorcycle. I, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like he's been better, though, the last year and a half Yeah. For yeah. Me. And, and now you know. Now he's gonna have two kids and a different bike switch, and there's a lot know, going I on there. Yeah, a lot of variables, and it seems like Dylan. Yeah, there's his, he, these next three years. He's fully gonna be committed. And then, like honestly, I think you can't you can't um, you can't put a past like I. I know this is 
you know, we'll get into this. I don't really want to get into the Supercross talk right now, but I don't think you can put it past, like, I think Sexton or AC could just catch fire. Sure. Second year, third year for Adam, right? That's when they take leaps. They got speed. Cooper, they got speed Coop, everywhere. Cooper Webb's pretty good at Supercross. No, no, no. I absolutely, I agree. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah, like just... we see the <coughs> phenoms. They get it normally. Figure it out. They figure it out somewhere along the line, and those guys are pretty damn fast. So uh, Still uh, yeah. no race wins yet, though. No race wins. Nope, nope. And it's hard to win a race and win a title all yes. in the same year. Yes. Uh, JT, d- did you think that uh, uh, Jet uh, was going to blow it maybe? I didn't because, you know, it, it was obviously touch and go. But when you look at the class and you look at how much better he is than most of the field, he would have had to have done something catastrophic to really let this thing get away. Um, I don't think he was even taking huge chances – uh, to get back up the field. He didn't look like he was really pushing overly hard. He's going really fast, but um, I didn't ever have a moment where I'm like, he's going to lose this. I mean, it was definitely much dicier than it should have been, but, man, the field is in both classes is so depleted right now. He was just kind of blowing through it without yeah. really having too much difficulty. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right about that. Um, It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, Supercross next year. He, I mean, he's going to be a title favorite, whatever coast he rides. For Him, sure. Jay Coop. I mean, I wonder how much they'll – how many games will we see for people keeping it away from Jet in coasts? Oh, I don't – I mean, there's, there's, I think you got to worry about Colt Nichols and um, the other guy that won a Supercross title. Who is that? Justin Cooper. Yeah, those two. <laughs> Christian Craig's no squatch either. Good. Yeah, yeah, Christian Craig. Right. I don't think you can – dodge guys I, I don't know we never yeah. had that talk at pro circuit when right. i was there i think you gotta send whoever is ready when it's time to go we'll get there we'll race him when it's we'll time. race him when it's time yeah yeah we'll <laughs> race rider d we'll get there we'll race him when it's time uh jt question for you from brandon here on three brandon welcome to the show what's your question for jason thomas from fly racing yeah um so jt you started in 96 right that was your first year if i'm correct kind of yeah i turned pro race some local pro stuff, but really 97 um, would have been my first Supercross. Ty Birdwell beat him in Moto 1 at Gainesville. Gotcha. So just kind of going back and watching some old races, and it just seems like kind of around that time you started racing that it just seemed like every single year the tracks were just getting progressively better and better, and it seemed really quick, like from just whether it was tough blocks being implemented, just the way the jumps were built. What was it like kind of in those early years of your career just coming into the season not knowing exactly how the tracks were going to be? Um, and I guess I can go to Steve, too. Like, how are your riders? Well, actually, by the, time JT, by the time JT raced, they were sort of semi-standard. Dirtworks was involved at that point. The guys before, J, like in the early 90s, mid-90s, that's when things were like, ah, I think this thing's built with a you know a straight takeoff and i hope this thing's 67 feet but it could be 80 feet this week like but jt by the time you got there they're a little more standardized yeah the tracks were um they were pretty normal but i think they were they were more technical back then and also the bikes were not near as good you know two strokes especially the 125s were just so much more difficult to get over these jumps uh but i think the biggest difference as far as um that stuff goes or, or the diff- biggest difference would be the tracks were so much ruddier back then. Uh, like the first East coast race, you know, literally this, you know, it sounds crazy, but I remember press day Atlanta, Jeremy McGrath rolling all three jumps of the triple because you could not even double the triple because it was so ruddy. Um, and you don't, you would never see something like that now. Yeah. That, that seems impossible. <laughs> but the dirt was so damn soft. Right? I mean, like, we were jumping yeah. out of a rut and then back into a rut and then out of a rut all the way around the racetrack. Yeah, think about Where that. Where were you practicing yeah. at uh, <laughs> early on, like during the week? Uh, so there was a, a Supercross practice track at uh, Motocross of Marion County, which we called Reddick, but um, there was a track there. Gotcha. Uh, and then I was, I was really lucky in my second year, uh, Tim Ferry built a Supercross track. Well, I should st- take one step back. I rode with Brian Swink at his Supercross track in Ocala some as well. And then, uh, okay. yeah, Timmy built a Supercross track, and he he needed someone to practice with quite a bit. And, uh, we yeah, we just built a friendship, and, and I spent a lot of time at his track over the next, you know, what? six, seven, eight years. JT, who was the kid from BSY, uh, not BSY, the 
Yamaha kid. Uh, what's his? Mackle, uh, the Florida kid. Hatton. Darren McElhatton? McElhatton. Oh, yeah, he was yeah, out there too, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he was out there a lot with you guys too. So yeah. Darren, Darren and I were like best friends growing up, racing yeah. together. And then... Do uh, you, you remember him? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Never heard that so name before. Hmm. Yeah. Tom McElhatton was Darren's dad, was really good friends with Dave Dye. And then that was the connection to Timmy. And so, yeah, there was like this six, de- you know, six degrees yeah. of separation with Kevin Bacon for me to get involved there. JT, was Reddick really gnarly, Supercross? Was it, it was, but it was, uh, you know, it was a lot different than the racetrack. Um, it had this triple that was just insanely big. Um, the whoops were actually really tough, and it, but it was really small and really tight. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, comparatively, I mean, I, I didn't have anything else, so it was it was great at the time. Well, I say um, that. But yeah. I, I say but, that because I remember rolling over there on, I don't know if I was on a 125 yet or if I was still on an 80, and I remember rolling over it, and I'm like, dude, I can't. There I can't do no this. way I'm going to ride this track. Yeah. This it thing gnarly. is gnarly. Yeah, it was gnarly. Um, yeah. It yeah, wasn't it was as really gnarly. tough, which I think helped. I think okay. it helped prepare me. Um, it was just much more technical than a race. I went to swings too, though, and that was no joke. <laughs> no, not at all. Swings was in between yeah, trees. Imagine that swings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. probably built well, with you one have to think bobcat. Swink. Swink was incredibly technically gifted, uh, so he made the track brutally hard. Uh, like he he wanted to you know constantly challenge himself. He was very similar ch- to Chad in that way, where they would just make the track really, really hard. So when they got to the race, it, it seemed super easy. Um, but I, I always looked at it as kind of scary to do that. Like, man, you're taking a lot of risks uh, yeah. during the week. But I think their their skill level was just so high that they, they didn't really feel like they were taking any risks. I remember there was a jump at Swings where you had to duck your head because there was a tree limb. And if you jumped the triple, you had to duck your head. or I, I forget what it was. Yeah, but that, was on the, that was on the motocross track. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, Brandon, what else? Um, so I guess sticking on the two stroke topic, I've always wondered, you know, back in the nineties, or I guess any time in the two strokes, what fuel were you running? Cause I just have this fond memory of the smell of going to supercross races. Um, I've just always wondered what fuel hmm. that was that you guys yeah, were running. Uh, C12 was, C12? E- C12 was the easy stuff, but then there was MRX01 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was something. all that MRX-02. stuff. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff that we, C12 was like the private. Ultimate 2 was, I think yeah. it was illegal at the pro level. But was it? You too, yeah. Yeah, I think C12 for the most part would be the privateer choice, the and the factories had better stuff. What was the big thing? It couldn't be leaded? Was that the? That, that was, was like later, later on. on. But yeah. then that was like the big like yeah. two-stroke sock. We can't yeah. get these jetted right. Cause right. Well, certain teams couldn't, like Yamaha. But <laughs> well, they always were started off so rich, and they would just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because on the dyno, when you got that fuel hot, it produced a little more horsepower, so we went with that. And, and the other like factor- shit. And the other factories that. were like, we don't, we know, we see that it is better power, but we don't like that because it fouls plugs. And it runs like shit. And it runs like shit until yeah. you get it super warm. Yeah. So yeah, I, remember, I remember seeing people start them up, like, just forever, yeah. just <laughs> blowing smoke out. Yeah, like. yeah, that was us. Yeah. Mm. That was our team, Yamaha. <laughs> um, all right, Brandon. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks All right, for the call. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, you know what? This gentleman's been on hold for an hour and twenty six minutes, and he has an idea for the MXDN. And I let's hope this is good, right? AJ, what's up, man? What's going on? What's your what's your what's your idea for the motocross nations? So I watched that. Uh, what is it? The mini majors thing. Um. I don't know and what they that did is. like that father. I don't know what that is. I don't know. They did oh, that it, was, uh, yeah. it was that Monster yeah, Mountain. Yeah, that was a swap moto thing. Okay. Yeah. So they did that. Uh, like the like the whoever like the kid was right, and then the dad would jump on the bike. Now, not in that sense because that's just stupid. But um, if so, there's what there's MX one. Love MX2, to see and Frank MX3. and JT in some sort of <laughs> race. <laughs> <laughs> Frank no. is a Loretta no. Lynn's. Frank's a Loretta <laughs> Lynn's champion, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Heck yeah. No. Right. So, so there's MX1, MX2, and MX3. Like, instead of doing, like, um, you have MX1 versus MX2, then MX2 and MX3. Yep. How about, I don't know if this is even possible or if they would even consider this, but, like, so just suppose MX1 is just all MX1 guys. They go. They do four laps. Once, I'm going to say, like, USA crosses, then MX2 will go. They, then they do four laps. Then MX3, and then you just oh, do like a two motor format. No, this wasn't this worth is, the. This is this isn't this isn't a good idea, AJ. No, no. JT, I I don't I don't think I can try after this. You what? 
I don't think I would sign up for that. <laughs> like well, a team race, like the Elsinore Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You switch yeah. like a switch a scrunchie on your wrist or something. That mm. or oh, okay, or okay. So I have an idea for Supercross too. But okay, I can't oh, wait boy. for this one. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. So just change the point system, right? Because I had did it. I think I did this whole thing when uh, it was. Uh, I think it was what Craig and happened? Cooper. Uh huh. Yeah, Craig and Cooper, when they were in ice class, Craig would have won the championship because it was Olympic style points instead of this whole 25. Uh, okay. Yeah. But don't you feel like the winner should get a bit more of a break than one point more? Well, then you would have to be in the negative. But then that, no, but that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, the 25 to yeah. 22. Right. So when you For win now, you get three point. extra points because you're a winner because you deserve it. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, if it's first place, then they still get one, but then that second place gets That's three, four. Oh, three, four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, JT, Olympic style scoring. What are we doing? I think we're good. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think we need any change. <laughs> Anthony, I can't. Damn. Believe, I can't All believe right, you. JT. I can't. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe you waited on hold to, to tell us these. No, two we're, I, no I, it's, I it's cool. I don't like change just for the sake of change. That's all. You don't think it will create better racing? I don't know, man. I think we've had some pretty damn good racing lately. Like, I don't know. I I, right. I think you're going to get anything you try to do, stuff like that. The teams are just going to be like, uh, no. How about no? Yeah. Like, they really, they hate change way more than I do. And and I think they're going to sort of just work out how they work out, right? Like, I think for uh, you change the point system, you know, the, maybe the the 450 championship this summer is still probably wrapped up around early, right? Like, right. It, whether it's Olympics going or not. and. The 250 class still comes down to the last moto. Maybe Justin Cooper oh. has an advantage over Jed or something, vice versa. But like, right. it all sort of um, evens out. I listen, think, a AJ, we gotta go. But I'm it's gonna, cool, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm gonna give you. No, listen, to I, I am gonna work, give you I don't something. Work until like six o'clock anyway. I know, but I'm gonna so give what? you something. I'm gonna give you a t-shirt. You give me so much stuff. I, I tr tr trust me. I don't need any. Like, I I appreciate the offer, but I have like okay. I have like two two bags. I have a shirt. Okay. You. Yeah, it's right. cool. Fair enough, but... Appreciate it. Thanks for calling. No problem. Is now Thank dumber you. for having listened to it. Oh, I, come on. That, that was not me. Was that, that was Courtney? Courtney. That was Courtney. That was Courtney. She's unbelievable Brutal. tonight. She's Tough really, She's really, ruthless. really, really rough tonight. Um, hey, JT, so we were discussing earlier your generational comment and the back and forth on that. Mm -hmm. But, Paul... Oh, sorry. I got third. Paul. Mike on? Paul? Yep. Tell JT about the rider that we were comparing to. Oh, I just. To. It was. Maybe Dean Wilson was generational also at the end of his 250 career. Dean won the title with more points than Jet. Dean won more. Uh, got more overall wins, did Mo he? Get? No. Okay. No. More moto wins for more sure. More moto wins? More podiums. And, and, and yep. JT, obviously injuries affected Dino a lot. But again, uh, you know, no 450 wins for Dean Wilson. Yeah, I. I think that their 250 resumes are pretty similar. Um, but I don't know. When I watch Jed, it's, it's different to me. Something about the level of effortlessness, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to use it anyway. Just It just looks different to me with Jed. Um, and Dean was great, and Dean has had a fantastic career overall. Um, but I, I truly believe it's going to go differently for Jed than it did for Dean. Uh, okay. All and right. that's fair. Yeah, that yeah, can yeah, totally happen. Yeah, I'm would, just drawing yeah, a right, parallel. Just, I, I don't want to say that he's not generational if, either because he's damn good for machine, how young he is. After Dean Wilson's national championship, we got a time machine and we went back and we're like, what's this kid's future? That's 20, all I'm saying is, is at, at the end of he, 2011. He's tall, you're yeah. right? So he's good on a four, like he's right. built for 450. He's uh, uh, just coming off 22 out of 24 motos on the podium. He's on a pro circuit team. Like, what's this kid's future? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, all right. Before we let you go, JT, Jet Lawrence coming up here next on the show. Uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about Malcolm Stewart. So, I'm a little. We, we've known this is coming for a long time, but now it's official announced. Uh, call me surprised that Mo first of all, I'm really glad that Mookie signed a two-year deal because I I think switching bikes and teams every year mm -hmm. isn't good. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I'm very surprised that Mookie's doing the Alden Baker thing and he's doing outdoors. I really thought, you know, look, Roger Larson. He's never been a fan of outdoors, and he's this guy at seven that you know guides Mookie's career. Never been a fan of outdoors or anything, so I'm surprised Mookie's doing this. But good for him. But to me, I don't. I wouldn't want Roger Larson making career decisions about which series I'm going to ride. 
Okay. I, 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 that's, I mean, he's a nice guy. Nothing wrong with him. I just, yeah. for me, I, I, I don't think that your career path should be dictated by him. Like, if you get this ride and you get this opportunity by Husky, you should take it. Yeah. Are you surprised Husky I mean, would want him for, for, for that? Is anybody I don't s- think so. He's proven that he can do really well. Okay. So, I, mean, I, 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 I don't think it's ever been a, a, a skill or anything. Like, he's done really well. Most of every time he's ever raced an outdoor series, he's done really well. And can you honestly say that you – believe it hasn't held teams back from hiring him in the past because i i would oh yeah it, it weighs uh, on it i a think little be- bit. between the gear and the outdoors absolutely mookie's cost yeah. himself rides for sure. for sure right so that that's and i and i like roger he's uh, no problem personally i just think at times it's made things difficult for other teams with him i've said this and i and i've told roger this dude you're managing mookie Two years in a row, he had no ride at Anaheim 1. He did not race Anaheim 1 because you guys weren't ready or he didn't know what he was doing or whatever. That's not like a con- conductive business for, for a rider. Well, that's, I mean, you're, make, you're making my point for me. Right. But I, I would say that. Yeah. I would say, Roger, look, what is yeah. going on? And then he told me one of his comebacks was, wow, no, man, when he comes in, he's news. He's news. It's, it doesn't he's get buried. Too talented and I'm like, he just lost 25 going. points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's far too talented for that. Like, he should be yeah. as marketable as he is as charismatic as he is, as fast as he is, it shouldn't even be a question of whether he has a ride or not. Do you guys think he struggles outdoors a little bit? Like just that much time? I mean, we're talking what? Four years? Five years? What are we talking? Yeah. I yeah, mean, I what do you, when you say struggle, what, what's, what position is that? Worse than Supercross? Joey Savacci outdoors? I, I think what, Joey's I don't With everybody Joey's. healthy, Joey was a, a 9, 10, 8, 9 guy. I think yeah. he. I think he's significantly better than what Joey was this year. Really, outdoors. Wow. I do. Well, Chuck, I do. those are fighting words for Chuck. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I'm there. Yeah. It's... I mean, so you don't think that Malcolm would have beat Cody Shock? Um, I think Joey beat I Cody don't know. Shock most of the time, right? Not. No. No. Not the last few rounds. I feel like Joey's mailing it in at that point, but oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's part of racing. <laughs> like that's. Several rounds. I mean, Joey missed. Uh, Joey was in, eighth in points, and Cody was fourteenth. I feel like Joey beat Chuck most of the time. I did not know you were a Joey defender, uh, oh. but anyway. Oh, he's oh, oh, Charles is Joey Nation. But yeah. do you do you think that Joey had a great outdoor series? No, for what he's capable of, no. But I think really, I, I think, think he did what he can do. Like, no, I think um, I don't think Mookie jumps into outdoors next year and is better than that. I don't. I don't think I, Mookie uh, would be better than Joey Outdoors. I don't. I think. I think Malcolm racing twelve rounds would have been better than eighth in the series in this class. The way it was, I, I firmly believe that. Do you put him around Christian then, sort of the fourth, fifth guy? Is that what you think, JT? Well, I think. I think That's he fair. just would have done similarly to how he did in Supercross. He was fit. He was fast. Uh, he would run anywhere from five to eight most of the time in a really deep field. I don't. I haven't seen where he just sucks outdoors ever. I mean, he was getting. You know, podium motos years ago. Like, I, yeah, I don't but see, I know. But don't how many like races has Joey won outdoors? Not big bike, but I mean, I'm, I'm talking about 450s. Yeah, about the, the, the on, men, the men many, class. How many 450 motos does Malcolm have outside? Not a lot. And you got a third Seven? in one of them. Yeah, like, if only Mark's had a computer in front of him. I, I don't know. Mark's For me, busy. I, yeah. I was not incredibly impressed by Joey this summer. I'll just say that. Yeah, me either, I think. Um, I just wonder, like, I okay, look, if you had told me Mookie's more talented than Joey. And I say he, okay. I agree. Yep. But four years off outdoors, I don't think you necessarily can just come in and – I mean, we just talked about Coop, who's a national champion and can't seem to find it outdoors in the big bike class. Now we're talking about a guy that took four years off outdoors. Can he find I it? Have a, I have a feeling that Alden is going to have him in shape. That's just my guess. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have the uh, Alden Baker battle on the phone right now between Paul and JT. What am I going to battle? About? You are an anti Baker factory guy. I wouldn't say I'm anti. What are you? I am a believer in that. There's different strokes for different folks. Besides twirling that microphone cord. Oh, I'm sorry. Hitting the cord. Um, I'm a believer in that. Not one program works for everybody on the starting gate. I'm a firm believer in that. But <coughs> true or false, you are a little bit of an Alden Baker and his overrated guy. Uh. <sighs> I just think there's not any oh, wiggle. Charles. There's not. There to me. Yeah. To me. To me, the job should be to get the best out of the athlete, out of and, the person. And that's not the same by and that's, the same thing for every And that's guys. not the same, okay? And yeah. Like, I think he's – and, again, I'm speculating, but I think he applies 
what has worked in the past to everybody, and mm-hmm. I don't believe in that. Okay, in that's my per- opinion. No, you're perfectly fine. <clears throat> that's what we do. We give our opinion on the show, and I think JT's in the boat of like. You can't the, argue with his results and his JT, resume. I JT totally did, understand yeah, right, that. Right, right. I totally get that. JT I totally will get tell you I'm to just p- saying that I think. JT did, will tell you to look at the mantle. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. No, I get that's, <laughs> right, that's, right. that's That's the only argument he needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But right. um, but like I said, yeah, I just think – I just I, – I believe, you know, I, I, I relate it to team managers. I think a team manager is what is a guy – is a, is a manager that – creates a good atmosphere for every every employee and is getting the best results for every single rider not getting one rider to win the championship but getting every rider to the, do the best whatever, that's a, whatever that is yeah, yeah if yeah. that guy is a 10th place guy and you turn him into a fifth place guy you're a good team manager right. if he's a third and he's a winner yep. and he's if he's a winner and he wins again that's a good team manager but s- not just that one a guy that says you know that oh we got the championship done we, but i understand that too right that's also the team manager's job is to win the championship yeah. but to me it's 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 being able to pivot and get the best out of each individual person because everyone's different. I'm surprised that Z- uh, Rockstar is going from – well, I guess they didn't know about Zacco, right? We don't think Zacco's racing. Maybe he might now. There's a chance apparently. But they're going from Jason Anderson to Malcolm who didn't race outdoors for four years, you know, and, and, and no other guy. Like that's a step down yeah, for them. A guy that's yeah, won the Supercross Like, title. okay, if you were Mr. Rockstar Husky, Charles, <laughs> what? Who is that? <laughs> there is there is no one. I know. I just giggled at it. Yeah, yeah. His name's yeah. Mr. Rockstar Husky. It's his first name's Rockstar. Last name <laughs> Husky. Okay. Would you sign Malcolm to a two year indoors and out deal? I would. You but would. not not oh. in the context of replacing Jason Anderson. Right. If that makes sense. Right. JT, would you but I don't think they had a choice, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, who would Yeah. You're right. I just don't Who else do they go get? Okay, you're gonna laugh. okay. Could you go after J B? What? For Supercross? Well, no, go after Malcolm. Okay. Why would you do go that? Go after both. Why would you do that? I don't know. You you think JB's better than Malcolm indoors? Uh, are they going to finish with the most amount of points? Who's going to beat who's in the points next year? Malcolm. Okay. Are you sure of that? Cause JB Did you already look up something that no, I did? No, 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 no. But uh, if you want JB wanna, is hurt this year a lot. Yeah, you can't get this year. JB got hurt, so like whatever. But, like injuries no, happen. I mean, did Malcolm, Malcolm get like fifth in the series? JB, yeah, 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 what place yeah, did yeah. he get? But he got uh, sixth. There you go. Uh, but okay, but JB would have gotten. What do you mean would have? No, I'm saying uh, JB has his sixth or seventh on the series probably just a couple years ago. Okay, he just did better. <laughs> what do you mean? I, 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 those I can't. I don't think I. I can't. I can't have a conversation with you comparing those two. Really? No, absolutely not. JB is thirty, however many I, years I, old. I'm aware. And when he before he got hurt, he had landed on a podium. Guess where Malcolm hadn't been on a podium at that point. Okay. How many 450 Supercross podiums does Malcolm have in his career? One or one? two? One. One. I think it was like Salt yeah. Lake City something, right? No, oh, one of the Salt Lakes, and everybody's over it. No, I. I don't know. Uh, JT, help me out here. Where are you at on this? JB versus Malcolm. I think Mookie has. Mookie's pretty unique. Um, he has his own fan base. He has his brother's uh, previous career behind him. I don't know. I think uh, I think Mookie offers a lot to teams and sponsors that other riders just don't. And very I high, agree. very I high agree. ceiling too. I agree. There's that yeah. what if with Mookie that you yep. kind of. Oh as, yeah. As much as people want to say hiring somebody or paying somebody or sponsoring somebody is purely results based, it's not. Not anymore. No, it yeah, is yeah, not. Absolutely, it not. absolutely it's no, not. But, but JB's got a fault. He's the Unless only guy. Everyone loves Eli Oh, I love yeah, 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 JB. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, right. no, I get that. But I think if you're running a team, you have to sponsor. Or you, have to, you have to hire Mookie over him. I think it's also very challenging for an OEM to sink a bunch of money into a rider knowing this is the end. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it could. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no sort of climbing up for a ceiling. You can't give him a two-year no, you, deal. Right. Yeah. You, the investment there, you know it's a short-term. Yeah. There's no going to, you know, right. it's, yeah. it's challenging, I think, on that end. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch Malcolm ride outdoors for sure. Sure. And, 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 and you know what? And I think a uh, second year on the bike will be even better because he'll know the team and the bike. And, you well, know, they he's, get he's a new ju- bike this year, right? He's jumped from an MCR bike to uh, uh, um, help me out, a JGR bike to a MCR bike to a Yamaha to a – what am I missing? I don't know. He's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm missing a, a team. Of, he, didn't he have his own little his own seven bike I for a while know. or something? Yeah. Muck off? Factory Honda? No, he didn't no, do Muck off. Muck off. Oh, I was talking about Braden. Oh, no, Sorry. we're talking about uh, Mookie. Mookie. Mookie's oh. just jumped brands and bikes and teams. Suzuki yeah, he City. has been changing oh. a lot. Yeah. Suzuki City. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'm not going far that far back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, all right, anything else for Jason Thomas, everybody? Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Go through Motorsport Banner on pulpamex.com or pulpamexshow.com for that. And looks like the Ravens are going to kick a field goal here late in the game and win. So thanks a lot, Raiders, for once again, uh, you know, losing. I don't know. Oh, it ain't over yet. Um, anything else, JT? Nope. I leave for uh, Italy in about 36 hours. And uh, yeah. Yep. European. What, why are you Why are you shaking continue. your head? Just because he's always on the go. Jeez, I I want to I want to be at home. <laughs> he doesn't have a chick. All he does is work and travel. I get it. That's it. I get it. But right. Have fun, JT. Um, Antonio <laughs> Antonio Caroli retiring too. Uh, Going to be missed, man. Good good dude. Good champion. All timer. You know, nine titles. Maybe ten. It ain't over yet. Come on. What do you mean, come on? What about your guy, Bullet? What about him? I can't be a friend, a, a fan of Caroli. You think it's totally, completely out of the realm that he can't win the title? No, nah, he can't. I disagree. Uh, I, you got to disagree. against Geyser and, he, Geyser and Hurts. Geyser, Fabra. He's Fabra, like 20-something points out of the lead. Fabra's really good this year, too. Fabra's back. Yeah, no shit. You know, like uh, the Bullet. I get that. You know I'm a Jeffrey the fan. The Bullet's coming. No, I know, but the Bullet is coming. He just won. Did you watch Tony in Turkey? He was catching everybody. Was he? I yeah. Didn't, I didn't watch the last one. Everybody. Oh, I didn't watch the last one. The whole first moto, he was like inching on, on the best. But he didn't guys. win. One more lap he wins. Oh, okay. Yeah, one more lap right, he yeah. passes everybody in the He field still field. passed two guys in the last lap. Okay. He went from fourth to second. Okay, but but again, as JT has said, your own words, JT, I'm going to use you against you here. Oh, I did this to Phil. Oh, you did use it. <coughs> you did this. You did this to <laughs> Phil. You did. I'm going to use your own words, JT, like with JB and these guys, like you can't bring that every single race when you're older. If all the stars align, you can bring it and you can be good and you yep. can reach back in, but it's hard to do it moto after moto. It's tough. He's done it so far. He's I been really disagree. good this year. Imagine he don't wash the front in Russia. I too. hope Jeffrey Hurlings <laughs> listens to this and both of you and JT <laughs> are kicked out of the Bullet Fan Club. No. I, no, I, I, we won't. No. I drive that I bandwagon. I honestly... I mean, this is the greatest thing about this series right now is you have four or five guys that can win. Hurlings is fifth in the series or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe he moved into fourth after last weekend. But, I mean, it's crazy how close this championship is. And we're not even talking about Prado yet. Yep. Yeah. And he's right Prado in the was mix my too. pick. So if he wins, I'm going to be pulling that audio from our preview show, uh, JT. So Prado was my pick. I, I, I thought Gumby would crash more. There's still time. Yeah. There is still time. He's – the other guys are. He's been really. He's been really weird in the first motos. Second motos, he's been really great. The first motos have been strange. I, I don't know what's going on there. The, the best kicker in the league just kicked a forty-seven yarder. He is amazing. Yep. Caroli's third in points okay. with three twenty-six. Uh huh. The leader Geyser has three fifty-five. Listen, I want Caroli to win. Third, I love so Antonio. I was. I was going to GPS and talking to Caroli before you guys even knew who he was. All right. Oh. <laughs> You, so, we knew. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, you guys okay. didn't even know who he was. Yeah. No, you did. Okay. Didn't know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so I have a flag signed by Antonio to me. No, a flag. What do you mean yeah, a, a flag? A flag. He signed. I've seen it. He used to be in the studio. Yeah, it was in the. How was in the dare studio. you not? S are you not a fan or something? I'm why wouldn't you? I why just, wouldn't you hang that up? I need to hang it up. I will hang it up. He's a great guy. I'm going to call Tony and champion. say that you have didn't even hang that up in your house. Just settle down. It'll get hung when it's time. It'll get hung when it's time. I mean, look how, how many rounds are left. Oh, the bullets, oh, only, there's, there's bullets eight, only five behind. There's eight million rounds. Tony. Nine rounds left still. They're going to do like four of them. So. Okay, so the bullet. No, no, these, these are all the triple yeah, headers and double they're headers. Doing they're doing all, the they're doing oh, all yeah. nine. They're, all nine. The bullets, they're five back? Eight. No. The, so of Crowley? Yes. Yeah. That's not Okay. Really. That's not enough. Febra is in front of Crowley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm, I, I, I want Crowley to win, but the bullet is coming. Are you admitting that? The bullet is the f fastest man on the planet right now. Well, he's only is got that. What you're admitting? <laughs> no. Yeah, but uh, he sounds like it. There's a lot more, a lot of motos left for him Geyser to get hurt riding the super mini. Geyser or looks solid. He's not Gumby Geyser so far. Geyser staying. Fever looks better than ever. Fever does look really good. Right. So I'm just saying. God, they're really tight from second to. Yes. Six. Everybody should right. switch their JT, focus. JT, are you going? And the TV coverage is great. JT, by is the this way. A, is this a three rounder? No. 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 It's, uh, okay. Just one race. Okay. I am doing the three Trentino rounds, so at the end of October. You're oh committing boy. now. You're in. I, I got the go-ahead today. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Pressure's on now. I oh, boy. JT was can really get, pressuring me to go to these. Can you get? Well, it was your idea. Paul. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know. I want to go to Trentino. I, did, I didn't plan on going to three of them. Paul, can, JT, can you get him something from the bullet, like a poster or a jersey <laughs> or anything from the bullet? Sounds Goggles? Gay. Anything? 
I don't. I don't. Uh, I, that's I don't, not I don't the think type I've of. I've ever talked to the bullet. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't you just I admire don't. from far. I just talk and get them. Get a bar pad, maybe. Yeah, I could probably get one of those. But <laughs> <laughs> they did use my commentary in that show that they do, the Red Bull show. That was pretty cool. That was cool. Red Bull show. Yeah. The bullet that I his every own, single oh, week, every single his, time an episode doc. comes his, his out, I text Steve because yeah. I know it bothers him a little it bit. I've never matter. watched one. <laughs> yeah, I've never yeah. watched one. <laughs> Listen, you just yeah, just watch. You just jerk off while watching the fucking bullet <laughs> documentary. I, I don't know what to say. I, I yeah, but I mean that's the same with me watching Troll Train. So I guess I so. love beating my meat. Yeah. Mm. All right, JT. You, you were comparing Troll Train and, and <laughs> Jeffrey Hurling. How, how by right <laughs> by how many seconds would have Hurlings of one Hangtown? By how many seconds? Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, here Brandis, here Brandis go. owns him. Every time Hurlings got beat, they kicked the guy out of the class. Hey, Searle, oh get out. Ferrandis, get out. You're, you're right, because he was generational. You're, you're beating him. He was you're, a generational talent. They kept you're lowering right. the age limit so that Jeffrey could stay in there. Like, like, like uh, Pitt Pit would just be peeling off the hundreds to, to Giuseppe. Lower the age limit, please. Hurlings is, Searle, Searle, Searle is fast. Yeah, he, doesn't, is fast. he doesn't look good at all now. Like, he, right. he really never materialized. Didn't pan out. Hey, look. What? The he Raiders are kicking a field goal to win. Do you think he's going to make a 55-yarder? Yeah, he just did. TV the head of ours. Oh my God! Boom. He made it. The, the Raiders won. No, that's a tie. That's a tie game. Do we know oh, what Russell the, Wilson? The, Ra- the TV was, was our TV was behind yours, JT. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for ruining that for us. <laughs> All right, we got to we got to go. Flyracing.com. Jet Lawrence coming right up. Fifty-five yarder to tie it. Uh, commitment to excellence. All right, thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right. Is that the Raiders saying commitment to excellence? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Vertex Pistons. Uh, Paul, did you know that uh, every stock, uh, every two-stroke KTM and Husqvarna and Gas Gas comes uh, stock with a Vertex engine from the factory? The engine. With the, the whole Vertex engine. The whole engine. engine. I didn't know that. No. I had no idea. I had no idea Vertex made engines. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm just Incredible. rattled because of a 55-yarder. <laughs> like, that guy doesn't make 55-yarders, generally just speaking. Did. Right. Uh, 65 years ago, Vertex was founded in a small workshop in northern Italy. Today, they're an OEM supplier to KTM, Husqvarna, and more exotic brands like Beta and TM. Sales at PivotalWorks.com. Charles, if you need a piston. Sales Why at PivotalWorks.com. Sales at um, Vertex.com. V- sales at PivotalWorks.com. Okay. It's the same, same company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, full range of two-stroke and four-stroke pistons, mm. and uh, they got all of we, them. We learned what a GP piston was we on did. one of my visits oh, here. Oh, yeah. Was that you Less and James? Or when something. James called in? Yeah. I don't remember, actually. But, yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, I think it was a uh, less Lower compression. Lower compression piston. More top end. Yep. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so thanks to uh, the guys at Vertex Pistons, of course, sales at pivotworks.com to save with them. And uh, we're going to get into our next guest here on the show. He's the new 2021 250 motocross champion, and uh, it's a privilege and honor to have him on from Honda. It's Jet Lawrence. What's up, mate? How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. How about yourself? We're good, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's it, what's it been like being a national champion? Are, are you just like thinking how cool that is? Are you, are you, are you, what, no, I, well, it hasn't really quite sunk in because Lucas, Hunter, and my uh, and the rest of the team are still, still giving me crap about normal life. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. So you're just still Jetson. You're just the Jetson kid, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. What are you going to buy with your bonus money? Do you have anything planned? Um, well, the main, main part is, uh, is a house. So nothing, nothing fancy. Just a yeah. pop the house, and I, I made a bet with uh, my dad if I did get it, maybe with my bonus money from the podiums, I could, uh, I could spend it on a car or something. But um, yeah, we don't know what car quite yet, but but well, the main purchase would be a house probably. Okay, well that's good. I think you've earned it. Let's let the market go down a little bit. Let's let the market go down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not a good time to buy right now, Jetson. But you know, I mean, I don't. Yeah. Mertz has all that lined up. Yeah, we're right. still trying to decide if we should either pay it today or like keep renting and maybe buy buy next year or something when it's a little cheaper. Because especially in Florida, stock market is stupid. Uh, so how much percent does Mertz get for this title? Like we we know he was you know he's a big guy behind the scenes with the Jet Zone and the donuts and. And, and everything else, what what are we giving Mertz here, like, as far as percent for this title, like, the credit, the credit that Mertz gets? I actually, I actually don't know, but we have a thing that whatever fat percentage Dazzy is, yep. that's what his percentage is. Okay. The last time, 24%, so oh, okay. it's not looking good. Right, so Dazzy's 24%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 24% yeah. Fat, so that's not good for, um, for me, right? Jet, we have to talk about this gate pick. We, we mm-hmm. just talked about it for 30 minutes earlier this show. We yeah. have to talk about this. So, Justin Cooper gets first pick. He goes uh, right in the spot. And Levi Kitchen is uh, fifth pick. And he goes in the spot. 
and yet you see the two star bikes and you go right in the middle. Very ballsy. Yeah, why not, mate? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Okay, I, see. I, problem really, like it's a. Uh, I mean, if you get a bad start, tuck in behind Cooper. If you get a good start, put your elbows up and fight for it. So it's a. Uh, it was a plan B. Don't <laughs> worry, I wasn't worried at all. Plus, I know Levi; he's not really going to do no any dirty to me. Right. Uh, so I wasn't worried, mate. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Paul, do you have a do you confident? Have- I yeah I, I I admire his confidence. He wasn't worried. I <laughs> I was worried for you. I if I was Justin Cooper though, I'd be like ooh, yeah. an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, he didn't uh, do that. Hey Jet, you're you're a young kid. You you you're one of the fastest riders in the world and everything else. But uh, you had to have been feeling a little bit of pressure there, right? Like you did not. You know, you just come off four straight, straight motos. Uh, how much were you in your head? How much were you thinking? Like oh shit, like I gotta get going. Like I gotta get a flow here. I gotta figure things out. Were you? Were you getting a little stressed out there? No, I was. I wasn't too stressed. I would the first one. I, I wasn't stressed out when I crashed. I was just like, "Dude, are you serious, mate? You're just making it harder for yourself." <laughs> right, so right. I wasn't so stressed out. I knew like, I knew wherever I was on the track, I, I knew I could get inside top ten, which is what I need to do uh-huh. first moto. Yep. And uh, and yeah, I I wasn't really doubtful or, or worrying at all, to be honest. Okay. All right. Well, I was sure worried for you, Jetson. You know, I just want to let you know that. Yeah, I have other people to worry for me. Okay. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Uh, Jet Lawrence on the Pulp Mech Show brought to you by the folks at VertexPistons.com. So, Jet, uh, the, the the break comes in Washugal, two weeks off. Uh, uh, you come back out. Your starts immediately get better. You're riding better than ever. You rip off the four moto wins. Like, what happened in that break? Did you guys do? Did you find something? Did you do some testing? What happened there? Because there's no doubt you were in a bit of a, I don't even know if it's a slump, but you weren't quite as good as you'd been. Uh, what happened in that break? Anything? Um, I think I, I just, it was just a good little reset, to be honest. Yep. I had a, just that little break I just, that I needed just away from it, from kind of racing a bit. Just a nice little reset to come back and, and do that. Obviously, it was really, really nice, but I think this. Just a really nice reset. A little three, what was it, two weeks? Yeah. So nothing on the bike for starts or anything? Like you didn't find anything? You guys didn't do anything? I mean, we we changed our gate prep, but besides that, really, we kind of uh, stuck with the same, like, uh, yep. start tech, you'd say. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, that was uh, that was awesome, man, when you come out of that break. 702-586-PULP, you got a question for Jet Lawrence. Give us a call. He, we got him on the line for a little bit here. Um, yeah, the gate choice was a big uh, ch- uh, s- a source of debate here. But also, Jet, uh, didn't look like a fun track to ride. Didn't look like the easiest track to get a flow going. No, it was a, it was a very difficult track. It had a uh, – from uh, when I rode amateurs there, I remember it was a really hard track to try and find a flow. And when you didn't have a flow, it was a nightmare out there. And um, But uh, I, I liked it. It was I had a few sketchy spots. It would have been nice to add a little more moisture into it. But mm-hmm. – um, I thought it was fun. All right. Uh, we've got a call from Evan here. Evan, what's up? What's your question for Jet Lawrence? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for taking my call, Jet. Uh, awesome weekend. My first uh, first time to Hangtown. First time seeing you ride. Nice. Uh, my question for you was pretty cool. You showing up with black gear. However, what's your thoughts on your brother Hunter showing up with the best gear set of the weekend? I. I mean, I can't be mad. It's a, definitely a, a sick set of gear, and and uh, I didn't mind it. It's, a, it's, I think getting custom gear or, or not custom gear doesn't really change much for me. And but uh, you know, you gotta let Hunter have his limelight every now and then. So <laughs> he he uh, he was mad because he put it that he had the best lit kit of the weekend, and I was like, I don't know, like on social. And then he found me after the race, and he's like, What are you talking about? This was the nicest kit out there. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I need to look through all the kits. Like you just you can't self proclaim your kit as the the most lit. Uh, I mean that gear you probably can actually. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I mean it. There was a good set of gear. I can't lie. I mean I think. Anyone would have been pumped to run that gear. Um, I do have to say, though, uh, Evan, and you'll agree with me, A-Stars all season long, both of you got they, – they really crushed it. I don't know if it's the red bike. Like, I don't look at Eli's stuff and ever think that A-Stars stuff is great. I don't know, but you guys either – any one of you guys? No. What? Like Eli's gear. 
I'm actually the other way. Like I, I never care much for Eli's gear, to be honest with you. But both the Lawrence brother stuff look. But look both strong. Lawrence, I don't yeah. know if it's the red bike. I don't know if the riding styles. I don't know what it is. Enzo Ferrari said, "Tell a kid to paint a picture of a car, and he'd always paint it red." Okay. That's why you make Ferraris red, apparently. And okay. red, oh, I'm sure. 100% goggle sales red red is awesome. Yeah. I know gear sales red is awesome. Right, right. That's just the way it is. Uh, good. Uh, so red. Evan, thanks for calling, man. Thank you. Hey, appreciate it, guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, congrats on the uh, on the win, Jet. Thanks, mate. Uh, all right, we also have uh, RJ on two. RJ, what's up, man? How are you? What's going on, Steve? Hey, it's RJ Wageman. What's happening, buddy? <laughs> hey, I just was calling. I had a question for Jet. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I think I know what this is, but go ahead. I know you do. What up, Jet? Hey, this is RJ Wageman. First off, congrats on the championship, man. That was awesome. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, question regarding you taking a single-digit number. Are you going to go for it? We're going to drop that one and, and uh, go for the number eight? I think uh, probably not. I mean, uh, this eight, the 18 number has a lot more meaning to me now, obviously. Uh, we were talking about it literally today about what we should do, but I think um, I'm probably going to stay with 18. This has more meaning to it. I won my first title with it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I did it when I was 18, and uh, most people know me for the number 18, so uh, <laughs> I think we're probably going to stick with it, and plus it looks sick on a bike. Uh, so, RJ, you want to tell them the bad news then, RJ? Yeah, the bad news is that I scored 22 points this year, and, you know, I'm on the cusp of maybe getting my first ever national number, and, you know, it would just be a huge help if you <laughs> drop down to that eight. Selling it. Maybe I'd fall into the top 100. <laughs> Listen, everything has a price. Get Mertz on the phone. Yeah, get, get yeah, Mertz on the phone. Hey. Say, everything has a price. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I, I can make a deal for you right now, man. We got some delicious R jerky. <laughs> I, mean, that, that beef jerky deal. I know it's not donuts, but we right. can get you some R jerky. And I don't be think pumped. jerky's going to do it. I think cash <laughs> would, is better. But, RJ, we have the national numbers, like the projected ones, and you are 99 right now. With Jet at oh. 18? With Jet yes. at 18. And somebody at 13 or no? No, nobody at 13. Nobody at 13. Yeah, that's pretty, that's so a pretty safe RJ, bet. we have you at 99. You may get it, even with Jet not dropping down. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> Retract all that. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks, thanks all right. RJ. Thanks, man. That's it for me. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thank you. Rjerky.com. Jet, see what you do for people. They, they need you. They need you to drop down to get a number. So, uh, uh probably not. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, is it hard to? I mean, okay. So, Paula, obviously, you won there three times in a calendar year. That uh, seems to be your place. But uh, I almost thought that Indiana was a better um, uh, race for you, Jet. What do you think? I, I thought Indiana. I mean, J Mart was common, sure. But that would have been an amazing battle. But I thought Indiana was pretty damn good. What do you? What about you? Yeah, I think I think it was good because I went through uh, like uh, not both modes, but the first mode that I was really saying what I needed to do, mm -hmm. what I was like to really get up uh, to get more in this championship fight with Cooper was to make sure I get him in that first moto, and uh, and I think it it was good to get that. Plus, it was the first one won, and I was uh. I was looking forward to that, like, J Mart and, and me battle, but um, I think, uh, sadly, yeah, he, I know what happened. I think he just scrubbed Weedle. I know, right? Maybe. But, um, no, I would have I would have loved that battle. I love uh, love racing hard with someone, obviously, clean. But, um, yeah. I definitely I, I definitely like Iron Man going first 1-1 one, one at a pro race. Yeah. It's awesome. And, and to do that and snatch the red payback was, uh, was definitely awesome. Did, did it change anything for you with J-Mark going out of the series? I know he wasn't the primary guy you were battling, but at that point, you know, he was putting some heat on you in that, that moto. Um, did it change your outlook on the, the championship at all with him sort of out of the equation? Probably not really, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care who's out there kind of thing. I'll race you 100% every time. So if he was out there or not, I'm not going <laughs> to... Uh, worried too much, so yeah. Did you have a relationship with Cooper at all? Were you guys buddies? Did you guys talk at all, or was it so much like, "Hey, listen, this thing's coming down to me or you," and, and you know, you're the you're the enemy, and, and vice versa? Like, or, were you guys? Did you guys talk much? I mean, I tried always showing respect yep. to him because where the level we're at now, it's obviously like you have to put work in, and I would always say good job, good job to him. Like at the start of the year and that stuff, even when we were battling, I would always say mm -hmm. good job. Even I would lose to them 
But uh, lately I haven't because every time they beat me, they, I, they not one of them came up to me and said congrats. So I start, I'm like, well, yep. I guess guess that's how it is. I right. don't want to show respect. That's fine. I just I won't show any back. But yeah, yeah, didn't really talk much. Yeah, yeah, it, it is weird that way. Things get things happen near the end of the championships. I mean, shit. Um, years ago when Brock Tickle and Josh Hansen were going for one, they were changing in different trucks at the Pro Circuit team, Jet. So things yeah. get weird. They're buddies, and they're coming down for a title, and all of a sudden they're just like, yeah, I can't change with you. I can't. I mean, I can't. Yeah, <laughs> they were they were playing like games with each other at test track and all kinds yeah. of crap. Yeah, J-Mart pitting off the back of trucks. And yeah, J-Mart's up at the back of semis, and yeah, yeah. things near the end of title yeah, chases. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I like the last round because – the last round kind of thing, like when obviously the champion is already decided kind of thing, like we're dealing that. Right. I feel like it kind of drops their guard a bit more and not kind of they don't get that kind of stuck up thing. So sure. like, yep. and because I, I even noticed in Supercross, because I, I, I would never talk to Colt. Like I would show respect and say good job and that yeah. stuff. But I would never like actually sit down and talk to him. And, and like after I was out this out of like the championship i'm like dude why am i like there's no need like uh, yeah to do that like i can talk to the guy he's not he's a normal dude it's not like he's a an, a wanker at all so it's like <laughs> right, right. And, and and at salt lake and that stuff and the last two rounds i started talking to him more and he, and he, he was an awesome dude i like such a nice guy and I, it, it just uh kind of my respect for him goes up even more right he just, right so nice, and he, and he still spoke to me because I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We got a call from uh, Cole here. Cole, what's going on? What's your question for Jet Lawrence? Hi, uh, yes. Um, yeah, my name's Cole, and um, I just wanted to congratulate um, you, Jet, um, putting in all the hard work. Um, my question is, um, I'm in the market of a 250 uh, SXF, the KTM, and the... Um, Honda CRF 250. I just wanted to get like your feedback on like how do you feel like on the new 22? How's the Honda Jet? Uh, I mean, dude, I, I've ridden the Kate. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I recommend the Honda 250 a lot, especially like just out of the box. It's already I feel like way better. Uh -huh. No, not not than other brands. I'm just saying than the 19 bike. It's so forgiving. Uh, sorry, 2020, my bad. Uh, then the, uh, it's so more forgiving. And, and we rode it at the la 250 launch, like the 2022 launch. And yep. Han and I rode with stock suspension. And it was awesome. Like, it was so plush. It was never harsh on our, on our body. And it has good power. Like, you get a silencer on that thing, that thing would be golden. That's, like, all you need, really. So I recommend the Honda, obviously, because... Not just because I ride for them, but because when I rode it, actually, it just felt really nice to ride and, and really uh, forgiving. That's odd, Charles, that he would say the Honda, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking he was going KTM. I, I was too. I was, <laughs> I was thinking it was KTM. No, that, that's that's cool. Uh, they are. They The new bike, the 2022 Honda, is all new, man. Uh, so, Cole, if you get it, uh, you'll It just be won the, the outdoor championship. It's yeah. got to be pretty damn good. It's got to be pretty good. Thanks, Cole. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, there we go. We might have sold a Honda tonight, too, you know? So, uh, <laughs> that, that would have been great. Um, I'm going to get a percent of that, then. <laughs> you should get a percent of that, absolutely. So, hey, yeah. so you ride there at the 83 compound, and, and Joey's there, and Bogle's there, and Hunter's there, and Coop is there, and I'm probably forgetting some people. Who's the biggest pain in the ass at the compound, like, besides Truman? Truman's the biggest pain in the ass, but besides Truman. Oh, dang it. Well, you already took. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but just Truman, then? You just want to go with that? Uh, no. Let's. I mean, Coop is a bit of a tosser out there. He, uh, yep. he does. He sets that line a lot of times. Where, where to hunt and I have to put him in line. To be honest, like we give him an old one two, and he kind of tucks the tail in between the legs and goes <laughs> into his locker room again. But um, <laughs> right, right, but, okay, yeah. Uh, he's a tosser. He is. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, and also too, Charles here is from 100 percent and. Uh, Man, you guys won everything with 100%, Chuck. We did. And with All Jet, five. Yeah. Jet uh, mm. played you're, a big part of that. I'm super thankful, Jet. You snatched um, this title away, so Pro Taper didn't get both of them. So yeah, I yeah. I Paul, appreciate uh, you. Paul works for Renthal. All Charles works for 100%. Here. Yeah, they're, they're all Team Jet over here. I mean, to be honest, that wasn't really my guy. I just didn't want to see another blue bike on the top step. <laughs> uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm Blue Crew. Blue Crew is amazing. Um, but so, yeah, yeah I mean. I, I, 
Ball throw is my favorite. <laughs> uh, Charles, like, so big bonuses for Jet. Like, just 100% just he's, paying out the bonuses. He's earning some money. Yeah, yes. just crushing yeah. it. With hey, why, long, long-term commitment to Jet. You're right. Why were you waving to Schwartz? Well, I mean, why not? Like, he both motos he let me buy uh, was really kind. I, I think, I know for sure, but I think that was probably having both the motos. He's having one of his best motos. And he was and kind enough to let me buy it. So I... I I, I had to wait, but I wanted—I didn't want to wait after and say like thanks. And yeah. I did when he came over the truck. He was talking to some of the team, and I want—I went up and I said thanks. He, so I was—I was rude when I got to him. So I waved both times just to show show my respect to him because uh, I know he's he's out there trying to do his best also, and, and to let me buy it to yeah. help to help points was was really kind of him. Yeah, that that is yeah, that's uh, cool. Also, I, nice of Mosman to just ram it up in there in the first <laughs> moto and take him out and, and get, you get two passes. Yeah, passes. I, yeah. I felt, when I found out, I felt so bad for the guy. I'm like, oh, dude, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jet Lawrence here on the show, brought to you by Vertex Pistons. Anything else for the new 250 champion, guys? Anything else? Uh-huh. Just congrats. Yeah, hell of a season, man. No, Congratulations. Impressive, yeah. for sure. Especially to get like go through the pressure to win a title and, and accomplish it at such a young age and yeah because that can be a hard hurdle to get over so good for you dude cheers mate all I right love <laughs> <laughs> thanks jet thanks for calling in man ah, thank you guys thanks all for having right. me that's uh that's jet lawrence everybody uh, brought to you by vertexpistons.com is good interview good kid yeah, yeah he absolutely funny. yeah he, he definitely gets it right he had no idea like did, did, didn't even cross his mind why why not start yeah right why outside? not start yeah paul isn't that cool yeah, just to be that pure, th- pure thinking that yeah. I'm going to execute my start, and if I don't, I'm going to tuck him behind them. He just worries about himself, and that's yeah. all you can do. Yeah, I like it. No, absolutely. Uh, before we do the X-Brand Goggle tear-offs, Dustin is on one. Dustin, what's up, man? Hey, guys. Uh, I signed up for the World Vet here in November. Okay. Um, I just got a stock YZ250. Um, besides going up against four strokes, um, what do you guys recommend doing to my bike? Like any, uh, your you know, 250 two-stroke? Correct. Just uh, you, good luck, man. Good luck. You're gonna have you're you're cool. racing Glenn Helen on a two. He's racing Glenn Helen on a two stroke against four strokes of the World Vets. Good luck. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah, yeah. Just save your entry money. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you coming from? Uh, it's San Diego. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, um, so you, uh, what class are you gonna ride? Uh, just two fifty novice or thirty five novice. Ah, you might not be that bad on yeah, a two stroke of novice, fine. right? Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, you'll, you'll be, be all right. Fine. That track gets so I mean, rough. Practice your starts, Dustin, because uh, some of us don't practice our starts when we go to these It ain't going to matter. He's going to get worked. No, but some Starts us, too long. No, but even just some people don't do starts. So oh, you right. just do starts. Got it. Because yeah. <laughs> I haven't even gone off a start gate in like 10 years. The last Oh, time yeah. Do that then. Do some starts because I Steve. really regret not doing starts at that first World Vet round. That was ugly. Was probably, I think last time I went off a gate was probably Barona. Oh, <laughs> Barona yeah. Oaks. And when I went... My, f- I hadn't raced for, uh, yeah, eleven years. I, was, I thought you were yeah. trying to write your name in the sand, in front of the dirt, <laughs> <S> <laughs> in front of the start. Yeah, 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 it was so bad. <laughs> Why didn't I do any starts? I don't know. That still blows my mind. I, I was, still think I, I mean, you I knew was, how to start eleven years ago, right? I was, I, I don't even know. Yeah, I, I, what was I doing? Why did I go to a race? And never once did they start at any time. Did, did it hit you in the 30-second board? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hit me, and I was like, what the fuck do I do? Both feet, one feet, uh, you know, RPMs. Second. Uh, uh. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, um, Dustin, so I would do that. Would, would you recommend, what about, a, like, a, like, a, you just like, stock gearing and stuff like that, or probably fine? Or is your bike, is you your bike stock right now? Yeah. Get a V-Force. A V-Force? The, the V-Force works really good on that bike. Put some uh, good fuel in g- it. Get a silencer, Pipe get some silencer. C twelve, and you'll be good to go. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, ditch the stock silencer, get a silencer, race gas, V force, boom. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh Dark Side, what's up, man? How are you? Do we do the intro or do we what do we, we do? do? <laughs> 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 oh shit, that's David Bradshaw's bike. I just fucked up. What what's your problem? What's your problem? Not, do it twice, no problem. Um, listen, I don't I'll play know. It every we, chance let's I not get. focus. Let's focus on the show. Sure. I don't know why they didn't kick. In they overtime. did. They did kick. They got the ball back. They. No, why did they kick a field goal? They inter- They threw an interception. Why did they throw an interception when they're down on the two yard line? They were trying to get a TD and they threw an interception. It was third down. They just kicked the ball. 
They threw it then, on third. Then if they get a touchdown, then the game's over. If yeah. they get a field goal, they I know, get a chance I to. I know, but when you're like. When you're the Raiders and you. Yeah. Just run it. Yeah. Just run it. Yeah, I know. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Back, back to the motocross right. stuff. Motocross. All right. <laughs> Dark side, what's up? I just called in to promote the wrap up show for this week. Who's on it? Uh, we've got Castle reached out, and one of his buddies, Clint Breslin, uh, yep. is going to be on. And then Clint lined me up with Randy Valade. Never heard of her. <laughs> really? <laughs> Randy <laughs> Valade's coming. coming on. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, yeah. yeah. Apparently. That, that's the word. I like that you're, you're still, yeah, do you, still tentative. What are the odds Randy makes it? I mean, I think they're 70 30. Hey. What time of day is it? Uh, I told him, so he's Cali, right? Yeah. Yes. It better be during work hours. Yeah, so I told him 4.30 his time, 6.30 Central. He said he can make it happen. That's cutting it close. You might want to bump it back to like 3. It's tough. 2 o'clock. You've got to catch him in the, the 8 to 5. He's probably taking kids to soccer games and baseball mm-hmm. games by then. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I might have to have Marks or, or maybe Courtney since she's in the studio as my backup because, yeah, 6.30 Central is about the okay. earliest for me. I think Talon's free. Oh, Talon's free? Talon's yeah. available. Let's get Courtney. <laughs> we should get Courtney on to talk about, you know? Yeah. yeah. Her yeah, experience. You, you I'm that. sure all. I'm sure all she wants to do is talk another hour and a half about the show she sat in on. I think she's having fun. Oh, did we just she, score a touchdown? She's yeah. been doing great on the drops. Did so. we just win? Yes. Did nobody, that happen? Yes. Nobody cares. Just one, unless there's a flag. Hang yes. On. Hang on. I just want to hit a motocross stop. Oh my God! I told. I just want to hit a motocross stop. I told two people to put like all the money they have in the world and put it on the Raiders. Yep. And I didn't. You didn't tell me that. I, I told, he told me that. I, told I wouldn't Paul. have done it, but he all didn't right. tell me that. Uh, Sounds gay. All right, dark side. Sorry. No, you're good, man. Hey, my Niners won yesterday, so you know we're Super Bowl bound. Clint, uh, Clint's a good dude. I'm happy he's getting on the show. I grew up racing. Charles knows. Yeah, well, who's yeah? Who's this guy? I grew up racing with him, and who, then he, he worked at uh, uh, MSR with Randy and I for lots of years. He's a designer. Uh, who do we? How do we clear this guy to come on the wrap-up show? Do we? Do well, he's not coming to your house. It's but fine. but does he listen to the show? Yeah, Is he into to the it? Show, like you know what I mean? We need to know. His whole life. It, that doesn't matter. Show. We just it's a show about a show. Show about a show. I I I exchanged a couple texts with him. Clarified that it's a show about a show. Okay. He's clear. He All knows. Right. Because last the, the the dark side, I haven't listened for. Could be the best wrap up show ever. I listened to the last one and I missed the previous three or whatever. And you again, yeah. you went off in the fucking fields, dark side. So I don't even know. Oh boy, what's going yeah, on anymore? Go. So. Hmm. I don't know about all that, but uh, right. yeah, apparently Shorty rides at Clint's house or something. Is yeah. that what you said, Kessler? Yeah, yeah. Shorty rides at Clint's all the time. Clint Are you upset, dark side, that Charles is not a berm lord? He has decal works. No, I'm not upset. I mean, you know, it happens. Not everybody is – I mean, he's 100%. He's not X-Brand, but, I mean, he's all right. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Can't fit that many logos on uh. my front fender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bur- Burmore's kicked you out because of all the fa- – you didn't have enough logos. I only wanted a couple. Right. Um, all right, Dark Side. Yeah. Thanks, man. We got to – we got to – I got to yeah. go. We got to wrap this thing up. Yeah, how, how, get it wrapped up, man. All right. Thank I you. I got to go to bed. All right. See you. Yeah. All right. Uh, X-Brand goggle tear-off segment. Let's do this before commercial break. Let's do it. <laughs> It's the X Brand Tear Off segment. 15 second rapid fire QA. Rapid fire. X Brand goggles are a choice of champions everywhere. Every champions wear X Brand goggles. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pulp, and Pulp Show 21 is the code to save with X Brand, EKSBrand.com. And uh, great company, great goggles. Mm-hmm. Except the five the, the, champions. The new Lucid goggle is unbelievable. Yep. Mm-hmm. Charles, you saw the Lucid. I did. I've seen it. Unbelievable. That's that's a word to describe it. Unbelievable. In some terms. And, and, and you can save <laughs> with X Brand and Chiz wears X Brand. Chiz does. And he right Surratt, to the championship. Surratt wears X Brand. Yep. And, and Ben Lemay is X Brand. There's some sort of champion that I'm not aware of with these guys. Like um People's like a privateer champion. People's no, Coach champion. Shot got that. Um People's champion. Hmm. I thought that was A Ray. Pit, pit bike champion? Maybe. All right, these, co- Dade City these questions are Dade submitted City by champion. these guys Maybe. are submitted by Corey Moser. Do you know these questions? I don't. Do you know that guy? I don't know. No. Okay. Uh-uh. All right, Marks, let's do it. Steve, do you think Michael Lindsay's team performed as you expected it would, better or worse? And what's he going to do next? He's going to go to Vital MX and work there, like he left there before. Uh, yeah, they did good, man. Uh, Shock crushed it, right? Both series. Mumford had a bad Supercross, but outdoors. He was oftentimes the top privateer. I think that that team can hold their head high with what they did. Totally. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay, this is just my question, so. I think it's fucking crazy for trying it. Oh, are we allowed to chime in on your question? No. no okay. Oh. Going oh, back uh, to Vital, like Guy B? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's going to take Guy B's job. Okay. Yep. Paul. Yo. Listen to me. So your 2021 Loretta Lynn's campaign. Oh, boy. I don't want to talk about what that. What happened? I don't know. Didn't ride good. 
got tired, got a lot of arm pump. Were you and, mad? And uh, didn't do very good. Were you mad? No. Did you you took it? I don't think I was well. mad at all. Did he? Took it well. I didn't Why see him a whole lot at the race. I think, I, well. I think I even told Pookie, I'm like, Paul is smashing things right now. No, not okay. even not even close. Wow. Okay. okay. No. It's a family vacation, man. All right. Pookie. Yeah, I want to do good, but Paul what's Paul was not do? smashing anything at Loretta's. What's up, Erica? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's when it after dark here. <laughs> you just you opened the door. To, I couldn't. I, okay. Yeah, I walk through it. No, I I, I, I was following the results, and I was, like, checking the results, and I'm like, oh, Paul, yeah. like, 25th or something yeah. I saw, and I'm like, oh, he is. Yeah, that was rough. Okay. Charles, mm -hmm. who's the favorite going into 450 Supercross? Hold on. Cooper Webb. Wait, you can't chime in on Charles's question. You'd be quiet over there. He's coming in in the off season, and we're going to do Supercross picks and talks then. Uh, too much Supercross tonight. On the show. I need a precursor. The to Answer that. the question within thirty seconds. Yeah, he ahead. shouldn't be Cooper, getting yelled at. Cooper Webb. Too much Supercross talk tonight. We got three months to fill. The guy in. with the number one plate. <laughs> where everyone's over outdoors. <laughs> I still need him to listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve. If Justin Cooper had been open about his broken thumb, do you think it would have given Jet an edge or motivation? No. No, I think that's the stupidest thing ever. That's, that's ridiculous. No, I don't. Paul, who are we blaming for Kessler's wheel coming apart? Steve. Wow. Poor maintenance? How fast was that? Two seconds. Yeah, good. Poor maintenance yeah, or something, you think? Seized spokes or something? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to blame. say. I had all the spokes. I, I don't know what else to no, say. I think it was a mechanic. Hmm. He probably went to tighten the spokes and loosened it by accident. <laughs> You're right. And Maybe. Kept going around. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just, <laughs> just being <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Yep. Lefty Lucy. Right. All right. All right. Bullshit. Charles, does 100% have anything new coming to market? Coming? Coming. Oh, it's C-U-M-M-I-N-G. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. making sure everyone Thanks. knows. Thanks, uh, nice. The answer is always. Um, I wanna, can I try the new helmet? Yeah. Mountain bike helmet? Yeah. Okay. Mountain bike helmet. Yeah. Let's be clear on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's why I did clear. Yeah. Th there's always uh, new stuff coming up. Top of my head. Nothing I can really talk about. Um, but yeah. Always. They, uh, always. They, their new goggle, it's coming out soon. It's called the Blucid. <laughs> and it's a ripoff of the Lucid. <laughs> the Blucid? Yeah. Blucid. Can you confirm or deny, Charles? Um, I can neither okay. confirm nor deny. Very good. The Blucid. Steve. Yep. Who's the next 250 rider to get on a 450 that has some serious potential and not troll? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, he knows me well. Um, wow, well, is Jet on a, when's Jet moving up? One more year, do you think or two? 23, I think. 23? You I think, think yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean if all goes to plan, yeah. right? If all right, goes yeah, to yeah, plan. Forkner was supposed well, to no, be up right, 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 exactly. Yeah, because you think yeah. if Jet wins 22, he doesn't defend that in 23? I don't think so personally. He if he up. wins two titles in 22, I I bet he goes to a 450. Does it also sort of defend what the <coughs> sort of depend what Kenny's doing too? I would imagine it does, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't troll. Don't troll. Yeah, don't Colt know. Nichols is my answer. Okay. Uh, Paul, who? Oh, no, not, not that one. How does Mitch fix Forkner? Um, maybe he forces him to do something different. Get out of the Oklahoma thing. That's maybe. right. Um, I don't, but he can't fix him. I think Forkner just needs to stay healthy, number one. So he finished 24 motos, or at least attended 24 yeah, yeah, motos. Yeah, yeah, Attended 24, 24 motos. motos right. So that's a really good start. What do you think went wrong with his bike? I have no idea. Okay. Probably does. But. Right. Uh, last one. Charles, what does Bevo do at 100%? Is he brand ambassador? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. He's brand ambassador. And let's not bait the witness here. Let's, you're leading. You're leading the you're witness. Leading the witness. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Ambassador. <laughs> he brings 40-some-odd years of goggle knowledge and industry experience. I need a bag. I'm throwing up. <laughs> I, I'm going to throw up. Moving on. Can we pull the thing? <laughs> Rip. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> pull, pull the thing. Pull the laminate. <laughs> uh, uh, that was it, and I don't have the outro. So. Man, those questions oh, okay. suck. Uh, we don't have the outro. Wow. They were horrible. You've gotten in a worse mood as the show's been going. I know. Along. I'm sorry. I, I'm tired. tired. Yeah, yeah, I know. Tired. But can we? Can yeah, we? yeah. I'm the guy doing the, the buddy race for Destination yeah. really set him up. I know. The edge. He's been, he's been gone. <laughs> threw his headset down. Nick. He's been gone ever since that guy. Yep. Sorry. I mean, it wasn't a good idea. I mean, I I'm mean, not he wanted 
Corolla and Hurlings ride the same bike or something. And they're different. Did he, was he talking about doing a relay race at Des Nations? It's exactly what he was thinking. Holy moly! It took a Listen, while to explain I, I that, but that's where he was going. Right. And I, I, all right, all right. Let's go to commercial break here. We're going to come back. We have a uh, tweeted tits from Motorsport.com. We have a uh, Skosh contest oh, up for grabs as well. Uh, and that's then, the uh, highlight. That's the highlight. Yeah, okay, I'm you gonna bring your game face it. for that. I'm, I'm excited for okay, it. Okay, I want right. to compete. All right, fantastic. You are. You are. I want to guy. compete. <laughs> uh, we're going to commercial break. Be right back after this, everybody. The Pulp and Mech Show. Those who love motocross know Motorsport.com has the knowledge and expertise to make your next ride your best ride. Motorsport.com has a broad selection of in-stock parts and gear at competitive prices. We specialize in bringing you OEM and aftermarket parts, riding gear and accessories for dirt bikes, motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. All thanks to the most dedicated and experienced team of gearheads in the industry who use the very parts we sell on Motosport.com. Motosport.com always offers fast shipping and free delivery on orders more than $79 to ensure you never miss a ride. Whether you race on the track, ride the trails, or commute on the street, shop motosport.com today for the best customer service and experience when buying the parts and gear you need to stay on two and four wheels. Make your next ride your best ride only at motosport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win is Michelin Motorcycle Tires. And Michelin is introducing many exciting new tires for 2020. For V-Twin riders, the Michelin Commander 3 Cruiser and the Michelin Commander 3 Touring Tires offer improved wet grip and enhanced tread life. For sport bike and track day riders, the Michelin Power 5 Tire and the Michelin Power GP Tires feature the same architecture and profile for effortless sport bike setup from street to track. If you'd like to have the same tire that won the 2019 Red Bull Ayersburg Rodeo, the Michelin Enduro Extreme Tire is the tire for you. And the Michelin Star Cross 5 Tire Range is now available for young motocross and off-road riders in sizes for 50cc bikes and up. To learn more about these and all other Michelin two-wheel products, check out www.motorcycle.michelinman.com Visit your local dealer or online retailer and follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Want a chain and sprocket kit but aren't sure what you need? Then call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and get hooked up with the right sprocket and chain kit for your bike. With more than 30,000 possible gearing combinations, Vortex EK has more gearing than your garage has room for. It's a ridiculous amount of gearing for nearly any bike. Join the ranks of Star Racing Yamaha and Supercross champion Dylan Ferrandis and run a Vortex Sprocket. Available in red, blue, black, orange, silver, and Kawasaki green. Yes, green. Call a doctor because things just got sick. Warning may cause extraordinary power, excessive performance, and speed so fast your eyes will be. Call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and mention promo code PULPMX2021 and get the best deal on your next order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. 
FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhaust, 100% in the USA, under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Steve. Kiefer. Do you want to hear about one of the best rides I've ever had? Dude, it's not time for After Dark yet. <sighs> Chill down, dude. I just want to talk about Race Tech stuff. Oh, that's it. Okay. Gosh, go man. Basically, I've had the chance to do some stuff with Race Tech recently with the CRF 250R and, of course, the KX250. And as you know, I've talked about on the show, I wasn't a real hardcore fan of Race Tech stuff back in the day. But since Rob and Andrew and those guys have assembled at Race Tech, the stuff has been great. So um, for you guys out there listening, if you guys are looking to get your engine work done or even some suspension work, or as Steven says on the show sometimes, Get your seals and <laughs> your oil rebuilt in your, fork, in your fork and shock. Get it rebuilt. It helps. 15 to 20 hours. Head over to Racetech.com. Check out. They even got a cool little simulator. You can look at uh, what size spring rate you might need for your bike. So a lot of cool features over there on the website. But uh, And as you know, Yamaha Blue Crew guy over here, you guys have some of that on your bike. It's fantastic. Zombie Blos uses it. Jerry Robin uses it. Starling, all of those guys over there. Malcolm Stewart won a Supercross with Race Tech stuff a few years ago. Pulp 19 is the code to save. Mention Pulp MX when you when you call. You can save on the service. You can save save, save on motor work. You can save on springs if you just want to do that and get it put in yourself or do it yourself. Race Tech is the one stop shopping for motor and suspension work. You can also mention the code Home Life 2020. That's better. That's a better code, I think. We'll do either one. Just <laughs> listen, people. Give your bike some love. Get your suspension modified, service. Get your motor modified, serviced with the folks at Race Tech. Good people. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. Hey, Pulp Nation, Andy from Guts Racing. We are the leaders in seat technology. We feel like for any need that you have with your seat, we've got you covered. For 2021, we're going to be adding more colors to our, our product line, and we're going to be adding more merchandise to our product line. Also new for 2021, we've expanded our distribution through motorsportoutlet.com. So please support the people that support Pulp, support Guts Racing, and also support motorsport.com. Hope to see you guys at the track soon. Once again, this is Andy Gregg from Guts Racing. Thanks again to Pulp Nation for all the support. Over 65 years ago, Vertex Pistons was born out of a small technical workshop in northern Italy's famous Motor Valley. Expanding and maturing among the racing legends of Ferrari, Lamborghini, MV Augusta, and Ducati. Today, Vertex Pistons are the pistons of choice for motorcycle riders and teams throughout the world. Because of their renowned reputation for exceptional quality, Vertex Pistons is a factory piston supplier to KTM, Husqvarna, Beta, Gas Gas, and TM. From the Motocross, Supercross, MXGP, GNCC, National and World Enduro Series, you can find Vertex Pistons winning championships. Vertex Pistons strives to provide you with world-class factory technology at a very competitive price. No matter which brand of bike you ride, when it's time to rebuild your top end, Vertex Pistons will have your engine performing better than new. To see our full range of two-stroke and four-stroke pistons in replica, high compression, or GP-style configurations, visit us at vertexpistons.com or stop into your local dealer and ask for a Vertex Piston Kit today.
Hey guys, it's Mathis. Look, if you're still not wearing a neck brace in 2020, it's time to go get one or at least think seriously about it. It's been over 15 years since the neck braces first came out. They're not the clunky, oversized devices they used to be. Atlas came in and changed the way all neck braces were designed by introducing flexible technology to the world and proving that neck braces can be something you can actually ride in while performing at the highest level. Look at Jason Anderson winning Supercross championships or look at Martin Davalos or anybody else. Don't take my word for it just because I have two Manitoba championships to my name. Wait, I have four. Just look at how many other brace designs look like the Atlas one. Atlas pioneered all the modern neck brace features and have been refining them ever since then while the competition has been trying to catch up. Grab the brace that's been leading the pack. Check out atlasbrace.com. Get yours today. There is a pulp discount if you check out sponsoreddeals.com on pulpamexshow.com. So be like Chase Sexton, Martin Davalos, and many other guys and wear the Atlas brace. Atlasbrace.com. Our guys at Works Connection have always been there for the Pulp MX show, and they're there for you as well. Uh, they're just as passionate and as dedicated to the sport as you are. For over 30 years, Works Connection has been designing and producing innovative products like the Pro Launch Start Device, the 123 Easy Build Elite Perch, Elite Axle Blocks, and much, much more. You'll find Works Connection products on AMA Pro Riders bikes under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, Smart Top Honda, as well as top teams and private tiers alike. The best part of this deal is Pulp MX20 code saves you money at worksconnection.com. Stop by your local outlet and check out the new lineup of Works Connection products for 2021. I've got the perch on my bike. I've got the engine plugs. I absolutely love it. Great product. I've got the uh, start device as well, which helped me in one moto at the World Vet Championships and one moto. Not so much. Worksconnection.com. Pulp MX20 is the code to save. Please check them out. All new. 2021 products now available. Thanks for listening. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Pulp Mech Show presented by Decal Works, Motorsport.com, and Fly Racing. We still have the Race Tech Rant. We have the Motorsport.com Tweet at Tits segment. We also have uh, Charles Castle from 100% and Paul Perbinos from Renthal all on board with us. Uh, quickly, a couple of things I want to talk about. Michelin, uh, Randy Richardson over there. He was at a GNCC this weekend, and Michelin is involved heavily in the GNCC series. So they're doing a good job there. Thank you to the folks at Michelin uh, for sponsoring this show, motorcycle.michelinman.com. And, uh, man, if you go to a GNCC, I don't, you, when's the last time you went to a GNCC? Never. What? Are you serious? Yeah. You've never been never. to a GNCC? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? That <laughs> no. is, that is, those are your customers, Those, Chuck. Are, those people We're use goggles. We're a sponsor of the series. They use goggles. you got to get out of the office more. Yeah, I'm busy there. A lot of work to do. Holy shit. I raced one. I did. I raced two. Mm -hmm. I've raced multiple. Beat Randy. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. Race, I raced a snowshoe one like three or four years ago yeah. in the mud. Yeah. Uh, that's what they all are. I've raced. But both of them. It was raining all day. Yeah, yeah. Both it of was. All day. I, I saw actually, videos of this. The last one I raced was Unadilla. Rained all day. I quit. Well, yeah. Don't quit. I quit. That's not cool. I had no gloves and no goggles. I did I, glove change every lap. Did you? Oh, jeez. And had to take them off in the middle of the lap. Yeah, yeah. I did a pit stop with some people in the woods i said give me give me some water i can't see <laughs> well michelin's involved in gncc's everybody the yep. starcross fives uh you actually had charles at one point a starcross five set on your bike i oh, did and yeah absolutely yeah. you've used them as well and they got the power five tire uh they got cruiser tires chuck i've never used one they of got those, they got a michelin enduro extreme tire for like billy bolt and those type of guys did i run a, a michelin today on my on your e-bike i don't I know i think you did okay i did perform great. yeah E-bike e tire. Uh, Paul did. had an E-Wild series on his uh, I think his if bike. you have Michelins on your dirt bike, you get in the track free or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, works. every track yeah. anywhere Just in the any, world. Just any yeah. one free tire. Yeah, yeah. Front or rear. Front Just or rear. one. <coughs> any track in the world. Just tell them at the front gate. Yep, yep. you'll get in no problem. Uh, so deal. Thanks rebate. For the, thanks for the folks that uh, <laughs> Randy will rebate it. Uh, <laughs> that's going to cause some problems. <laughs> <laughs> any track in the world, you'll get in free with one Michelin. <laughs> send it to Randy. He'll Send it to Randy. He'll hand it to you. He'll handle it. Thank you to the folks at Michelin, of course. Uh, also, Maxima USA, what's your favorite Maxima product? Filter oil. It's good. Uh, it's really all good. good. Everything's good. What's yours? All of it. Yeah. Chain lube, the oil. The filter oil is like the right amount of sticky, mm -hmm. but uh, without being like super watery or super sticky. And not too thick. <clears throat> not too thick, not too thin, just like the porridge and the little bears. Mm -hmm. uh, SC1, love SC1, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the folks at Maxima, 927. So my Project 500 is almost done. And I will be mixing some gas with 927. And hauling some ass. Don't they do like the 927 ride day? Is that a thing still? Yeah. September. Bro, get your coming. 500 ready for it's 927 coming. day. It's coming. Oh, my God. Yes. It's Maybe a couple I weeks. Will. Yeah. yeah. Call up Trevor away. at Maxima. Say, yeah. hey, we got a, I got yeah. a project we, go. we can collaborate on. What's 927? 
What day is that? Oh, Didn't I'll be in this nation's. If no, I you go. won't. You're no, not you're going. Not. You, I, I, you said you're Monday. not going. You just forgot to tell JT. JT, do no, you hear that? No, <laughs> I, I, uh, I am not. I am not committed one way or another. Nine twenty-seven is a Monday. Let's cancel the pulp show and go riding oh, yeah. on the five hundred. Okay. All right. I I'm rattled now because I'd like to do that and then this nations I got to think about this nations. Nah, don't go. Canada could could podium. Thank you. Podium. Dude, I mean there's gonna be six people there. Dude, they could do pretty well. Podium. Podium might be a stretch. <laughs> <but> <laughs> they were ninth in a full field a couple years ago. So yeah. now you take I away. Mean it's, they're legit top five. I think. I think opportunity so. at the World Cup at that janky World Cup at Glen Helen. They were third. What? What what janky world? When the Cup Disney Nations was canceled, does Glenn Helen just call every race a world race? Yeah, when the Disney Nations was canceled, <laughs> and they threw together that was my first race with Yamaha with Timmy. Oh, remember? oh yeah 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 I remember. Australia he was ninety nine or something. Ninety three. Ninety eight. Timmy. No, at that race he wasn't. He was ninety. Th- yeah, he was ninety three. All right, no, no, no. All right. All right, fucking. No. All right, Maxima USA. Pulp twenty is the code to save with those guys. Pro filter as well. Pulp twenty to save at Pro filter. Uh, did you 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 put a Pro filter in the bike of Chase Kessler? I believe. Uh, just go with it, okay? Okay. Uh, Pro Filter, <laughs> maybe you've been roosted too many times if you haven't heard of them. They've got everything uh, for oil and air filters for dirt bikes, street bikes, side-by-sides, and everything in between. Sold through Power Sports dealers nationwide. Pick up a pre-oiled, ready-to-use premium air filter, oil filter for your next service. Pulp 20 is the code to save with those guys. And, uh, yeah, I love it, man. I just take the filter, throw it away, and uh, it's fantastic. And Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you, Phil. Profilter.com, MaximaUSA.com. Use the code and save. Uh, Race Tech ran of the night. Listen, the Race Tech guys, great guys down there. They have uh, their suspension seminars are coming up, and they're they're completely sold out for next month. They're looking to add more dates. Check out racetech.com. But they got an engine seminar, November 2021 in Corona, California. Uh, racetech.com to learn more about their suspension and engine seminars. A lot of people in the industry have taken these things. And racetech.com for more information. Pulp 21 is the code to save with Race Tech. Get your motor work done. Get suspension work done. My Race Tech ran of the night. It's just. I'm not even mad. I'm just disappointed. Like, once again, the live timing. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it, it okay, first of all, you guys watch the races. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll just have Jet Lawrence leading, and then you'll just randomly see Jet Lawrence drop off the screen. Uh, a guy in 27th will be leading at one point. RJ Hampshire was winning the overall at Moto 1 this mm-hmm. weekend. 40, that was the coolest points. part for me. Yeah. 42 points. 42 yeah. points. Uh, and then eventually it just went missing. So uh, would you rather it just go missing like it did or continue to just be erratic spasms going on all over there? I haven't watched every round on TV. Marks, you have. Just about, yes. Was this the all-time worst? Dude, it's been pretty so. bad. I, I don't they know. Quit. I they don't know they time, gave up. They gave up. They quit. It's been really, really bad. What is going on, though? I don't know. Like, And, and the AMA scoring hasn't been – Erratic, right? I know there's not great, but like the AMA live timing hasn't that, had these crazy. That hasn't issues, right? worked for me at the races for a while. Really? But isn't that what drives Pulp MX Fantasy? We have another live timing site that I think okay. not many people know like about. Backdoor one or something, right, Marks? Yeah. That's the one you grab now. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, and it's been working fine. But yeah, the the main one, the main can, user can, facing one, hasn't been great for a while. Can you hack into the one you use and connect it to the TV so it works? I bet you could. Yeah, I bet you could. I don't know what their graphics system is, but I'm you sure there's a way to do something it. Something came up today about hacking on the news, and, and one of these guys is like, fucking Marks. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Um, shit happens. So, like, the Race Tech rant. Like, I what, love being friends with a hacker, by the way. What What is going on? Like, what? what like, it's bad. It's so bad. Holy fuckballs, man. Like, it's, is, is the guy they're hiring, does he not know what he's doing? Like, seriously, does he, does he, is, he, is he not trained in this area? Mm-hmm. Does it, and also, yes, the answer to that's yes, for sure. When you have problems at round one and two and three, and you keep trotting the same guy out without making a change, without making a change because nothing got better ever, yeah, it's, yeah, dude, Don't it's unbelievable. It, that's my race tech round of the night. It like, almost seems like it's got worse, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, like Paul it, said, final round, they just said, fuck it, we're not uh, even putting we'll it up. Quit, yeah. It's always had its issues, but like, I feel like. Why it, it seems worse this year than last year or the year before? Yeah, right? like I don't. Is there a new person this year? I don't know, dude. We just like saying it's the same people and we have regressed. Same program. Same. <laughs> we running, have regressed. Same technology. That's my race tech round of the night. It, it's unbelievable Can trying we, to watch the sport and, and you know. I'm not okay. I'm not okay with that live time. Thank God for the Pulpamex Fantasy site because you can read event points, fantasy points, event overall, yeah, you know who's lap getting times, overalls. running order. You can get it all in one, one spot. Last lap, last lap, speaking, all of it. Speaking of getting it all, 
Uh, Mark's going to get it all tonight. But uh, um, yes. <laughs> Pulp Mex. She's nodding. She's nodding. She's nodding. Pulp Mex Fantasy. Uh, man, what a year! It's over. Uh, the gentleman that won the MX series. Uh, we'll be in touch. He kept his lead, I think, for the last little bit and won the won the bike. Won 250F. A, 250F. And uh, the overall champion is – we know him? So uh, I don't know for sure, but I believe Dan knows the overall winner somehow. And, and when, he, we, when we say overall winner, that's us combining Supercross and Motocross yeah. points in our fantasy yeah, game right. and awarding two-digit numbers, right? Right. So if you play fantasy and you're – obviously it's hard to win every weekend or hard to win a, a bike or finish in the top whatever to get a prize but if you're consistent <clears throat> in both series you can earn a two-digit number and the guy that won or i should say is red number one for next year he i think he was like 28th in supercross and like 46th in motocross or maybe i'm getting those yeah. backwards but right. he didn't win a yeah, prize yeah. all year yeah all year long so we're gonna do something cool for that person going forward and we're gonna get a cool trophy design that we can put your name on and keep record of it and, uh, yeah, something cool for that person because, again, yeah. he's basically the best player in the game yeah. overall. And yep. like Kenny, like Ken Roxon is the grand national champion essentially. Um, it, so we're going to celebrate that guy. And, Charles, you lost your you lost some spots. You still got a national number. But I did. Yeah. Uh, I was national number 34 this year. I'm 62 next year. Ah, oh, damn it, Mark. Big step in the wrong direction. Big step in the wrong direction. <laughs> what did you I might do? lose your ride. I could. That's you're, you're regressing. 60s are bad. Yeah. yeah. That's not good. Yeah. That's like privateer program. Um, yeah. So thanks, to everybody, for playing Pulp Mex Fantasy. Really fun year. So we, uh, we'll be in touch for a, uh, um, a bike for the winner of the outdoor series. But we also, if you get a top 99 number, you get an entry. And I if check. You, huh? Check. Yep. I did that. Charles got check. that. Check that. I got that. Oh. Uh, and if you pay for before the season start uh, for motocross and supercross, you get an entry for each one of those too as well. Did that. So you get three entries if you have a top 100 national number for a YZ450, 2021 YZ450. Let's do it tonight. Let's give it away tonight. to a, uh, uh, So you have three entries. You don't got to be in. You just got to pay for the season to get two entries or get the extra entry for being a top 100. And and that's it. You don't even got to be good at the game. You could. We probably have people who just pay to enter the raffle of the bike. I'm yeah. sure. To clarify, to get one entry, you have to play Supercross and Motocross. Yep. To get two entries, you would have to have paid for both previous to Supercross starting. Yeah. That's how you get okay. your two. Right. So that and did. then if you finish in the top 99 combined, right. then yep. you get a bonus third entry. All right. So well, only there can only be 99 people so with three entries. I have three. <clears throat> only 99 three people with three Only 99 right. people have right. three right. entries. Right. But uh, – so we love doing this. We give the bike away. Uh, uh, we have the privateer bike away from Yamaha. Now we're giving the fantasy bike away. Three bikes are up for grabs. Four bikes if you count a TTR this year in Pulp Mex Fantasy. Really thanks to the folks at Yamaha for all they do. And don't forget the Waverly bike. Yeah, Blue crew, man. Uh, they're fantastic. So, Marks, yes. you fired up your machine. The machine is ready. Should we do a fake one? And then no. that guy. Now, nah, is that fucked no, up? No, that's messed I feel up. like we're getting too. No. Don't hit the wrong press button. Press the button. <laughs> And okay, that's that, that's that's, okay. that's what you get if you do a fake one. We I feel like we did a fake one one time and we laughed at that guy. <laughs> I think we did one and then like did another one. That's after. cruel. We did another one after and like oh you could have won if the other one hadn't <laughs> yeah. gone first. Yeah. That's uh, cruel. That we're which, is, which is just all right. Cool. So marks you have all the entries uh, for the Pulp Mex Fantasy mm -hmm. for the people who played all year mm -hmm. and uh, and they're all in a randomizer over yes. there. Yes, Courtney, were you supervising the uh, the program build over here? I was not, but um, is Schmortney Schmarks allowed to win this bike? No. No. Dang no. it. No. Next time. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if it's Castle? What if it's Charles Castle? It can legitimately I mean, be Charles. I'm one of 99 people that have three entries. entries. Yep. There might be a riot if it's Chuck, but uh, hey. Why? Fair is fair. Uh, all right, Mark. I let's, sponsored uh, the damn thing, and I still got to put my so credit card number in. How long are you going to let it go for? <laughs> Who wants to say stop? Courtney, you want well, Courtney to say well, stop? Well, I, I have a... Uh, I have Four second drum roll. We'll let that run. And then you want Courtney to say stop? Sure. Courtney, yeah. Are you ready to say stop? When? I was born ready. All right. Here we go. Stop. All right. The winner is uh, Echo 690. Echo 690. Echo 690. Erica. Sorry, Charles. Sorry, Charles. I tried. That's unfortunate. Look how at long? How long do they have? So bummed. How long do they have to claim? Time. He is. He's it, sad. You don't yeah. have to be present to win. It's sad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's incredible. He's sad. He's legitimately upset every time. Do like, you want to just keep hitting that and God, see, if Chuck, like, see if you get Chuck's name? And like hit it many, again. Hit it again. See if it's Chuck. You guys like do the do the game, and I'll just keep running it and see if Chuck's name comes up ever. Okay. 
You want to do that? You guys Echo 690. Yeah. Echo Congrats. We'll, we'll be in touch. Congrats. Yep. Thanks to Can Yamaha. Back Thank you for playing. In case that person doesn't <laughs> right. respond. Uh, backup. Oh, boy. Uh, are we gonna read? Yeah, let's do a backup. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that kind of the what if we can't get a hold he of Echo just, 690? He was giving me an asshole drop for suggesting that. That's what I said. Well, yeah, I mean, but what we're the guests. We get yeah. a light What if with they're more. out of the country or something? You shipping this thing? You shipping this thing? To it's on. It's on them. China? If you're out of the country, yeah, yeah. We yeah. The, the rules are anything out of the country. We shipped to the closest U.S. Yeah, what port. if he's like, yeah, we're not doing that. I'm not paying that. Unfortunately, we need a backup. I, I, can t- I need can a backup. I can tell you they're in the country, but uh, <laughs> oh, they're in the country, yeah. Chuck. It's not Shit. looking good. Yeah. All right. What do you want me to do? You want me to read the second one I drew? No. No. Okay. no. Is it not me? No, <laughs> no it's not. It. There you go. You just hold on to the second one. All right. Uh, thank you to Skosh. We have a boom bottle up for grabs for uh, Charles Castellou or Paul Parabino. Skosh Industries Innovators of Award-Winning Consumer Technology, Power Sports, Car Audio, and Accessories, Pulp 2021 at Skosh, S-C-O-S-C-H-E, Skosh.com. Uh, phone mounts, chargers, cables, Power Sport. They got this base link modular thing in front of you. Uh, great company and twenty uh, percent off using that code. It's celebrating over forty years in experience. Uh, unlock your discount with the code Pulp twenty twenty one. Your case sometimes doesn't doesn't work. Mm. In the case, you have a case. Oh wow! Look at it charging. Go. Does mine do it? Mine product oh, testing. Mine here. does do it. This thing's great. That okay. thing is cool. <laughs> All right. Well, you can get one at Pulp twenty twenty one at Scosche. No one will be happier to win this than JT, so don't worry about that, guys. Whoever wins this one, no one will be as happy Tennis as shower, JT was right, or something? when he won. Dude, I- I've never seen somebody uh, <laughs> he was like so in, in love. You know how Indiana involved. Jones got the idol? It? You know, in- in- yeah. Indiana Jones yeah, yeah, got the, the idol, yeah. That was JT looking yeah, at Yeah, looking at it, yeah. Uh, it's, it's sitting up against the monster fridge there. See the magnet? It's got a magnet on it. It's on the side of the monster fridge. Oh, oh you mean sticking. the one out of the package that you've yeah. been using? No, yeah. I haven't been using it. That one's autographed by Dean Wilson, Jason Anderson, and Zach Osborne. Get the hell out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know those guys or huh. interesting. Okay. All right. So this is the stats. <coughs> I'm gonna just uh I'm gonna just rotate who gets goes first. Do any paper thing. or something? Uh no. Uh, okay. I got I'll keep track here. These are stats brought by my buddy Clinton Fowler. God, there's like these are gonna be tough. Look at that. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh two hundred fifty and four fifty season results for motocross. All season right. results? Just season stats. <laughs> oh, okay. Season, season stats. Oh. stats. All right. Here we go. <laughs> study. Um, I will start with uh, you, Charles, because okay. uh, you'll go first, and then Paul. And then so you both get a chance to answer, and whoever's closest, we're not going to, you know, we're just going to run through this thing. Got it. We're not going to give you guys, you know. Same question for both of us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same question for both of us. All right. 250 season stats. Who got the most whole shots? Char- Charles? Justin Cooper. Paul? Justin Cooper. And how many was it? Tie break. Seven. Fuck. I was going to say seven. Okay, wait. You, so you don't, like, I'm, the closest guy gets yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't go seven. Go higher or lower, like Price is Right. Yeah. D- give, give me a number. But eight. You win. It was 11. Yeah. 11 whole shots? Yep. Wow, he's good. He is very good. All right. Uh, who had the most moto wins in the 50 class? Uh, Paul? Um... Jet Lawrence. Jet. And then how many do you, did he have? Eight. Seven. Paul wins. He said eight? eight? He had eight. Motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Uh, all Fuck. right. Who had the <laughs> – 250 class. Who had the most motos with the fastest lap? The most motos, 24 motos, fastest lap of the moto? Uh, Paul? Or, uh, yeah, My Charles? Charles. Charles? <laughs> uh, Thank you to three laps down for this, by the way. Fuck, this one's a hard one. Most motos with, with the, the fastest, fastest lap in the race? Yeah, in that moto. In that, in that moto. moto. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to go Jet. Well, right. we're talking 450 class, I thought. No, 250. It's oh. It's still 250. Uh, Justin Cooper. <clears throat> All right, you got it. It's Jet Lawrence. Damn. And uh, he had a seven. Seven motos. Was I close? That's what I meant with the uh, seven. I don't have the second place. Oh. Oh, wait. I do Fuck. have it, actually. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it has to be Cooper. Lap. Uh, it has to be Justin. Who else would it be? Yeah, Cooper was six. Oh, pretty yeah. close. Yeah, RJ with four. Man, we're really split hairs with these questions. Okay. Uh, how many riders had more than one whole shot uh, in this class all summer long? 24 motos. How many How many class? riders, 250 class, have had more than one whole shot? Oh, man. Um There's got to be some time on it, right? 
Is does there? I'm sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> Today, Junior. Four. Oh fuck, I was gonna say four. Um, more than one. Uh, more than one whole shot. I can't say four because it's the same. We're gonna be tired. Yeah, that's what I mean. You have to. So I gotta go. Oh, so I more. got lucky because I get to go first. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm rotating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'll go. F Wait, Cooper got eleven. Mm hmm. Eleven Fuck. of twenty-four. Fuck. That's, that's four. Uh. Five. Two. Two. Wow. Justin Cooper and Jeremy Martin. Ten different riders got one whole shot. Wow. Wow. So 11 for two. Cooper, then 10 for the other guys. That's 21, and he got three. Uh, Cooper got two. Jeremy Martin got two. So that's four, and then 20 guys? One, 11. Oh, no, 11 for Cooper, three for Jeremy Martin. Okay. One, 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 one. So 14 and 14 plus 10. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Wow. 250 class. I'm getting my ass kicked here. Uh, it's three to one. Three to one. Uh, how many riders uh, led laps? How many riders led laps this in summer? 450 class? 250, 250 class oh. still. All right. How many riders led laps, Charles? Um, do, 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 do. I mean, there's a lot of obvious I'm going to go... Yeah, there's more than I think, right? And I'm going to go. Know. I don't know how many you think. I'm going to go eight. Okay. Ooh. Justin he, Cooper. He had, hey, what? Charles had his fingers out. Like Me too. Yeah. I'm doing oh, it over okay. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Cooper, Jeremy Martin, Hunter Lawrence, Jet Lawrence, RJ Hampshire, Josh Varese, Jalik Swole. Oh. Where are you at? Seven? Oh, Voland, Max Voland. Uh, PC ever lead a lap? Did you have, uh, you had eight? Oh, man. He's at eight right now. I'm going to go nine. Fuck. You win. 11. Yep. Yes. <coughs> 11 uh -huh. riders. Uh, oh, you got to eight. I'm Cooper, like, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper, Jet, J Mart, RJ, Hunter, Moseman. Oh, I didn't get Moseman. I didn't get Swole. Where did, when, where did he lead? Oh, he led at Paula, yeah. Swole. Voland, Mumphy, Washugal. I oh, I would have forgot that. Shmoda. So I PC, didn't get that where did he lead laps at? I don't know. And Varese. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <coughs> uh, who got that one? Me. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Maybe he'll be a 450 guy. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, there's 450 <laughs> We're not even to the 450. Yeah, we're, we're not even there yet. Okay, don't sweat right. it. We're not. We're, we're, race yeah. ain't over. Yeah, we race rider D. We're not even halfway. Uh, bonus, cl bonus question for 250 class. Uh, how many motos did Justin Cooper lead? How many motos did Justin Cooper lead? Oh, 24 motos. God. How many did he lead a lap in? Uh, Paul. <sighs> 24 motos. How many did he lead a lap in? <clears throat> Marks, what's the time? Um, what, are we, what are we doing? I think we're past it, whatever it is. 17. All right. <clears throat> 16. 16 is right. God <laughs> damn it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and he, he, 16 Amotos, he won seven of the 16. Wow. Well. All right. All right, 450 class time. You guys, you guys ready? What are we at? 4 2? 4 2. 4 2. Here we go. Double that I have. All right. Uh, who did I uh, start with? I started with me in the 250s so first. Now I, need to go, now I need to go with Paul. Yeah, All right, so. here we go. Paul, 450 class. Who got the most hole shots? Cooper Webb. Cooper Webb. And how many? God, I set the over-under, basically, is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm setting the over-under. And I didn't that's, figure that out. That's first why, time. yeah. Oh, man. So I have to get it right. Well, Otherwise, you have to get it right. Nice. All right, five. All right. Six. It was seven. Oh, motherfucker. All right. Uh, I almost guessed seven, but I'm like, I'm going to be safe. and go six just in uh, case. Well, you shouldn't say anything until I speak. Because if then we'd have been Yeah. Tired. 450 class, who had the most moto wins, Chuck? 450 class, who had the most moto wins? Dylan Frandis. All right. Did I say that too cocky? I don't know. I didn't really think about I it. He's a champ. I just assumed he. Doesn't Kenny have two one ones in the season? He does. He has Thunder, he does. Thunder Valley, and he has he some other. Diller. Yeah, that's four right there already. What did you say? Most I said, moto. I said Ferrandis. Like I'm gonna go Roxon. All right, it's Ferrandis. Damn it! Mm. Yep. How close was it? Uh, seven. Ferrandis six. Seven. Uh, Is it wrong? Fuck. No, Ferrandis eight. Ken seven. Eli oh. six. Oh, so it's close. Yep. Mm. I, I didn't even think Eli. 
All right, I, I was four three for I, Chuck. Eli was. Here we go. Uh, who was the fastest qualifier the most? Uh, Paul. Four fifty class. Um, fastest qualifier. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. Fuck you! You're fired. <laughs> who was the fastest qualifier the most? This is riveting. <laughs> Fuck my ass. Makes it hard when you do that. Are you kidding me? Chuck is coming on here. I know he is. Fast and hard. Was it four and three? Yeah. Um. All right. Roxon. All right. I want to say Roxon too. Um, but you can say Roxon if you think. But then you got to guess. I have no idea how many. The next I'm question. Fucking guessing. Um. Some fans, you guys are. Um. I am going to say. Roxon. Okay. How, it, was Ken Roxon. First? it was Ken okay. Roxon. How many? I'm going to say, go, I'll go first since you've got the set That'd be fair. Time. That'd be fair. Um, I'm going to say. 12 races. Uh, four. All right. Fuck, that's tough. I know AC did it twice, I think. <laughs> Six. Uh, four. God, we should have studied these papers more when they were sitting here. Yep. I like had some info Damn. There. I want to say four. Well, you can't. I know. Five or three. Five is almost half the season. Three. Five. Fuck! Oh, wow. <laughs> four, four. <laughs> Things are heating I up. Wouldn't have, uh, I, I Marks, wouldn't. Uh, if, these, if these jerkies tie, we need some extra questions. So dig up uh, the stats if you can. Oh, so, come on. Uh, okay. I, can, I, I can, but I just give right. me some How many questions I'm left? Some warning. Yeah. How many questions left? Uh, three. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Three questions Somebody's, left. Somebody's winning. Yep. All right, here we go. This is tense. <laughs> Courtney, have you ever seen anything involving anything this tense? Never seen such sweaty men, no. All right, here we go. You need to work harder, Marks. Uh, <laughs> Damn who, it. <laughs> who had the fastest lap time of the day most often this season? Fastest lap of the day. Just total fastest lap out of everybody. 250 and 450. 450. 450. Oh. Yep. I thought you were. Uh, so I started. I, I already lost count. I started with you. So didn't I? So like, who did I start with? You started with Paul and then no, I no. did the first. The last question. Who, who did the last question? Um, it was Ken Roxon. No, he did. Yes. Yeah, so and then I Charles, went first on that. Right. Um, the fastest lap of the day. This is a both class thing? No, no 450. 450. Class. So, oh. But it's different than fastest qualifier. So you're assuming that motos, some yeah, of the motos are faster. This is or motos. Not including practice. Not including. This is not motos. including practice. Ferrandis. Yes. Right. I'm going to say Ferrandis. Right. I'm going to say Tomac. Oh. Tomac it is. That's a Boom! good one. That's a good one. Uh, good pull. Uh, let me see uh, what the thing was. Uh, he just goes. Fastest lap moto. Tomac 9. Uh, Ferrandez five. Wow, a lot more. Almost oh, double. Yeah. Rocks in four. AC three. Gets in that Tomac Sexton beast two, mode. And Barsha wow. one. Wow, way better. All way right. more. Here we go. Uh, so, yeah, if you get this, Paul, you, you clinch it. A round early. Yeah. A round early, yeah. Okay. Uh, how many riders in the 450 class led laps this year? How many That's riders me, right? in the 450 class mm -hmm. led laps? Yep. <laughs> How many riders led second. laps? I can't do it with this stupid music. Got to deal with the pressure, bro. This is like being on a game show. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the idea, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, come on. God let's let's. How many riders led laps? Six. <laughs> I told him to say six. Oh, now I got to go over or under that. You, well, we need a number, but I yeah. know. Yeah. Fuck! I had six in my mind. Um. <laughs> Five. Is that your final answer? Yes. Nine. Whoa. What? Nine. Give him to me. Roxon, Ferrandis, Got Tomac, Got it. AC, Got it. Sexton, Got it. Barsha. Oh, my God. I forgot AC. I had Barsha, and then I don't know Webb. Oh, I didn't do Webb. AP. Mm -hmm. I when forgot AP. AP would lead a lap. Craig. Redbud. Craig at Hangtown. <coughs> you oh! Yeah. And AP at, AP at Redbud. I didn't get AP. I didn't get AP or Craig. Well, I didn't either. Craig just I did it like two days ago. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, well, well congratulations, man. Paul. Thank you. 
Uh, it's last it's question. hard with that music, by the way. Last, last question. Last How many motos did Ken Roxon lead out of the 24 motos? How many rocks? How many motos did Ken Roxon lead? Bonus question. Lead within it? This, lead lead how many did he lead? Yep. Um, yep. How many did he win? Well, we did that earlier. I think it was like seven. Or yeah, something. he won seven. So seven, I'll say. <coughs> okay. No, more than that. I think about Hangtown Moto 1. He just got tracked down after leading. Oh, yeah. I Sorry. I was, looking, I was thinking of right. weird. No. I was thinking if he was out front, he would win, but no. 13. That's me double seven, probably. 12. Huh. Man. 12 motos. Good. Congratulations, Paul Parabino. Thank you. Skosh. Where's my prize? Dot com. Oh, just calm down. Okay, I'll get it. Well, to I'm trying. Oh, got upstage JT. Pulp 2021 is the code to save. It. He's really excited. Yeah, it's got a Dean Wilson signature, right? Uh, thanks to those uh, guys at Skosh for doing that. Uh, Stupid it's game. right over there. <laughs> 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 if, thanks if to Pulp Didn't Fantasy, win the bike. If Pulp didn't win the skull. wasn't so dumb, I'd pay attention to the race more. <laughs> Instead, I'm watching idiots in 24. Why, why are you looking at me? Because it's your fault. I don't know much about what's going on at the front. Huh. Uh, Pulp MX 20 is the code to save with the guys at Manscaped. Uh, really love this thing. Courtney, have you seen Travis, you know, like, have you seen an in, have you been more attracted to Travis since he's got the Manscaped? Travis was always Manscaping, but, um, it's gotten cleaner. Smoother. M more frequent yep. visits. Yeah. Yeah. To the Manscaping. The so it, the equipment's just easy to use. Heck yeah. Marks, you have find yourself using it more often? Yes. Have, have you, Courtney, have you looked into this at all? The the, the four pointer, the Lawn Warrior four pointer. I have not personally yeah. for myself, oh, okay. but I know what it is. The light on it, it's got a light on it, it's got art it's waterproof. Shaving in the dark or something? Yeah, manscaping in the dark, Dude, bro. You never know when you gotta get in there in the corners of the shower and stuff. Got it. So uh Pulp MX twenties is saved the code to save with these guys. The performance package four point oh includes the lawnmower four point oh. It also, uh, uh, it's got a bunch of stuff in there that's uh, fantastic. It's got a 7,000 RPM motor. It's got an on-off switch. It's got a travel lock. It's got a, a, a ball guard or something, right? Yep. It yep. Designed for groin grooming. Yeah. It's got a, it's got a little uh, uh, guard on there so you don't really cut yourself. All right. It's got the box there. Even when, like, you can hit your ball sack and it doesn't make you, like, shock no, you. No, <laughs> It's got a guard on it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. When you hit it with a yeah. normal clipper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like being electrocuted. <laughs> well, the right? the Manscape 4.0 will not do that. It will not do that. It's fantastic. Get a little too close with the normal trimmer, and you're yep. like, thought you'd murdered somebody in Texas or something. You're being executed. <laughs> How bad it hurts. Well, it's got a groin guard on it. It's good. Or a ball guard, or that's safe. Whatever. Uh, thanks to the guys at, guys at Manscape again. Manscape.com. Uh, please check it out. And uh, yeah, the lawnmower 4.0, and you will not regret it. It's uh, it's basically just yeah. It's a weed whacker for your, your Nuts. balls. Yeah. <laughs> Trim it up too, right? Like. Yeah. Kiefer's doing a full test, right? Kiefer's doing a full test. He will report next time he's in. Yep. Like I got more more photos. Probably. What I hope not. Courtney, what percent would you say increases your chances of if your balls are shaved and your and your balls are not shaved of getting them in a in a woman's mouth? Ooh, they gotta. They got to be smooth, right? Right. Yeah. So, like, no, no in hundred percent increase, at I, least, right? Yeah. That's, a, I, that's a testimonial. I feel good. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> we're I, selling landscapes over here. <laughs> if I'm a chick and some dude just got <laughs> Jumanji, I'm out. Yeah, right? I'm out because what else has this dude been doing? Exactly. What else you got hiding in there? Right. And also, too, it's such a hypothetical or hypocritical thing where the men are like, "Hey." Groom that up and and they don't do know, nothing and they don't do nothing. Yeah, like, absolutely. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. Right. That thank you. That, that is bullshit. Yeah. It's like when like women are super slutty and dudes are like, oh, I would touch a chick. She bangs everybody, but meanwhile you're out banging. Like, who cares? She's banging everybody. Good. So are you. It's such hypothetic. Hmm. Hypocrit it hypocritical. Hypocritical. Groom hypocritical. It up. I keep struggling with that. Hypothetical. Pulp it's hypothetical and hypocritical. <laughs> Pulp X twenty is the code to save with Manscaped. Thanks to those guys for coming on board with us and use that code and save. Uh, Ryan Gall just bought one. Used the code and got one. So Holy. I, I bet he clogged that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a hairy man. <laughs> I am interested in finding out what, how Galdi uh, liked it. So, yeah, be like Galdi. Yeah. Take care of your junk, and it'll take care of you. Big Galdi fan. All right. I like Galdi, too. He's good, dude. He's funny. Uh, you, I mean, you're a Galdi fan. Your Calgary <laughs> dinner still yeah. will, it will forever live Which in one infamy. of those uh, Moto Concepts team dinners where you got to stand up and do a speech and stuff with Galdi. It was it was unbelievable. <laughs> His speech, you mean? Oh, just did a whole thing. His speech was great, <laughs> great. I mean, there was at one point he was talking about his Italian versus uh, Genova's Italian, Alessi versus uh, what one? Who was uh, on the GDR team? That Diggs. 
F- Fasciati, right? Oh, Fasciati, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he, he was, you know, my Italian's better than your Italian, and he had Oh, he was just mocking the MCR dinner oh, the whole he, night? No, he was at the dinner, and he stood up to do his speech, and oh, he started MCR talking was shit. there. Yeah, we were at the MCR dinner. We oh. were there Genova at the table. paid for it. Genova paid for it. He split it with Diggs. Oh, it was yeah. Genova in Canada. What did I miss? They did the whole year. They yeah, Alessi raced, raced up there. Alessi raced up there. Oh, right. Yeah, Phil, and it was Phil, like this Phil. Yeah. big. Yeah, that, that, this was the year before yeah, that, year I think. Before but that, yeah. yeah, whole dinner, and we're at the, the MCR team dinner, and then he gets up and starts giving a speech, and he starts p- pitting Fasciati versus Alessi, which is already a weird dynamic because they both think they're going to win the title both on the GDR Honda team, <laughs> and he starts just talking about the Canadian stallion that Fasciati is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. So uh, thanks to the guys at Manscaped. Um, all right, we got a, the motorsport.com tweet at tit segment as well. We got a lot more stuff going on. Courtney, how's everything going? Are you, are you good? I'm great. Like, you I feel just, like you're handling this well? I would like my own segment. Tweet at, tweet at uh, tits or tweet at Talon's not going to cut it next time, you know? She already wants an intro. She wants her own yeah, I want yeah, my own, own intro. intro. Should we just give her the dark side one or something? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that one's great. I'll right. never not love that one. Right, right. It's fantastic. So it's some um, of the best work to come out of the pulp empire. It, 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 it came from it came from a fan on Twitter. That's really? why it's some of the best work. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> <that> explains <laughs> it. That explains it. it. Free work is better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, sounds good. Um, yeah, Courtney. So and Courtney, we still really. So you work at a salon, a waxing salon. I do. We still want to do that with Kiefer. On the air, let's let's do it. We can. Why don't we just put him on? Can we put that on YouTube? Absolutely not. Get him. In. <laughs> yeah, we can. You think YouTube's yeah, we can. Shut just us down? blur it. Just blur it. You got to have his can't, face though. Just a quick backstrip. Give me thirty seconds. And out. No, back. Whistle. Let's get. We, I want the taint. <laughs> well, he should be manscaping, right? Yeah. Well, we got to tell him to grow it out yeah. for a while. Yeah. Like, hey, no manscaping. Take right. the batteries out of your machine here for a bit. <laughs> I mean, he'll do it. And then full we go in there and we get the full Brazilian. Full charging. I see that going really well. Yeah. Me too. yeah, he he said he'll do it. So we that was a, we were gonna right, Marks. That was we a plan at it, some yeah. point. I, yeah, well. Kiefer he, was down. He probably hasn't been back since. No, he was down. He was it was Kiefer's idea even. I yeah, know. I want I want to come for this. <laughs> I, I want in. You're gonna have a packed house just to watch. <laughs> it. I want I want in on this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so we can still do this, Courtney. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Okay. All right. Just yeah. think about how much toilet paper he'll save after he gets waxed. Yeah. Good point. Take a poop. For a while. Two plies. <laughs> Boop. Oh man, I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like didn't really think about scraping it. turds out of a rug. You know what I mean? You need like need to go through a whole roll to like get there's clean. There's a sharpie down there. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, think of the money it'll save. Wow. Still poop. <laughs> still things are going. Yeah, things are going sideways. Fuck Chuck's, my ass. Chuck's uncomfortable. <laughs> Chuck is. <laughs> uh, you know, you know what I mean, though, right? Yeah. I'm Good example. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. Poop out of a rug. Should we? Yeah. Uh, I, I almost think burst off the hard one. Keep having to grab it. Keeps getting stuck, and the, you're basically combing the carpet this with the like toilet a paper. Personal problem, Paul. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks to Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, and Decal Works, Vortex Racing, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Vertex Pistons, X Brand Goggles, Michelin Star Cross Five, Maxima USA, ORW, Skosh, Pro Filter, Firepower Batteries and Chains, FMF, Atlas Neck Brace, Works Connection. Remember, we're giving away Works Connection Pro Launch Device, uh, and Pulp MX20 is the code to save the Works Connection. OGO Power Sports, Art of Sport, Get Data, Guts Racing. Love the guys at Guts Racing. Uh, do a great job for a lot of teams in the pits. WUSA, uh, get your wheels done over there, r- whether it's the edge set of wheels, uh, whether it's a full custom set like you see on the race teams out there. WUSA can handle it. Uh, flat tracking, vintage bikes. They built my 500 wheels. And, Paul, you even remarked how good the 500 wheels look. They look the bike looks good. Yeah. It's coming along. It looks nice. All right. Ride Engineering on board with us. In 10 Cycles, loaning Caslu a taser today for the ride. Uh, Justin, great. Justin's on one. Justin, you got some info on the Pulp Mex Fantasy overall winner? Yeah, the overall winner is actually uh, Vincent Murphy from the uh, 250 East class. What? Oh, really? Vincent Murphy. I know a yeah, Vincent Yeah, Vincent Murphy who got the, uh, he went overall number one. Wow. That's cool. That's awesome. Eat um, Army athlete. Uh, that's awesome. He probably is really wishing he would have won the bike, though, you know? Oh, absolutely. He wishes he would win a bike. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like, you know what I mean? He's got the overall. But he but, didn't win a yeah. prize all year, right? Didn't win nothing all year. Just played every single week. And even when he was in school, at races, just kept playing. And That's cool. We're going to make him something got, cool, like a, yeah. a, a yearly one, tradition. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah, cool. No, he definitely yeah. uh, had some pretty insane weeks. He played in a couple of our leagues, and we're, right. it, it's been insane. Where does he live? Uh, he's from New York. Okay. Damn it. 
Why? Why? Damn it! I just we gotta ship it okay. across the country. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> so by, by the way, uh, Travis has run the draw 260 times while we were doing the thing. No Chuck. Can I like? Is there a list that can confirm my name is in there? I, I, I just I just want to. This is just proof of how random it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get them all sorry, out of the way. Sorry, get, get me ready for next year. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks going. for the call, Justin. <laughs> thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for playing Pulp Mix Fantasy too, Justin. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll be back at Anaheim 2022. Maybe. Oh, let's not talk about it yet. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The uh, Pulp MX, the motorsport.com tweet at tit segment. Let's do this. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important bulletin from motorsport.com. It's the tweets at tits QA segment where your twatted questions find answers. Just got a text tits. from got a text from a mutual friend of ours, Marx, that says Marx's basement AF. Well, we knew that already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Who was it? Yeah. No, I'm not telling you. No, who was it? I'm not telling you. I need. I need to send a text. Uh. All right. F so, Motorsport.com. Love these guys. They sell 100%. They sell Renthal. They, they sell X Brand. They sell FMF. They sell Atlas. They sell W. They sell everything. Motorsport.com. Free shipping on anything over 79 bucks. So, uh, OEM parts and aftermarket parts as well. Uh, I just got. Uh, uh, um, Tony Berluti hooked up with guys at Motorsport, so that's great, and uh, as well as Andrew Short. So they're all on board with Motorsport.com. And great th- radio. Thanks to those guys uh, for all that they do. So these questions are submitted to at Papa Mech Show on Twitter, and uh, the girl over there in the corner is going to read them to us. The lovely lady. The lovely lady. All right, let's do this, Court. All right, let's do this. Do thing. you do you mind getting called Court? Nope, love okay. it. Okay. All right, this one is for Paul. This one's from Joe. What is the blame pie like for Steve's wheel falling apart? Do you think Mathis was on top of checking his spokes? I, I, Steve has to take some blame pie for sure. I don't think so. Of course. I d- and I, when's the last time you checked those suckers? Okay, I have a spoke torque wrench. Okay. So when's when the like, wheels... How old is it, like when you were a mechanic? No. Okay. Uh, fast guy sent me a new one. Oh, cool. Um, so I check them. When the wheels are new, obviously, and then I check them a couple times, and then when like, they stop moving, when you they stop, stop moving, checking them, I stop checking them. Right, and that's fair. I, and so I think Paula was pretty bad on wheels. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, maybe and it's just he cases shit out of something. Does that have anything to do with running that um, scoop tire? A really hard think, square edge. I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. All right. Well, I, 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 I have to take some blame pie ultimately because the bike was mine and it failed. Uh, so I have to take some blame pie. But maybe not that much. And the tire didn't go flat. Was it still of air? Tire did not go yeah, flat. Yeah, why did no. the caliper get all jacked up? Because the wheel was wobbling. But he kept riding, trying to and ride? And the spokes were running into the... Oh, the spokes Because the broken. spokes broke in the hub. They didn't break in the in the wheel. Right. Or, I'm sorry, in the rim. <coughs> all right, this one is from the Voice of the Drunken People. Who was oh more boy. nervous before the motos on Saturday? Jet or a privateer that's both on Paul's and Dan's fantasy teams? Oh boy! Oh, well, jet probably. Jet, because the privateers don't know that until afterwards. Yeah. When unless Paul somebody goes to see them before the motos. Yeah. Like Paul. Well, yes. I don't text riders like Dan. Paul. Oh. <laughs> Paul went up to Austin. Is it Austin? Austin Black. Black yeah. Black. The black kid. Don't say the black kid. Yeah. That, that was go fine. Well for no, you. listen. I don't fuck off, everybody. <laughs> everybody can fuck off. <laughs> like if you're too stupid to realize that the B is capitalized, meaning yeah. somebody's name, then you're an idiot. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to bow down to the morons. Okay. Got it. Paul went up to that kid and was like, don't you fucking quit. And that is not what I said. You weren't there. Don't you you pull said off. you pointed at him. Yeah, I said. I, <laughs> I said, one thing we don't do. We and do not quit. And I did the point thing, yeah. Okay. And then his dad was there. Yeah. And his dad says. His dad backed you. His dad says, we don't fucking quit. Right, okay. And I said, that solidified yes. him on our team. <clears throat> yep. Right along with Elzinga. Oh, Elzinga. I blame you guys for Rick. Elzinga. We, it looked good. Terrible. Got yeah, 100 well. points at Hangtown. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Smart. Sure yeah. Thanks, did. Rick. Thanks, Rick. All right. This one's from Joe for Steve. We know Cody Shock earned a lot of credit this year. Who lost a lot? Anderson, Forkner, Bogle. I don't think those guys lost a lot. I mean, Forkner didn't do anywhere near what we thought, but he got better by the end. He might have had a podium ripped away at Hangtown. I mean, he's running well in that first moto. Um, Anderson, no, like whatever. He just got hurt, yeah. Yeah, he could have come back. It wasn't even hurt, yeah. his fault when he got hurt. Right. Um, no, I don't. N- none of those guys lost respect. No, I, I, I'm not gonna go with that, Courtney. Come on, come on, come on, Joe. <coughs> All right, this one's from Clinton Fowler. Why does the moto community think it's okay to wear spandex on a mountain bike? It's for cross country racers and roadies. It is okay. I wanted the ass pad. You pedal a lot. 
We're not standing up, jumping all through the rocks. We just, we pedaled a lot. You're supposed to wear shorts with chamois and then baggies over it. Can you just leave me alone, ready. everybody? I can wear whatever the hell I want. Thank you. Can I just ride my bike in I peace? Did, did I say anything comments? to either of you? No, 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 no. The Instagram I, went off. I was supposed they to. They make say shorts with a butt pad in them. Yeah. Well, well they make. You put like, the chamois underneath. Yeah, riding shorts. Two like layers yeah. in a hundred degree heat. Yeah, I yeah. Know, I know exactly. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. That's, I, that's another thing I say. I'm key like, factor here. I have a pair that fit me pretty well. The, the, the another company that starts with F and it's three letters okay. gave me a pair, mm -hmm. and they're fucking hot. They're hot. They work great. They fit great. They're hot. It's yep. 120 degrees out here. I wanted the taint pad. Well, no, no one's. Ever, you always get the taint pad. So that doesn't matter. Well, that part factor. I'm sorry. I don't layers. own a pair of shorts with a taint pad. I'm sorry. I don't. You have to, you no, have to wear the shorts with it. the taint pad and yeah. then slide on another pair of so shorts. So, what you would that. do is you would wear what you wore today and then put a pair of pants over top. Little shorts over That's it. retarded. Well, talk That's to the people want. on Instagram. That's what they want no. when you're riding the mountain bike. <laughs> don't, you don't acknowledge the crackpots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what they want. I just fucking kick it. All right. All right. This one's from JHP with 100% winning every single title there this year. Mm -hmm. How much did go. they pay out to the writers if they did at all? Well, we definitely paying some bonuses. Um, I couldn't even. I'd have six to really figures. sit down a thing. Yeah, six that's figures. a good estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Yeah, I would say. All right. From Victor Flores. So a couple of weeks ago, you were talking to Dungy about stepping into a role like Kennard does for Honda. Do you think that Zaka would step into a role like that for Husky if and when he retires? Yeah, that was supposed to be his gig is testing and working with the riders and working with the bike. Now, I heard lately that he may come back even. Now, did you gentlemen hear that? I heard something similar. I heard something like that. Yeah. So I guess his back is getting better, right? Mm -hmm. He's doing all the therapy. He's working well. So, yeah. From Jesse318, is career-ending injury insurance in play for Baggett's wrist or Osborne's back? I, I would don't. think so, but I don't know if they have it. I don't know. Yeah. Baggett's wrist is career-ending? I don't think. If you have it on there, yeah. You see the right doctor. Yeah. But I don't know. Did they ever invest in a policy like yeah, that? Who knows, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I would think so. anything that you can try to prove that's lingering that hurts your, you know, say, yeah. So. Okay. All right. This one's for, um, for Paul from Vincent Brewington. Is Renthal ever going to make a lock on MX Grip? Oh, my God. Please say no. No. Thank you. No. <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, maybe. Really? What do you mean? You might make a lock on Grip. People I mean, want maybe. Those. They people, they people sell like crazy, Steve. I don't personally <laughs> run one, but people do. People people like them. People don't like dealing with glue and that stuff. Yeah, it's super fucking tough to deal with the glue and the contact. Cleaner. I mean, you had a yeah. tough time with it on the five hundred. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is not called for. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> pretty accurate. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Give, him, give him another one. Give him another one. Thank you, thank you. Just. We did wow. spot an issue on the 500. Yeah. Paul had to go look for more grips. <sighs> Next question. <laughs> All right, Steve. This one's from Randy Hamilton. Now that the fantasy season is over, will you be giving Marks a deadline for the new app? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the app's coming out Friday. I heard it's coming Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Any Friday, Friday now. Right. Seriously, though. Okay, Marks, for reals. He's getting so uncomfortable Marks, right now. Marks, for reals. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you were like, hey, I worked on the app today. Yeah, I say that all the time. Is I don't say that all the time, but every once in a while. Has anything happened recently? Uh, yeah, in the last couple of weeks, we'll say. Oh, yeah, okay. I think just keep delaying, and before you know it, apps will be like VCRs. You know what I mean? Like there'll be something new. If this right. app were <laughs> if this app were mozzarella sticks, I'd be sending it back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't get the joke. <laughs> okay. I mean, you could send them back if you ever got them. What's what? Is there something behind that joke? That's you, you don't have the app joke. What's the app joke? You, it's because it, the app's not out. Yeah. Okay. Never received. So a, a, a short <coughs> short word for appetizer is app. Oh. Uh, mozzarella sticks. Got it. Um, Potato skins. Got it. I guess. Okay. Um. Okay, but no, for <coughs> real. For, for, for yeah, I'll reals. work. I'll work on it. What are we thinking? A uh, couple months probably. That hurts. <laughs> what do you mean that hurts? If We're going to need to start worrying about fantasy in a couple yeah, of months. Yeah, yeah that's, where I'm, that. that's you know. where I'm getting at. Like, he's going to have to tune up the fantasy thing. Well, you know. All right. When I go on vacation and I can't even get a vacation without working on Pulp stuff, how do you expect me to work on the app? Courtney. What kind of I'm vacation of do you give your employees? Like, what do they get? What's in their package? It's an attractive oh, salary package. What's in their package? It's an attractive. Benefits. 
Jeez. His package is great. How oh. many? Oh, how many? Like you know, how many paid days off in their package? Uh, their package is it, that's not for you. T- that's an HR violation of asking mm. about my package. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, my Just package is competitive. Fine. Salary and benefits is what mm-hmm. is what it is. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Next question. Next question. Couple months, he said. Take apps take what, a long you, time to make, th- man. Th- what do you think it is? You just throw the shit together. Copy and paste. Like, yeah. Come and see. Got to beta test it, right? Come Marks, on, do some other. Uh, give me some other big words. Control, delete. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. All right. From Patrick Spackey, I've always wondered what to do. What do the writers, mechanics, team members do for healthcare? They buy it. They yeah. They they yeah. They get it all. It's like an individual policy. Right, right like, yeah. Um, I think uh, writers, some of the big writers do kind of different, more expensive programs, I think. And stuff, yeah. But like, yeah. Mechanics get basic normal. Healthcare. Right. They, the, the, the fact that there's writers that don't have health insurance, though, is just insane. There's writers that don't have health insurance? Of course, yeah. That's risky. If you get hurt at AMA, AMA has health insurance. So if you get hurt at a race, you do have some coverage through the AMA. But it's kind of like a... I never, I don't think I ever used it, but it's kind of like a secondary type thing. Yeah. Like, like you have your own health insurance, and then they basically will like cover Top up to a certain yeah. amount after that right. type thing. I thought you had to like prove you have health insurance just to go to a local race. No, you don't have no, to prove anything. So, yeah. yeah, it's up to you if you want to have it or not. My that's body, my on, choice, bro. Yeah. The, the that's what's. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> no, but I'm just. <laughs> but okay, you're, the 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 world is freaking out about this vaccine, and you. So how is mandatory health care going to go? I thought that's what's on that. Uh, that thing you signed. <laughs> what are you talking about? I swear to God, you have to provide like, like even when like if you go race Loretta's or something, you have to. It says in there you need to have your own medical insurance. Yeah, I think that's just you saying sign you're not relying on them to have it for you. I think. Yeah, that yeah, I think it's just like, hey, like it's, we're completely covered because like you signed this. You're saying oh. you. Have nobody's it actually checking it, right? Nobody's actually saying like, hmm. can I see? But even it's like a you know broke dick privateer when I was like. Do you teenager, think teenager like I would I had to go get my own health insurance once I fell off my right. parents plan like right. I had to go find a blue cross yeah. blue shield yeah, pay yeah, yeah. $80 a month or whatever the hell it right. was I don't right. remember back right. then like and keep up on it right yeah. like so how do you feel like when somebody gets hurt and they don't have health insurance and then there's you should get Phil on the phone about that there's GoFundMe's everywhere <coughs> I don't know man <coughs> next question okay yeah. Just All wonder. right, from Josh, does Gas Gas regret signing Barsha instead of Frandis with the success Frandis had? And hmm. would Frandis have had as good of a season on the Gas Gas? That's uh, something That's that, question. like, like so. I heard somebody didn't want Frandis at KTM. Frandis <coughs> wanted to go to Gas Gas. Mm-hmm. Like, like, he won the title from Yamaha. And it, let me make no mistake about it. He did really good. He wanted to go to Gas Gas. For a hell of a lot less and money. And they were trying everything to get him there. Mm-hmm. And, and it just didn't happen. Who, so Who put the kibosh on that? I don't really know. What can you tell us who you no, heard? I don't oh. know. No. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I yeah, just know I, that was a right. conversation. It was trying right. hard because the goggle deal yeah. was up in the air. Right. Because gas, gas, he can't do his own goggle right. deal. Right. So I know that was a. And, was and I know he couldn't do his gear deal, but then he had said to them or something like, "I don't even care that much. Like, don't worry about it. Like, yeah. I just want which wanna, is a lot of money. I want to ride your bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll yeah. take hits here. You wanted you know. to be on the gas, gas bad. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. But so I don't think Ferrandis was getting the feeling that. KTM wanted him as bad as he wanted to go there. Right. So where second, Yamaha wanted him. Second question: Does he do as well in a gas gas? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. From Sean Moore, Steve. Realistically, how long do you think Racer X can keep printing the physical magazine before they go digital only? I think it's fine. I think it's the most successful motocross magazine out there, so that's a good thing. And there'll always be. I mean, if you're MX Sports and Racer X, you use it as a promotion for your series. Outdoor series, GNCC series. I wish more people would read it, man. There's some stuff that I do stories in there that, that are really, really good, and I put a lot of work into them, and yeah. nobody reads them, and it sucks. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm to blame too. Like I have, I don't read as many magazines as I used to. There's no way, no, nobody does. Nope. No. Um. So yeah, I I think, but I think it's I think it's okay. I think it's I think they'll keep going. Like we we still advertise in there. Yeah. So do we. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right. This one's from Scott Carter. Do you see Roxton moving to Supercross only contract anytime in the future? I heard next year. Yeah, I can I heard, see that. I heard next year. I haven't heard anything, but yeah. I can see it. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I just heard yeah. like rumors are that he may go Supercross only. And they're asking in regards to his struggles, <clears throat> his struggles outdoors when it gets too hot. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. But what would they do outdoors? I don't know. Just have one guy. 
Jet. Well, they already got three, right? So <laughs> generation. Well, uh, I don't one know. one bet in the four fifty class. I feel like that's kind of a lot of effort. I don't know, Chuck. You don't have the answers? No. I can tell you what Vital would strike up here. Cody Shock. Cody Shock. <laughs> Cody Shock. Cody Shock. <laughs> right. Give Henry Miller the buy. <laughs> they, they, switch, they switch quick. They it do. goes from. Yeah, they do. All right. This one's from the voice of the drunken people. Steve, how do you back check on the burnout thing so hard? Do you not remember endlessly yes. complaining about rocks being thrown all over the pits and possibly injuring people? Yeah. Fucking guy. Listen, I don't care about a burnout. I'm fine with a little short fucking burnout for a couple of minutes. Yeah, on the podium like, thing. At MXDN, they were burning out with the gravel and rocks were shooting everywhere. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're on a solid surface, you're on Daytona Speedway, you're on the no podium. On a podium, you're not shooting rocks everywhere. Burnouts are fine. And then you know what you do? Shut the bike down and celebrate with your team. Don't try to fucking yeah. blow it up. And, and just keep revving it and keep blowing it up. I mean, it's just the, those guys. That, when you're trying to blow it up, that's where I draw the line. I that's like to, stupid. I like to get you riled up, but I have to, I'm with you on this. It's fucking dumb. It's What's so dumb. What's what, the point? No one can talk. No one can speak. There's smoke everywhere. It, 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 there's sparks flying everywhere. The, the head pipe is 8,000 degrees. You have a possibility of throwing a rod through a case and hot oil spraying a bunch of people. Yeah, You're dumb. spraying beer in the exhaust like a moron, and the beer is hitting you in the face. Like, yeah, hey, that's so much fun. Oh, yeah, let me get my fucking beer in my face. Yeah. yeah like, what? You. Like, do a classy burnout. Finger up, burn out, ah, shut her down, party with your team. What's so fucking hard about that? Yeah, I'm with you. Thank you. How many burnouts did Dean do? We didn't do any, actually. Yeah, I didn't think so. Classy. I do like it when you drink a beer off the exhaust, though. That's <laughs> cool. I wanted, I should have done that. All right. This one's from. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's so dumb. From Ryan.Tanner. I know it's a long time away, but any chances of SoFi in LA and Allegiant in LV hosting Supercross races in 2023? Maybe. I don't know. The Vegas people don't want the dirt, apparently. Uh, I don't know about SoFi. I can't see SoFi either. That yeah. place is so nice. I assume those are expensive places to rent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Supercross will go to Home Depot Center. <laughs> right down there. Yeah, probably. And yeah, a fraction of the price. How was attendance at the LA Supercross that we had in, what is that, 11 or 12 or whatever that was? I don't think was? it was good. But one of the oh, years the Dodger it Stadium? Yeah. Yeah. It rained. It wasn't remember? great. It yeah. wasn't good? Yeah, it rained really hard. The Trey Kennard, Ryan yeah. Moe was muddy. Was muddy. Um, no. yeah, was it? We, never, we didn't have a mud race there. Yeah. I mean, it, it was muddy like rain drizzled all day. Yeah. It, wasn't like a full no. on mutter, but it was a yeah. It was a chance of rain, so people didn't come. Yeah. I don't remember. I was a mechanic there. But I don't remember that. We went twice, though, right? Yeah, just once. Twice. Oh, maybe I was the one. There the time the that one. Trey got landed on was the was mud kind one. of a mud type thing. Okay. Remember, like Gavin Faith <laughs> filled in on like a Geico Honda or something. And it was yeah, it was kind of right. muddy. All right. Mm. Practice. Next. All right, Steve. This one's from Pingree's Lost Championship. With Suzuki having a much better season this year with HEP and Barks, do you think this will jumpstart the higher-ups in Japan to start developing a new bike, or will HEP have to hire Troll Daddy to put some results on the board to get things moving? They should hire Troll Daddy. Absolutely. I'm calling it Barks from now on. That's fucking awesome. Barks is good. That's awesome. It's Bar, <laughs> it's bar X. Uh, no, it's court, that's fine. Barks is I, cool. Yeah, yeah, same, same. <coughs> right? I, I don't think this changes anything on head up people at Japan. Like I don't think the like Barks Suzuki. Like they're watching it going, oh, this, <laughs> this uh, yeah. Schwartz kid got ninth. Oh, shit, I mean, let's fire up the. If, if they were firing, they're watching it, MotoGP. Like if they were firing <laughs> it up, they would have had to fire it up like three years ago for two yeah. years from now. Or like, like when, deal, right. how about when Amart won last year? There, there's no. Did I he win a moto? Did he I, win last year? Loretta? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I talked to someone and told me there is no, like, there's no development. There's no R and D crew. There's nothing for there's Suzuki. Nobody's working on anything just anywhere. Well, not on dirt bikes. Yeah, Graf they're, they're developing they're scooters. Yeah, yeah. Graphic designers changing right, the graphics. Right. Right. All right, this one's from Zans. Why can't you guys acknowledge that Shimoda was PC's best and most consistent writer? Mitch has to be glad they picked him up. He, he was. Wasn't, who hasn't acknowledged uh, yeah, that? He, he was, was for yeah. sure. Who? Yeah. Best and most consistent is accurate. Say, did the guy say, why haven't you? Why can't you guys acknowledge? Oh, why can't we? Why can't you acknowledge it? I, no I can acknowledge it. That's I, true. I think I've acknowledged all yeah. of that, yeah. That's true. I still think Forkner can win races next yeah. year. And, and I, I think Forkner is... If you're sitting down even today writing a check to someone, I think you, you, is you he bet bigger on Forkner. Is you. Shimoda the only one that won a race this year? No, Seth did. Mm -hmm. Who else is on their team? McAdoo, McAdoo did. McAdoo won, yeah. So Supercross. They got Wackers. three Supercross wins. Wackers. Wackers doesn't want to be called Wackers anymore. Wackers, he doesn't have a choice. No. That's it? Yeah. Okay. 
Can't pick your nickname. I okay. like Madu. Madu's good. I like that too. I like Whackers. That's pretty cool. All right. Last one here from Randy Murray. This one is for Cass Lou. We all know Pulpamix is a big baseball fan. Do you have any details on the signing of Fernando Tatis, Tatis? 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 Jr. and his signature glasses? I'm sure that was a high dollar contract multi-year deal. How does it work? Um, it's significantly less than people would think. Yeah. So you told um, me before that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that signature sunglass deal, like, I mean, it was, it was like the closest I could think to like a like a Nike drop of people like waiting for stuff. Like they sold out, like we're talking in minutes on yep. our website. There was, a, there were stuff sold to um, retailers, like baseball type sporting yep. goods stuff. But like the biggest part of it was our online deal. And I mean, it, we're talking like minutes and people were pissed. They right. didn't get them. Damn and then we, we did another production run and got them in and we did like a whole email to people that yep, wanted them. And, yep. and it was still, people were just pissed at us that they didn't get them. And we're wow. like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, do you have another? Made hundreds of these, but but, but again, it's fast. not as much money as you would think for a no. guy like Fernando no. Tatis. Like, yeah, right. Like you know, Cooper Webb's getting significantly more money from us than yeah. Fernando Tatis. That's insane to think about that. Yeah, yeah. which C- because uh, I guess they don't wear them all the time. They don't wear them. No, all the time. it's different. And, and I'm gonna get too much inside inside baseball. Uh, oh, but bet, bets would like to. But um, like the access you have to like a guy like Tatis at the payment that you're paying him, like you're standing there with his agent looking at his watch, going, "You have X amount of time." Like, what are you doing? Okay, it's done. We're leaving. Like you don't, we're like a guy like Cooper. There's contractual um, requirements for the amount of time, like photo yeah. shoots and things. Yeah. But like it's generally like it's like, hey, we're doing a photo shoot. And they yeah. ever be there and we do whatever. Hey, right. can you come to the office? Okay, right. I'll come to the office. Like it's pretty loose. Tatis is like, hey, put Tatis these on. Is like, we no, got a photographer. And the, and the contract says you get X amount of minutes, and then you get that. The guy, the agent is standing there. Oh, okay, you're done. It, it's the amount of minutes are yeah, in the you're, contract. You're done. Yeah, oh. no. For it's the like photo shoot. You get like one photo shoot or whatever the yeah, um, whatever, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, we can be there for 30 minutes on this day or 20 minutes or an hour and a half, whatever it is. Right. And he's there with your, you're on that clock. And when it's done, yeah, he's, yeah. his job is to take Tatis and leave. Right. Like yeah, you yeah. can't just linger around. Right, right, right. Like, it's like, no, 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 you pay us this. We're out of here. Like, yeah. Wow. But granted, I'm sure we're paying 4%, 5% of what Adidas pays. Him or yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, like, yeah. For sure. Um, right. But still the, the, the cost of entry is much different than, right. than I would have expected. Yep. Oh, okay, goddamn. <laughs> That's probably my Surprise, Courtney, you didn't ask the hot ass wife question. Thank you for not asking. Besi- that. Besides Appreciate like that. social media, how do you advertise something like that? Uh, like where you advertise baseball stuff or vision stuff? Um most there's a lot of social stuff. Just social digital stuff. Yeah. Um Can we talk about how you gave Bet some glasses and then he switched to another brand? He uh, switched? We could. Depends. I'm going down that road. Really sad. Fuck my ass. Why'd really, he switch? Really, I don't know. I, I said what happened to your hundred percent deal? Sure, he's not getting paid. And by the way, that's another piece of this. So why would he switch if he's not getting paid? Um, there's a lot. I'm getting too deep in the details here. No. A ton of MLB, MLB players that are just wear totally it. fine buying stuff at a discount. Cool. What? It's unbelievable. MLB guys. Yeah. And we're not talking guys that are starting on. No, team, but, but guys that are on squads, like teams. Bets type guy. Yeah. That guys maybe even better than bets. Well, that's not like, him. They're fine with. Just yeah. Give a me a discount. discount. Yeah. Yeah. Not our sport. No. Not our sport. Yeah, I don't know. It's just different. Hmm. Um, all right. Courtney, anything else? That's it. Uh, um, as far as that tweet, I didn't see it, but the oh. hot wife, I'm I'm not just a piece of meat. No, this no, no. Actually, it, uh, this, this, this was about Pookie, actually. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Something Good about for Pookie. S- something about right. Steve and his She's mansion. She's also not just a piece no, of meat. No, she is not a piece of meat either. Something and I will <laughs> fucking kill you. Hold on. You got F Chuck. You, dude. you got Chuck. What? Yeah, after 597 attempts. 597. That's what it took. Oh, you got Chuck. Got him. Congrats, <laughs> Chuck, on nothing. <laughs> you did. <laughs> 596 <laughs> people can't get you can't get in touch with them. <laughs> Every guy. <laughs> <laughs> keep, wow. that, keep that in uh, mind. If we get 596 rejections, Chuck mm-hmm. is the winner. Hey, there's a line and you're in it. I like that. <laughs> I like Does that it. make you feel better or worse? I liked it. I'm, I was actually in the, the system somewhere. Okay. I was starting to doubt it. I was starting to doubt it. <laughs> because you did. <laughs> There's a lot of people in there. Yeah. Dude. I mean, I got three. Only yeah. uh, only 99 people got three. How and many entries are in there, Marks? Uh, I, I don't actually know. A lot. There you go. A lot. Yeah. I can um, summarize the tweet. It was his hot-ass wife and his mansion and losing touch with people. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, Basement. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Jet Lawrence, Davey Coombs, Phil Nicoletti, Denny Stevenson. Uh, who's your favorite interview tonight? Say him again. 
Denny Stevenson, Phil Nicoletti, Davey Coombs, and Jet Lawrence. Oh, Phil Nicoletti. Okay. <laughs> for sure. I'm going to go Denny. You're going to go Denny? Debo? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, that's awesome, man. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Courtney, thank you for stepping up and, and really helping the show out here. Anytime. Uh, do I got to pay your marks? Yes. Say no, yes. I'll pay her when we get home. Oh, I bet you oh, will. She's yeah, going to make her pay, all right? Yeah, you bet. Bum, bum, We're going to pay each other. He's so sleepy. We're going to pay each other. He's so, he's so tired. He's going to be right to sleep. He is. <laughs> <laughs> he was just complaining. I got to get up at 8. I got to get up at 8. So we're going straight to bed when we get home. Oh, Come boy. on. You can spare uh, 45 seconds. But thank you, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> You've got two minutes. No Touché. problem. Touché. Chug, chug a Red Bull, dude. <laughs> yeah, you got two minutes. You're fine. Uh, Courtney, thanks again, though. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for stepping in. Thanks that's, for having that's, me. That's great. Marks, that's thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Uh, Swiss Core Moser. Uh, no thanks to Tits or Talon. They can both fuck off. <laughs> uh, and uh, thanks to Pookie, of course, as well. Chuck, thank you, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Always a good time. Uh, you do a good job with the show. Thank, thank you, you for coming in. Thanks for e-biking and everything. That was fun. Um, thanks for driving up yep. super early. Parabinos, thanks for, uh, you know, I know this is a stretch for you, but, you know, we appreciate it. Awesome. I'm Great here. radio. Yep. Uh, rental.com for more information, 100%.com uh, for more information on you guys. Uh, but, of course, x brand goggles and Vortex Racing as well. I'm going to need access to the drops next time I come here. Uh, it's going to be a requirement. It's fun. It's going to be a requirement. No, fun. no. He, he abuses the drops. I, re I require the list of Vortex's competition. Okay. This 29% like, stronger. Who yeah. are these competition they speak of? It, it seems like it's the competition. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I want to know. I could grab some competition for them that they'd be 29% stronger than, I think. It just wouldn't be yours. <laughs> there could be some competition. Yeah, There's yeah, some yeah, competition. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah, not yeah, your yeah. bars. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, hey, man, thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to take next week off, uh, and uh, we just did five in a row or six in a row or something. So we're off next week, but we'll be back the following week with Kiefer and the Pony in studio. Kiefer oh. and the Pony. Kiefer and the Pony. That's also the new name of an NBC sitcom. That could get weird, I feel. <laughs> Kiefer and the Pony. Uh, again, thanks, everybody, for sponsoring. Thanks for the sponsor codes. Get them on pulpmexshow.com. And uh, we're out of here. Thanks for listening. Gargle cock. There's something I There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine. And I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff and